Hello students, welcome to Vedantu Neat English. This is Gopraj sir. I am Ms. Gopika. So students, today is going to be a special class because we'll be doing your genetics. That is the two main chapters which, well, so many questions keep on repeating. Right ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Especially the most high weightage, longest chapters, chapters. Right? So I'll be doing principles of inheritance first and then we'll be going to molecular more... basis of inheritance. So yes. students, can we start? Ma'am, can we start? Ma let's not waste any more of time. Yes, so... let's see if we are, uh, we are live, right? Okay, okay let students, me check. Come on. Yes, we are live, ma'am. Yes. Can you clearly see, see us and, and see, see the, the presentation? presentation. Let us know the chat. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Full. <laughs> <laughs> students, let us, let us know the chat if you are audible, we are audible and the presentation is visible to everyone with some energy in the chat. Quickly let us know and smash that like button right now because this is going to be a very power packed session and highly informative session and this is the first session of your block two, two. Yes, yes ma. yes so we are starting block two we have inaugurated block two with the most requested chapter even though these chapters we had done under the super six we thought that students are still not clear about it or maybe some students have joined newly to this family and for yes. them we need to do it once again right yes, ready 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 for principles of inheritance. After that, molecular basis is there. So don't drain your energy. Yeah. Don't drain the energy. I'll okay. Drain. <laughs> so I will drain myself. <laughs> you can drain yourself, but don't drain my students' energy because molecular basis, from the name itself, they'll faint. Yeah. The yeah, moment I tell molecular basis, yeah. half will have collapsed. I'll tell you when half will collapse. When I tell, I'll do numericals today. <laughs> <laughs> So there it is students, we'll be doing numericals also in today's class from principles of inheritance. So ma'am. Okay. Yes. Can I start ma'am? Sure. Yes. So students, this is Baswaraj sir. And what is going to be the flow of session today? So let us complete the entire theory. One second. One second, students. Now students, let us complete the entire theory of your principles of inheritance in just, just 1.5 hours. Can we do that today? Let's do a quick revision of all the different things, in all the different concepts from your chapter principles of inheritance in first 1.5 hours. And the next one hour, can we do some solid question practice? Can we? Can we do that? The entire flow? First 1.5 hours, we'll do theory. All the theory which is required for you to solve the questions and we'll utilize that theory to solve questions in the next one hour after that. Yes? How is the flow? Right? So that is going to be your entire flow of today's class. I will be telling you concepts after concepts. So I want everyone to be on point today on point writing down the sub points or don't worry if you are not able to write down any point the entire pdf will be available on the telegram channel yes it will be available on the telegram channel so quickly smash that like button and we'll start with the first topic that is what is the meaning of genetics what is the meaning of genetic students all of you should know genetics is a branch of your biology yes students genetics is a branch of biology which deals with inheritance as well as variations yes it is a branch of biology that deals with inheritance as well as variation inheritance as well as variation now students can anyone that chat tell me what is this inheritance and what is this variation you might have heard about this term somewhere right somewhere you might have heard about it students inheritance means let me change the color color now now what is this inheritance students it is a process by which genetic characters are transferred from parents to offsprings parent to the offsprings now what is the meaning of this line students let's take someone from the chat now Let's take someone from the chat, sweetie. Yes, sweetie. Now I'll tell you, sweetie's eyes are just like her mother. Just like her mother. Now what is the meaning of that? You might have heard about it, right? Your relative saying, you have a nose like your father. You have ears like your mother. Now what is the meaning of that? There are certain genetic characters which you inherit from your parents. That is nothing but your inheritance. That is nothing but your inheritance. Now students, you tell me, when I say sweetie has eyes like a mother but her ears are different her nose is different it looks like her father so when this transfer of genetic material is happening can there be some 
changes or variations yes the changes or variations that is a degree by which a offspring differs from the parent is called as your variation is called as your variation that is your changes between offspring offspring and parent like how much they differ the difference between the parent and the offspring is called as your variation now can i quickly tell uh, another example of your inheritance yes a simple example of inheritance is like begets like now what is this like begets like students that is a particular dog will give birth to a puppy a cat will give birth to a kitten is it possible the other way around that is a dog giving birth to a kitten not possible a human will give birth to a human baby that is because of your inheritance transfer of characters from parent to the offspring is called as your inheritance now students with that being said let's understand every word here see here now students you need to know what is the difference between you need to know what is the difference between a character and a trait can i tell tell you with the help of a simple example students remember example for your character example for your character that is height flower color height of a plant color of a color of a flower that is your character then sir what is a trait sir then trait what is a trait if this height can be tall it can be dwarf that becomes a trait now this color of the flower can be white it can be red it can be pink all of this becomes your traits all of this becomes your traits simple difference everyone should know then we have what is the difference between a gene and a allele all of you know gene is nothing but a small segment of a dna yes gene is a small segment of a dna a small segment of a dna then what is an allele students allele is nothing but alternative form of a gene alternative form of a gene for example we have a gene for tallness the alleles are going to be capital t capital t capital t small t yes capital t small t or small t small t all of these becomes your alleles all of them become your alleles now what is the meaning of homozygous and heterozygous students homozygous means when the alleles look alike that is when the alleles look alike it is called as your homozygous then what is heterozygous heterozygous means the alleles look dissimilar alleles look dissimilar that is the meaning of heterozygous condition then what is dominant and what is recessive students dominant allele is a allele which will express even in the presence of recessive allele for example in this dominant allele we have capital t small t we have capital t small t this capital t will express itself even when the small t is present that is your dominant allele now recessive allele is your small t here why because it is not able to express in the presence of your dominant allele any doubt your students ask me right now any doubt in this paragraph yes no doubt amazing now students let's understand your mendel what did mendel do what did mendel do work on so all of you know mendel was born on your july 22nd 18 2022 and his main work was on a pea plant see all of you it's a pani puri right in pani puri do they add small small green color things right or palav you eat in the palav they add small small green color piece that is nothing but your pisum sativum and the main work of mendel experiment was on pisum sativum now how many years did he work on how many years see you were preparing for need for 2 years but mendel mendel worked for almost 7 long years and the date is 1856 to 1863 students years are very important years are very important right then we have the seven pairs of contrasting traits he included in his experiment seven pairs of contrasting traits if it is seven pairs of contrasting traits how many traits we actually take 
he actually took 14 different traits that is your seven pair of your contrasting traits okay then students he also worked on he also included in his experiment 14 true breeding lines now can anyone tell me what is the meaning of true breeding line the answer is very simple students true breeding lines is nothing but your the line or the plants which have underwent which has undergone undergone repeated repeated self pollination repeated self pollination repeated self pollination that is you take a plant you do emasculation bagging some repeatedly self pollination repeated self pollination then you obtain something called as your pure lines is there any other name for pure lines yes sir the pure lines can be also called as your homozygous condition yes homozygous condition see here capital t capital t small t small t homozygous condition that is your pure breeding lines now apart from this what did mendel do so different that his work was so remarkable remember students mendel was one of the first scientists to include include your mathematics and biology together so he was a person because of whom you have to solve all the numericals also okay in today's class so he, he took maths he took biology and combined and had a baby that is the genetics that is your genetics and similar students mendel work he didn't work on a small scale he had a wide variety of like what do i say wide variety i mean a very large field so his experiment included a large volume size it included a large volume size is experiments large volume size clear large volume size now how, which type of question will come now which type of question will come in your examination will they ask you any of these points yes they can ask you any of these points but do you know what question has actually come in your examination as a p by q that is nothing but your all the different characters all the different characters have repeatedly come in your examination and they'll ask you specifically they'll ask you specifically that which is your dominant character and in the which is your dominant trait and which is your receive trait clear for example if we when we talk about your seed color or let's take a simple example which all of you know plant height plant height that is your it can either be it can either be tall or it could be dwarf right it could either be tall or it could be either be dwarf now here tall is dominant tall is dominant and dwarf is going to be your recessive similarly students similarly you need to remember you need to remember every single dominant and recessive value clear will you remember that students will you remember that yes because that will actually come in your examination remember that now let's understand why why did he take selected pea plant pisum sativum for his experiment now they can ask you a question like instead of taking any other plant like he could have taken a rose plant he could have taken a like which is your favorite plant tell me in the chat any favorite plant chat he could have taken a rose plant marigold plant or he could have taken a rice plant then why did he take pea plant itself there are multiple reasons the first main reason is going to be easy to grow and maintain right easy to grow and easy to maintain then we have annual plants with short life cycle two to three months that is if the life cycle is going very faster can we actually use multiple different plants yes we can you keep on recycling them and also as the lifespan is over we can take the progeny also very quickly exhibits a variety of visible characters with contrasting traits why why is it so important because with the help of the contrasting traits we can study it very easily yes we can study it very easily then we have produces bisexual flowers again very important for cross pollination then we have self fertilizing plants and hence mating can be controlled easily pure line formation also possible to conduct cross pollination produce large number of seeds produces a large number of seeds will you remember all these points students will you remember all these points mango plant okay mine also mango plant because mango season is coming now 
Mango season is coming. Mango is a beautiful plant. Right. Now, there are three main names you should remember. What are three names? First one is going to be a father of modern genetics. All of you know by the name George, Johann Mendel, Gregor Johann Mendel. Then we have modern genetics, Batson. Experimental genetics, we have T.H. Morgan. Now, these three names they can ask you in any different manner. Okay. Now, students, are you ready to be a scientist? Now, tell me very quickly, are you ready to be a scientist now? Because I will actually tell you what did Mendel do in his experiment. Students, if you look at Mendel's experiment, it is mainly divided into three parts. That is, Mendel's experiment was called as what? Mendel's experiment was called as your hybridization experiment. It was called as what? Hybridization experiment. Now, students, hybridization experiment has three main steps, right? Can anyone tell me in the chat what are the three main steps here? The first step here was nothing but selection of parents. Was selection of parents. Now, how did he select parents? I told you already. The selection of parents was why? By forming true breeding lines. Yes, true breeding lines. True breeding lines done. Now, students, what is the second step? The second step is going to be your cross pollination. Cross pollination. Second step is your cross pollination. Now, here cross pollination we have with one gene. We have with one gene. We also have with two gene. One gene and two gene. Now, one gene is called as your monohybrid cross. Two gene is called as your dihybrid cross. All of you know that. Very simple. Yes, students. Now, what is the third step in order to do this? In order to do the Mendel experiment. The third step is going to be your selfing of F1. Selfing of F1 hybrids. Selfing of F1 hybrids is going to be your third step. Okay, third step. Clear? Okay, students, these are three different steps and you can also do the Mendel's experiment at home. Three steps you can do Mendel's experiment at home. Now, students, let's understand inheritance of one gene. Can we start? Yes. Yes, sir. We can start inheritance of one gene. That is mono hybrid cross. Can we do in the chat, students? Quickly fire in the chat if you are able to understand the fast pace today. Because we know exam is so near and you are ready to do the hard work. And for that very reason, we are doing this session in a way that what is important for exam and also what is going to come in exam and with questions. Now, students, the first one is going to be your Inheritance of one gene. All of you know this from your class 10th. Very easy. That is your monohybrid cross. Monohybrid cross. So quickly write with me now. Monohybrid cross. First we take homozygous. Oh, what is happening? Some pen came. Homozygous. Dominant. Tall plant. Yes. We also take homozygous recessive plant that is going to be your dwarf plants. Yes, this is your tall plant. That is one is your dwarf plant. Now, what are the parents you obtain here? Students, tell me check quickly. Parents which you obtain here? The parents are going to be capital T, capital T. Here we have the small t, small t, small t, small t. Now what do we have? Then we have gamete formation. Then we have gametes formation. That is going to be your capital T. Here we have the small t. Then we have the F1 hybrid. F1 hybrid. That is going to be your capital T, small t. Then we do selfing of F1. Selfing of F1. That is nothing but your capital T into capital T small t. Now again, now can we do it with the help of till here? I believe that no one should have any doubt. This is your basic class 10th. Basic class 10th. Right. Now when you do the cross students, when you do the cross, capital T small t. Capital T small t. What do you obtain? Is everyone obtaining this? Is everyone obtaining the same simple cross? Yes, all of you know the simple cross and I don't need to tell you so much in detail here. But students, what can we ask in examination? 
Sometimes examiners can be very very lenient and they can ask you what is the phenotypic ratio? What is the phenotypic ratio? Yes. Now phenotypic ratio basically means how a plant looks from the outside. How a plant looks from the outside. For example, here we have a tall plant, tall plant, tall plant. 3 is 2. 1 is going to be a dwarf plant. Now what about your genotypic ratio? Genotypic ratio is also is going to be your homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant and 1 is going to be your homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive. Does anyone has any doubt in this? Does anyone has any, any doubt in this? I believe so. No one should have any doubt in this. Now students, are you ready to learn a new concept called as your back cross now? Ready? Now students, what is this back cross? Can anyone tell me in the chat students? Students, remember back cross are of two types. Back cross are of two types. Now what do you do? In back cross, we take the F1 plant and we cross it with either dominant phenotype or dominant parents or recessive parents. That is, you take F1 plant and you cross it with dominant parents or you take F1 plant and you cross it, cross it with recessive parents. Yes. Now students, when you take the F1 plant and you cross it with dominant parents, this type of cross is called as your outcross. This type of cross is called as your outcross. Called as your outcross. Now what is this? Take F1 plant and crossing with recessive parents. This is called as your test cross. This is called as your test cross. Following all of you. Following. Now see if someone asks you what is the meaning of your test cross, you should know. Right? All of you know what is F1, right? All of you know F1 from here. See here. This is your F1. F1 plants. Okay? F1 plants. Now students, everyone should understand what is the definition of your, what is the definition of your test cross? Can I write here? Can I write here? Test cross is a cross between, it is a cross between dominant phenotype, dominant phenotype, it is a cross between dominant phenotype with recessive parents. So what do we do in test cross students? In test cross we do what do we do? We take cross between dominant phenotype with recessive parents. Now a question can arise. Why sir? Why do we need to do the test cross? What is the requirement of to write this test? Now you tell me in the chat why are you writing a neat examination? Why? So that you can get into a government medical college or you can qualify neat examination and you can become a doctor later on. Now there is an importance here again. The main importance of your test cross is the importance of your test cross is why? Why are we doing it? To know to know the genotype of the F1 plant. Why are we doing it? To know the genotype of the F1 plant. That is, we know the phenotype here. We know the phenotype of your F1 plant. But do we know the genotype? No. So whenever the genotype is unknown, you take the F1 plant and you cross it with your recessive parents and you will obtain your genotype of F1 plant. Can we quickly use a example to explain this? Can we now students? Can we? Yes. The example is very simple. It is given in your NCRT also. The example is very simple. It is given in your NCRT also. Now, what do we have here? A dominant phenotype, genotype, unknown. We, one time we are crossing, first cross is between, first cross is between homozygous recessive parents. The second cross is between heteros homozygous recessive parents. Again, homozygous recessive parents, homozygous recessive parents. But students, all of you know, if it is a dominant phenotype, it can be capital W, small w. It can also be capital W, capital W. Right? If it is a dominant phenotype, it can be capital W, capital W or it can be capital W, small w. In both the cases, 
we will obtain the dominant phenotype yes in both the case we will obtain the dominant phenotype both the cases now students what we do the cross when we do the cross you can see her capital w small w capital w small w capital w small w so when you take a dominant phenotype with unknown genotype and if it is if it is f if it is capital w capital w the result is going to be all flowers are violet now what is the interpretation unknown genotype is homozygous dominant that is you are obtaining the genotype you are obtaining the genotype based on the phenotype of f2 based on the genotype of f2 now what if what if what if the genotype of your f1 plant is capital w small w how do you find it if it is that if it is correct by doing a cross now we will do a cross capital w small w capital w small w small w small w small w and small w so students when we take if when we take a dominant phenotype with heterozygous dominant genotype what do we obtain we obtain half of the flowers are violet and half of the flowers are white what is the interpretation the unknown genotype is heterozygous the unknown genotype is going to be heterozygous so what are the principle here students the principle is very simple you are trying to find the genotype of f1 plant how do i how are you doing it you are trying to find the genotype of f1 plant by crossing with your homozygous receptor parents and whatever result you obtain in your f2 whatever result you obtain in f2 based on that you are finding the genotype of your f1 based on you are finding the genotype of your f1 clear now quickly tell me in the chat students quickly tell me in the chat what is the ratio which you obtain from your test cross what is the ratio obtained from your test cross tell me in the chat quickly now next topic is going to be your law of dominance law of dominance now students you should remember by now from your mono hybrid cross from your mono hybrid cross we obtain two different laws we obtain two different laws one is called as your law of dominance one is called as your law of purity of gametes now what is this law of purity of gametes can anyone tell me in the chat what is the other name of law of purity of gametes quickly in the chat now students what is law of dominance law of dominance tells you characters are controlled by discrete unit fact called as factors all the all the characters are controlled by discrete unit called as factors which are nothing but your alleles nothing but your alleles factors occur in pair i told you already alleles occur in pair in a dissimilar pair of factors that is capital t small t dissimilar pair of factors one member of the pair is dominant and the other is recessive here capital t is going to be your dominant small t is going to be your recessive that's it that's your law of dominance right that is law of dominance then what is this law of purity of gametes law of purity gametes is the other name is nothing but your law of segregation it is called as what law of segregation and remember students law of segregation is universal it is universal that is there are no exceptions whatsoever no exceptions whatsoever for your law of segregation but do we have exceptions for your law of dominance yes do we have some exceptions yes the exceptions for your law of dominance is going to be your incomplete dominance incomplete dominance incomplete dominance as well as your codominance as well as your codominance these two are the exceptions to your law of dominance okay students now students it's called as law of segregation or law of purity of gametes let me quickly explain you why that is it tells you alleles do not blend simple as it is it tells you that alleles do not show blending for example students for example we have capital t small t 
वी हैव कैपिटल कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी टू अलील्स आर देर यस टू अलील्स आर देर विल दे शो ब्लेंडिंग नाउ नो दे विल नॉट शो एनी टाइप ऑफ ब्लेंडिंग हेयर हाउ डू वी गेट इट हेयर वेन दिस पेरेंट दिस इज योर पेरेंट when the gamete formation happens when the gamete formation happens we will obtain what one gamete with only and only capital t allele one gamete with only small t as a allele and from this particular gametes can i make one statement here that is each gamete here students each gamete each gamete here is pure it is pure for a trait each gamete students each gamete here is pure for a trait see this particular gamete is pure for tallness this particular gamete is for pure for your dwarfness that is students law of segregation that is when two alleles are present together they do not show blending and they segregate during the gamete formation they segregate during the gamete formation clear clear students the next one is your incomplete dominance the next one is going to be your incomplete dominance now what is the meaning of incomplete dominance students incomplete dominance is the dominance in which the dominant allele is incompletely dominant over recessive allele see technically it had to be completely dominant it is not doing its work it is like some of you I ask you to solve PYQ, you will not solve PYQ. If I ask you to write mock test, you will not write P uh, mock test. Just like you, we have a dominant allele. It is not doing its work properly. It is not doing its work properly. It is incompletely dominant over the other allele. And because of that very reason, because of that very reason, one allele is incompletely dominant over the other allele. F1 generation do not resemble the parents. It do not resemble both the parents. the f1 generation will be unique f1 generation will be unique okay f1 generation is going to be completely unique imagine we have one parent is a doctor one parent is an engineer right one parent father is a doctor mother is an engineer here okay the child the child will be like no i don't want to be a doctor i don't want to be an engineer i want to be a dancer i want to be a dancer that's what is happening here that is F1 generation do not resemble both parents. Example is going to be what? Example, quick example. Example is going to be your dog flower, also called as a snapdragon or antrium. Other examples are your star synthesis and also mirabilis jalapa, also called as your four o'clock plant. Also called as your four o'clock plant. Okay, four o'clock plant. Clear? Also called as your four o'clock plant. Now, can we quickly draw this? Can we quickly draw the entire? Diagram here. Can we, students? Can we do the entire structure here? Yes, we can. Cross. Can we do the entire cross? Now, students, tell me quickly. What are the parents here? What are going to be the parents? One is going to be your red flower. One is going to be your red flower. The other one is going to be your white flower. One is red flower. The other one is the white flower. Yes. Now, tell me in the chat what. is going to be the see, capital r capital r this is going to be small r and small r yes small r and small r that those are your parents then we draw the gametes capital r small r then we do the f1 f1 capital r small r now students if this was normal if this was a normal monohybrid cross this was supposed to be red this was supposed to be red but is it going to be red students is it going to be red no this is going to be your pink color flower it's going to be your pink color flower yes it's going to be your pink color flower now can we do selfing of f1 can we do selfing of f1 now selfing of f1 that is going to be your students listen to me very carefully capital r small r Capital R, small R. What do we get? R R. Capital R, small R, small R and small R, small R and R. Now, what is the most important thing here? 
What is the most important thing here, students? What is going to be your phenotypic ratio? And what is going to be your genotypic ratio? Not phenotypic ratio, starting with phenotypic ratio. That is, this is going to be completely red one. What about this heterozygous dominant, both of them? The heterozygous dominant are going to be pink color. Pink color. So, 2 is 2. This is going to be white. This is going to be your white. So, 1. What about genotypic ratio? When we have homozygous dominant, 2 are heterozygous dominant. 1 is going to be your homozygous recessive. That is, students, in the case of your incomplete dominance, in the case of your incomplete dominance, phenotypic ratio is equal to genotypic ratio. Write down this. Write down this, all of you. In the case of your, in the case of your incomplete dominance, in the case of your incomplete dominance, phenotypic ratio is going to be your equal to your genotypic ratio. Done. Then students, students are you understanding we are actually going and doing every concept and we are clearing every concept and we are going further, right? Next thing is going to be your co-dominance. Now what is co-dominance? Co-dominance is very simple. That is, both alleles are dominant. The both alleles are like, no, I want to express myself. One allele is like, I want to express. The other allele is like, I also want to express. So, both are expressing together. When both alleles are expressing together, that is called as your co-dominance. It's called as what? Co-dominance. That is, F1 generation will resemble both the parents. It will resemble both the parents. That is, if father is a doctor, mother is engineer, the offspring, the offspring will be both. It will be a doctor also. It will be engineer also. Both. Extra talent. Extra talent. It will be a doctor also. It will be a engineer also. Now, tell me a chat. What is the principle behind it, students? What is the principle behind your co-dominance? The main principle behind your co-dominance is something called as multiple allelism. Now, what is this multiple allelism, students? What is this multiple allelism? It's very simple. Multiple allelism states that if one gene, students, listen to me very carefully. If one gene has more than two alleles, if one gene has more than two alleles, that is called as your multiple allelism. It is called as what? Multiple allelism. Usually, one gene has two alleles. All of you know that. One gene has two alleles. So, we learnt here, right? Capital T, small t. Capital R, small r. Capital V, small v. So, typically, typically, one gene has two alleles. But in the case of multiple allelism, one gene, one gene will have more than two alleles. Can anyone in the chat give me a quick example? Everyone in the chat. A quick example of your multiple allelism, which is given in your NCRT for co-dominance. That is going to be your... ABO blood grouping. ABO blood grouping. Here, ABO blood grouping. Now, students, in ABO blood grouping, what do we have? In ABO blood grouping, what do we have? Once in students, in ABO blood grouping, what do we have? Students, remember, in ABO blood grouping, we have three types of alleles. We have three different types of alleles. Can we write down? IA, IB, and I naught. Or we can write it as small i. Now, out of these three alleles, out of these three alleles, students, two are dominant. These two are dominant allele. Are dominant allele. Now, what about this one? This is your recessive allele. This is your recessive allele. Now, quickly tell me in the chat. We have three alleles here. Now, will all three alleles be present inside the humans? Is it possible to have all three alleles inside our body? No. No. So, out of these three alleles, out of these three alleles, out of three alleles, only two will be present. Will be present. Clear? Will be present in our body. Now, for example, students, let me tell you how it works. Let me tell you how it actually works, students. If this is your red blood cell, this is your red blood cell, 
we have one more red blood cell here we have one more red blood cell here okay now so listen to me very carefully that is on this red blood cell we have your antigen h we have the antigen h h antigen h now if this antigen h along with this ant antigen h, antigen h we have a sugar we have a sugar plus no sugar plus no sugar now what is the sugar if this sugar is galactose if this sugar is galactose this particular type of this particular type of your cell will become this rbc will become b blood group it will show your b group here. what about this one this is your a blood group what if there is no sugar this will become your o blood group this will become your o blood group this is how your entire blood grouping works that is if what is b blood group what is a blood group and what is o blood group in this rbc if both a and b both are present then it becomes ab then it becomes ab now here let me tell you the example which is given you in ncrt that is students whenever we have dominant allele and we have dominant allele in both the parents the offspring will have what a blood grouping when we have a allele b allele both are present together then we have a b a blood grouping then we have a allele dominant allele one is recessive then we have a blood grouping again when a b is there a b when we have both i b i b two alleles dominant alleles we get b grouping one is dominant one is recessive dominant will express b blood grouping when there is both are recessive from both the parents from both the both the parents we have recessive alleles the blood grouping is going to be o positive now with that being said can everyone tell me what is your blood grouping all of you tell me in the chat and can you also guess what is my blood group if you can donate me blood if you can donate me blood yes mm, let's take now students that was your that was your codominance and i i understood i will all of you understood the codominance it was very easy questions will definitely come on blood grouping okay friends can we now start with inheritance of two genes now can we can we start with inheritance of two genes now yes friends inheritance of two, two, two genes in your inheritance of two genes there is involvement of two different characters there is involvement of two different characters here one character is separate uh, other character is separate now what happens here let's let's do the cross here i have done the starting part of the cross let's do the rest part of the part the parent here we have is the parent here is round and low the other parent is going to be wrinkled and green the other parent is going to be wrinkled and green what is my blood group my blood group is o positive let's see how many of you can give me blood let's see how many of you can give me blood Mine is O positive. Now, students, here we have gametes, capital R, capital Y, small r, small y. Then we have the F1 generation. F1 generation is going to be capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. This is a genotype. But what is going to be the phenotype? Can anyone tell me? What is going to be the phenotype here? R is dominant, so it is going to be round. Y is dominant. it's going to be yellow round and yellow it's going to be your it's going to be your f1 generation yes and if you want blood i can give you all my blood don't worry i am universal donor i can donate blood okay i'll also give you blood now students can we do now selfing of f1 can we do it students here some of them find it difficult to form the gametes now sometimes it becomes difficult to form the gametes can i quickly tell you a small trick to understand the gametes here yes the small trick here is very simple what do we have here capital r small r capital y small y so what do you need to do here this with this this with this that is 
कैपिटल आर कैपिटल वाई कैपिटल आर स्मॉल वाई देन हियर सिंपल स्मॉल आर कैपिटल वाई एंड स्मॉल आर एंड स्मॉल वाई स्मॉल आर एंड स्मॉल वाई दैट्स इट दैट्स इट देन डू वी हैव यू गैमेट्स यस वी हैव द गैमेट्स सिंपल यस यस मैम मैम साइन मैम दे आर हैविंग फुल जोश मैम फुल जोश एवरी वन इज लर्निंग लाइक देर इज नो डिस्ट्रैक्शन नो वन ओनली डिस्ट्रैक्शन नो आई लुक माई स्टूडेंट्स I will rewind the video. Then me during the distraction, then you're over. Okay. No, so we were just learning this one. Don't die, have it cross. Then tell bye bye to what's up, sir. Okay. This I know he looked at me. You all tell me, did he look at me? Distraction. What is this? Oh, die, have it. Die, have it cross, ma'am. Brown, yellow, wrinkled, green. Color, color. Color, color. Which color? Do it, Mendel. <laughs> see, do you see, ma'am? I'm using color. So many colors now. Inspiration. Still. Inspiration. Inspiration. <laughs> I'm not telling, yeah. Wait, I think that's it. Now, students. <laughs> so, ma'am, look at the fire in the chat. Everyone is like on fire today. They're le learning. Yes, I came. That was the truth. But uh, <laughs> everything is on fire. Like we are learning content by content. We are not wasting a single minute. Concept, 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 concept. I'm like drilling all everything in their head now. That's why I told you, don't for molecular basis. I need some part of their brain cells so that no, they will have. Ma'am, they have um, many brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh my huh. God. Full, full Josh. Everyone is full Josh today. Because students, this is the time when you have to be serious. If you're not serious at this point, at least, then, <laughs> then uh, don't be serious. Now, three Nama, Nama, you put and go. <laughs> three Nama will only come. Don't be serious entire your life. Okay. Exactly. So this is the only time to be serious. So everyone is very serious, Mama. I believe everyone is very serious now. Okay. Hello. What are you teaching me now? Okay. Round and hybrid. Now we just finished. The thing, mom. We just finished your selfing of your your fun. Now, students, everyone should know, mom. I will say, now everyone knows how to cross this. Mm. Yes, everyone knows how to cross this. Now I'll tell them what is going to be your phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio. Mm. Ready, students? Quickly tell me in the chat what is the phenotypic ratio, mom. Simple phenotypic ratio, everyone knows. Yeah. Phenotypic ratio is going to be your. Oh, change the color, color, color. I should use now. Mom, is there extra pressure comes? <laughs> <laughs> extra pressure is coming. <laughs> Now, what is going to be your phenotypic ratio here? Nine is to three is to three is to one. That is round and yellow. Round and green. Wrinkled yellow. And wrinkled green. Yes, students. What's going to be now? Tell me in the chat quickly. Nine is two, three is two, three is two, one. That is going to be your. That is going to be your phenotypic ratio. Now, students, can you anyone tell me in the chat what is going to be your genotypic ratio? Now, students, quickly like the video first. If you want a quick, fresh eyes also in the chat. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Spam more like sir. <laughs> Yes, students. What is going to be genotypic ratio? Now there are many methods to make the genotypic ratio, right? That is your fork method, sir. But I have told you, if you are my student, I will tell you one simple method to find find your genotypic ratio. What is the simplest of method? Can anyone tell me? Does anyone remember at all? Or they forgot everything? They would have forgotten. <laughs> sir, 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 don't spam word. No. <laughs> what is going to be your phenotypic genotypic ratio, students? Let me write here. One is to two is to one, two is to one is to two is to one. Yes. Into one is to two is to one. Just multiply, students. What is one into one, ma'am? One. One. <laughs> one into two. Two. One into one. One. Two into one. Two. Two into two. Four. Two. Two into one. Two. One into one. One. One into two. Two. One second. And one. one. That's all. Shreya sir, is on, Shreya sir is on fire. Shreya sir is on fire today. <laughs> Except your master services and seven stop. Yes, <laughs> students, that is going to be your genotypic ratio. Just multiply one into one, one into two, one into one, two into one, two into two, two into one. 
1 into 1, 1 into 2 and 1 into 1 and that is how you obtain, that is how you obtain your genotypic ratio, done. Did everyone understand how to find genotypic ratio? Yes, yes, <laughs> make it 200 likes right now before, see before Gopika Mams comes into the class, the target which we have right now, it is 300 likes before Gopika Mams enters the class, right, before Gopika Mam enters the class okay now students the next thing is going to be this is also done now there are few formulas which i want everyone to note down there are few formulas which everyone should write down and know to solve some questions the first formula here is if they ask you to find number of gametes if they ask you to find number of gametes what is the formula 2 to the power of n what is n n is the number of hetero zygotes n is the number of hetero zygotes now i'll give you a small numerical students can anyone tell me if this is your genotype they have given you a genotype capital a small a capital b capital b capital b capital c small c now can anyone tell me how many gametes do we get here how many gametes do we obtain Tell me check quickly. How many gametes do you obtain? Sir, how many mock tests is enough to score about 650 plus? You need to solve as many as possible. All the free mock tests from us and also anywhere else, students, we do not mind you solving mock tests from anywhere else unless you solve the mock test. Yes, tell me check quickly. How many gametes? See, number of heterozygotes is going to be one heterozygote here. One heterozygote here. That is 2 to the power. 2 to the power 2, yes, 2 to the power 2, that is how you obtain your number of gametes. Now, how do you obtain number of offsprings? That is, number of gametes in from parent 1, number of gametes from parent 2. Imagine if this is your parent 1, that is your parent 1. Now, can I give you a parent 2? Yes, parent 2 is very simple. Parent 2 is going to be, let us give you a genotype, capital A, capital A capital B, capital B, capital C, small c, capital D, small d. Now, tell me what is going to be if this is your parent 2, if this is your parent 2. Now, quickly calculate, quickly calculate number of offsprings. This is going to be a parent 1 genotype is given. Here we have parent 1 genotype, parent 2 genotype. Now, you should find the gametes for this and then multiply the gametes to find the number of offsprings. Quickly, do it. So, while you solve that, can I explain you the law which you obtain from your dihybrid cross? From your monohybrid cross, we obtain law of dominance and we also obtain the law of segregation. But students, from your law of independent assortment is obtained from your dihybrid cross. From your dihybrid cross, we obtain your law of independent assortment. Now, what does it tell you? Can I explain? Very simple students. Law of independent assortment says that a topper will never become a spammer. What is the meaning sir? A topper will never become a spammer. What is the meaning of this? That is, a topper will segregate on its own, a spammer will segregate on its own. That is, when two contrasting traits are present together, segregation assortment of one trait is independent of assortment of other trait listen to me very carefully now listen to me very carefully when two pairs of traits are combined in a hybrid two pairs of contrasting traits are combined in a hybrid segregation of one pair is of character is independent of other pair of character that is, round and yellow will segregate separate, wrinkled and yellow, wrinkled and green can separate separately. So, segregation of different characters can happen on its own, there is, there is no mixing up. Did you get the answer for this question students? Did you get the answer for this question? How many gametes do we get here? How many gametes do we get here? One, heteros, one heterozygote, three. Two to the power of three, yes, two to the is four. 4 to the is 8, 8 into 4 and do it, that's all. You 
basic math do it fast that's the answer now students that was your end of that was the end of your the hybrid process does anyone has any doubt ask me right now ask me right now ask me right now any doubt ask me till here in the calculation of gametes or it could be mono hybrid cross it could be di hybrid cross anything you can ask me right now i'll next i'll clear the doubts in next two minutes i'm just looking at the charts now i'm looking at the charts any doubts here see students you're able to solve the numericals do you realize that you're able to solve numericals if you know the right formula and how to apply right formula how to apply you can solve numericals okay you can solve numericals clear now students the next concept is going to be when mendel was alive students when mendel mendel was alive no one bothered about his work that is until mendel was alive no one actually cared about his work they like okay mendel is doing some work there was no recognition at all only when mendel mendel passed away his all his work was rediscovered by famous scientist that is students rediscovery of mendel's work that is mendel published his work in 1865 but remained unrecognized till 1900s that is right now you're working hard there might be some people who are not recognizing your hard work right now when will they recognize your hard work students when you become a doctor when you wear that white coat and you walk in front of them that's when they'll realize how much of hard work you are you have done right similarly students probable reasons could be work could no, could not be widely publicized factors were stated as stable as stable and discrete units by mendel and mendel's concept of alleles never blend was not accepted by his contemporaries he used mathematics to explain biological phenomena was completely unaccepted no physical proof of the existence of factors that is the entire that is the entire science was not developed yet to understand mendel's work that's how advanced mendel was that's how amazing mendel was but there were three scientists students there were three scientists who actually believed in mendel's work and they rediscovered his work that is going to be your hugo de veras we learn about him in your evolution chapter also carl corns carl corns and enrich von schemack enrich von schemack these three different scientists independently discovered the mendel's work and they can you can get a question based on this you can also get a question also based on this okay yes if chicken is alive 50 rupees chicken is at 200 rupees yes 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 now students can i teach you can i teach you one important concept called as your chromosomal theory of inheritance can i teach you one simple concept called as chromosomal theory of inheritance now can we yes i will do question from disorder also all the questions from disorder also will be doing today okay can we start now students chromosomal the theory of inheritance it sounds very fancy like something big is there it is very simple chromosomal theory of inheritance is very very simple it is basically explaining that behavior of a chromosome is similar to the behavior of your gene that is if a chromosome is separating gene is also separating why because technically gene is actually present on the chromosome right a gene is present on the chromosome if gene is if chromosome is separating even gene is also separating that time that is students behavior of chromosome is parallel to the behavior of gene parallel to the behavior of your gene hmm segregation Segre segregation of chromosomes is based on your mendel's law so law of chromosome the entire segregation of chromosomes or chromosomal theory of inheritance is basically made based on your mendel's law it is on your mendel's law students that is they observed who observed certain and bovary students watson walter certain and theodore bovary certain and bovary observed that they are the scientists who gave your chromosomal theory of inheritance in 1902 in 1902 when they gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance they observed that behavior of chromosome is parallel to the behavior of your genes of factors 
यूज क्रोमोजोम यूज क्रोमोजोम मूवमेंट दे यूज क्रोमोजोम मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग द सेल डिविजन टू एक्सप्लेन द मेंडल स्लॉफ इनहेरिटेंस सो वी कैन ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द मेंडल स्लॉफ इनहेरिटेंस फ्रॉम योर क्रोमोजोमल थियरी ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस क्लियर क्लियर स्टूडेंट्स दैट इज योर क्रोमोजोमल थियरी ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस दैट इज दे फाउंड सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन क्योंकि वन सेकेंड स्टूडेंट्स दैट इज वॉट इज द सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन योर फैक्टर्स ऑफ जीन्स एंड क्रोमोजोम दट इज क्रोमोजोम अकर इन पेयर फैक्टर्स ऑल्सो अकर इन पेयर यस क्रोमोजोम्स अकर इन पेयर फैक्टर्स आर ऑल्सो अकर इन पेयर क्रोमोजोम सेग्रीगेट ड्यूरिंग गैमेट फॉर्मेशन इवन फैक्टर्स सेग्रीगेट ड्यूरिंग गैमेट फॉर्मेशन दट इज लॉ ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन क्रोमोज क्रोमोजोम सेग्रीगेट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ फीच अदर फैक्टर्स ऑल्सो सेग्रीगेट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ फीच अदर That is both chromosome movement as well as your gene movement. They are following law of segregation as well as your law of independent assortment. Law of independent assortment. Assortment. Clear? Now, if you look at this diagram of your NCERT, which is very simple. Here we have your G1 phase. We we'll have S phase here. Then we have G2 phase. Then we have meiosis one, meiosis two, and germ cell formation. Now, what happens in your G1 phase? Can anyone tell me what happens in G1 phase? Chat. But if you know what happens in S phase, if this is your chromosome, if this is your chromosome, if this is your chromosome, in S phase what happens? Duplication of DNA happens. Yes. In your S phase, duplication of DNA is happening. Similarly, when we have G2 phase in meiosis one, in meiosis one, if you look here, there is separation of homologous chromosomes can we see in your meiosis 1 there is separation of your homologous chromosomes then we have meiosis 2 in anaphase that is separation of sister chromatids is happening here separation of sister chromatids and finally we have the germ cell formation so all they trying to explain that chromosomal theory of inheritance is based on your mendel's law that is when chromosome is segregating the way chromosome is segregating even the genes are segregating in a similar manner segregating in a similar manner now students if you look at this example from your ncert this diagram from ncert it's talking about two possibilities it is talking about two possibilities in the first case can you see orange is paired with green yellow is paired with red here we have orange is paired with your red yellow is paired with green so what they're telling is crossing over can happen this can go here this can this can grow here go here that's all so basically they're trying to tell you is chromosome inheritance with the help of this diagram independent assortment is happening and also crossing over can also be taking place crossing over can also take place now students that was your chromosomal theory of inheritance that was your chromosomal theory of inheritance but How did we actually understand this experiment? Is there any experimental proof to you know tell yes this is chromosomal chromosomal theory of inheritance and with the help of this particular experiment I can confirm this theory? Yes, the experimental theory experimental your proof was given by your T H Morgan. T H Morgan was a scientist who gave your experimental proof with the help of an example with the help of a organism that is nothing but your Drosophila. melanic aster he worked his most of his work was on no? fruit fly called as your drosophila melana gaster now students you need to understand one thing here big time what is your before we go to that why drosophila a question can come why did he take drosophila there are three four main reasons why he actually took your drosophila as a experimental proof for your experiment that is they could be grown on a simple synthetic medium in a laboratory first point they complete their life cycle in about 2 weeks second point a single mating could produce a large number of progenies third point there was a clear differentiation of the sexes the male and the female flies are easily distinguishable also it has many types of hereditary variation that can be seen with the low power microscope so students the main reason for taking fruit flies easily available can be easily grown 
contrasting traits, life cycle is less. So they can ask you question, statement based question. The reason Morgan took fruit fly, they'll give you four different options and they'll ask you which of the following options are correct options. Will you be able to write it? Will you be able to write it? Yes, students. Quickly drink some water, all of you. Quickly drink some water, all of you. Because now we are starting with linkage and recombination. Because we are starting with linkage and recombination. Ready? Quickly tell me, chat, are you ready? We are starting with your linkage and recombination now. Very easy students, I will tell you with the help of a simple example. I will tell you with the help of a simple example. Linkage and recombination now. Okay. Ready? Students, if you have any doubt till now, students, this is a complete revision package, right? This is a complete revision package till now. We are doing, see, recently I thought this chapter with a much more detailed manner. Now, I'm actually telling you what is required for examination. Apart from this, they will not ask you anything extra, will not come in examination. Okay. Yes. Ready? Now, students, all of you know Pandu. All of you know Pandu, right? All of you know Pandu? All of you know Pandu? All of you also know Champa? All of you also know Champa? Yes, all of you know Champa it became huh? Champa. All of you know Champa? Yes, all of you know Champa? Now students tell me if Pandu and Champa, if Pandu and Champa are very close to each other, they are like the best friends, they are like best friends, will they have a strong bond between them? Tell me they are very close to each other, they are the best friends, they are very close to each other, can they have very strong bond between them? Yes. So can I tell they have very strong linkage between them? Yes, students. That is, when Pandu and Champa are very close to each other, they are very close to each other, that is, linkage is very high. Linkage is very high. Now, students, if between them, the bond is so strong, will they fight? Tell me in chat, will they fight now? No. They will not fight. That is, recombination Recombination will be very low. The fight between them, they will not fight. So, recombination will be very slow. Yes, it's covalent bond. No, it's dative bond. It is a dative bond. Okay. <laughs> then, students, imagine a scenario. Imagine a scenario. Champa is going to native. She went to native. She went to native. We have a one more girl here now. We have a one more girl here that is Sampa. We have one more girl here called as your Sampa. We have one more girl called your Sampa now. Sampa. Now, this Sampa is trying to become friends with Pandu now. This Sampa is trying to become friends with Pandu. Now, Pandu is like, no, I will not become friends with you because I am waiting for my Champa. Because I am waiting for my Champa. So, can I tell, students, can I tell, can I tell, can I tell, since they are not very close to each other, since they are not very close to each other, what will happen to the linkage? Obviously, students, if they are not very close to each other, linkage is very less. Linkage is very less. But if they are not very close to each other, can they fight? Yes. That is, recombination will be, recombination will be very high. Recombination will be very high. So, remember students, remember this very line, remember this very carefully all of you. If this is a chromosome, 
if this is a chromosome, yes, on this chromosome, we have three genes. We have three genes, gene A, gene B, and gene C. Now, tell me, if these two genes are very close to each other, like your Champa and Pandu, A and B are very close to each other, what will be their linkage? Tell me in the chat, what will be their linkage? Between A and B, since they are very two genes are very close to each other, their linkage will be very high, recombination will be very low, recombination will be very low. Similarly, students, what about A to C? A to C. What will happen? Since, like your Sampa and Pandu, their linkage is not there. They do not know each other. And so, your recombination will be very high here. So, when the two genes, remember students, when two genes on a chromosome, when two genes on a chromosome, if they are very far, linkage is less, recombination is more. Linkage is less, recombination more. If two genes are very close to each other, like your Champa and Pandu, the linkage will be high, recombination will be low. Recombination will be low. Did everyone understand? Did everyone understand? Now, can I tell one basic formula here? Yes, students. The basic formula here is going to be your... One second. The basic formula is going to be here linkage is inversely proportional to recombination yes inversely proportional to recombination if linkage is high recombination will be low linkage is high recombination is going to be very low clear yes yes students yes students based on this concept this is your linkage students this is your linkage what is linkage it is our depiction of chromosomes on a genes on a chromosome that is your linkage that's it you don't have to buy hard any of this just remember the formula remember the story and you can understand the linkage and recombination okay okay now students next topic is going to be this particular diagram okay can anyone tell me in the chat who understand this diagram Yes, many of you would have been like, yes, I can completely under understand this diagram, sir. It is very easy for me. But are there any students who do not understand this, this particular diagram? It looks very complicated sometimes. Yes, sir, it can look very complicated. So, can we make it very easy today? Can we? Yes, students. Now, they will, they will never ask you this combination. Students, remember, they will not ask you this combination. They will not ask you this combination. Very rarely they might ask you this combination. Very rarely they might ask you this combination. But I'll teach you that also. I will teach you that also. Let's understand what is the main significance of this diagram first. Okay. Main significance of this diagram. Students, if you look closely here, capital Y, Y and W, Y and W. Here we have W and M, W and M. Can I tell these two genes are very close to each other yes these two genes right here are very close to each other so their linkage will be high yes their linkage is going to be very high yes now what about recombination if linkage is very high since they're very close to each other recombination should be very low yes recombination should be very very low see what is written here now parental type is going to be what parental type is going to be your linkage that is 98.7%. Now, what about recombinant type? Recombinant type is just 1.396%. Uh, 1.39%. 1.3%. Just 1.3%. So, do you notice? Recombination is very low. Parental type is very high. Now, if we look at this diagram here, right here. Can I tell these two genes are quite away from each other yes they are away from each other on a single chromosome two genes on a chromosome are a little separate away so can i also tell linkage is very low linkage is low here so can i tell recombination is high here yes recombination is high here can you see here parental type 
62.6% recombinant type 37.2% did you notice as the chromosomes are moving away from each other sorry, as the genes as the genes are moving away from each other recombination is increasing recombination is increasing why because since the two genes are away from each other linkage is very low so recombination is going to be very high recombination is going to be very high did everyone understand the students did everyone understand this particular concept here that's all you need to know that's all you need to know students don't buy hard any of this okay now let's understand what we understand from the entire can we summarize the entire linkage and recombination that is morgan observed that two genes did not segregate independently of each other see as mendel said see mendel told mendel told you that two genes are separating independently but according to according to morgan morgan observed that two genes are actually not separating that is there can be some form of crossing over therefore we can be some form of crossing over the f2 ratio deviated from your 9 is to 3 is to 1 there was a deviation from your 9 is to 3 is to 1 deviation morgan attributed this to the physical association or linkage of two genes so students when two genes are present together it is following your mendelian genetics to some extent but when the two genes are very away from each other when the two genes are very away from each other there is more and more recombination that is against mendel now yes that is against mendel mendel's hypothesis right when genes are grouped on the same chromosome some genes are very tightly linked that is linkage is very high showed very low recombination some genes are loosely linked they show very high recombination they show very highly combination genes controlling the body color and eye color were tightly linked that's why showed only 1.3 percent recombination because linkage is very high here so recombination is very low similarly genes controlling eye color and wing size are loosely linked means what linkage is very low so what will happen recombination will be high combination will be high 37 point 2% recombination. Clear? Done? Sir, uh, even in cross B, linkage percentage is high than the recombination. Ah, listen to me very carefully. Students, whatever happens, the two chromosomes are still on the same chrome on two, two genes are still present on the same chromosome. If they if the parental type if the parental type has to become even more or less if the parental type has to become even more or less these two genes have to be separated very far they have to be separated very far since they are not so far right now since we can see them here it is still okay okay mm -hmm. now one famous question is students one the most famous question here the most famous question here that is Morgan student, remember this name all of you, remember this name, stick it in your mind, all of you remember this name, who is the student of Morgan, that is your Alfred Stewart went, is the name of your Morgan student, what did he do, he mapped the gene position on the chromosome, that is he identified on one chromosome, he identified on one chromosome which gene is present where which gene is present where that is called as gene mapping gene mapping was done by your alfred stewart went he used frequency of recombination between the gene pair on the same chromosome as a measure to distance between the genes okay distance between gene now here that is today it is used as a starting point in the sequencing or of the whole genome that is your human genome project remember human genome project in your human genome project entire theory was used here the theory is here students the theory of your human human genome project is right here okay now students can we understand can we understand what is the meaning of polygenetic inheritance now can we start can we start linkage and recombination is over linkage and recombination is done now can we start with polygenetic inheritance all of you drink some water All of you drink some water now, quickly. All of you drink some 
वॉटर क्विकली यस सर हाउ टू फाइंड डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू जीन्स ऑन अ क्रोमोजोम दैट इज अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन स्टूडेंट देर वॉज बीन पी वाई क्यू ऑल्सो ऑन दैट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू जीन्स फॉर दैट यू नीड टू नो यू द सेंटी मॉर्गन डिफरेंस देल गिव यू सेंटी मॉर्गन देल गिव यू डिस्टेंस एंड देन यू फाइंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू जीन्स ओके देल गिव यू द इन्फॉर्मेशन देल गिव यू मैपिंग देल गिव यू मैपिंग देल नॉट गिव यू द एंटायर कैलकुलेशन देल गिव यू डिस्टेंस देन यू हैव टू मैप इट इन अ क्रोमोजोम दैट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन कम ओके students what is polygenetic inheritance polygenetic inheritance is very simple when many genes control one trait when many genes we have many genes controlling one trait that is called as your polygenetic inheritance that is called as your polygenetic inheritance now what is the example here what is the example can anyone tell me does anyone know any example of polygenetic inheritance any example anyone human skin color the other example is your human height fur coat of dogs and cats dog fur coats and dogs and uh, dogs and uh, dogs and cats also is a polygenetic inheritance now students remember one point here that is your polygenetic inheritance polygenetic inheritance can also be influenced by environment by environment one quick example for this one quick example for this that is does your mother say eat almonds early morning take almonds soak it in water and eat the almonds in the morning or your mother will be saying eat some dry fruits eat walnut why students remember this almonds walnut and everything can actually help you in your memory retention can actually increase you to become like you know much more able to smarter also so there is a scientific reason that is your intelligence the human intelligence is also a polygenetic inheritance okay it can be influenced by human it can be in, in, it can be influenced by environmental factors environmental factors okay one more point here which question has come from the main one more main point here is one more slide is there no it's not there okay what is the one more point here is the effect of each allele is additive effect of each allele is additive what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of the students effect of each allele is additive in nature that is students oops 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 oops, 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 oops. one second Sound check, sound check. Yes, sound is coming right. Now, students, so what is the meaning of this effect of each allele is additive? That is, imagine if you have many genes for one character or one trait. So, imagine the, we have A A B B C C. If all are dominant, it's going to be very dark in color. Imagine now we do not have all the alleles to be dominant we do not have all alleles dominant now we have capital a small a capital b small b capital c small c this is going to be a little more brownish in color skin color can become brown what if we have small a small b small b small c small small c it's going to be very what do i say light skin color light skin color it becomes very light skin color that is the more number of alleles are there the more number of dominant alleles are present the effect becomes darker so if all the dominant very dark color if everything is receive very light skin color are you noticing that is called as your additive effect this is called as your 
additive effect clear the next concept which you have to learn is uh, is called as your pleiotropy next concept is pleiotropy now what is this pleiotropy students what is this pleiotropy it is completely opposite of your polygenic inheritance in case of pleiotropy a single gene a single gene is responsible for multiple phenotypic expression it is complete opposite i always tell i always tell phenot pleiotropy i always tell pleiotropy is like a mother a mother will cook in the house she will clean everything she will also go to go out buy groceries she will take care of you she will pack your food she will make sure you are sleeping on time do you realize your mother is doing so many different type of work at one go that is like pleiotropy that is one gene is responsible for multiple phenotypic expression example is going to be your phenyl ketonuria the example is going to be phenyl ketonuria sir what sir is that why people from different parts of the world look different yes and students remember the one of the main reasons for skin color is a particular thing called as melanin if your melanin pigment is high more darker color which is very good if melanin pigment is less skin is very light color skin is very light color example is going to be your phenyl ketonuria area clear and you should remember the symptoms also what are symptoms here symptom is very simple that you have mental retardedness is going to be there yes then we have reduction reduction in the hair hair loss and everything is there is the symptoms of phenyl ketonuria area okay now students can we start with the sex next concept is going to be your sex determination do you realize one after another one after another we are finishing concept by concept by concept by concept and this is one of the biggest chapters which you have in your syllabus right one of the biggest chapters so many concepts to remember here and we are doing one by one every concept and summarizing it and to make sure you remember everything the next concept which we have is sex determination let me drink some water and then and we'll start sex determination now okay Now students quickly like the video all of you. Yes, that is my goal sweetie. To make every single chapter easy. Now students can we start with sex determination now? One by one we are finishing every concept. Yes, I am doing, we are doing, this is the block, this is what is block means. This is what block strategy is. You summarize every single chapter in a way that you do not miss out any point and you also finish it in less time. That is the meaning of block strategy and you are building your foundation up to your top level. Okay? Yes. Now students, in sex termination, it is very, very, uh, what do I say? Very difficult to find. Not now, back in the days. Many different scientists could not identify why is it is happening. What is the main reason for sex termination? Then there was one scientist. There was one scientist called as your... Henkings. Henking was a scientist who actually wor worked on your insects. He did sex determination in your insects. Now, what is the method he used, students? What is the method he used? He method he used was he found out that in insects, in insects, after spermatogenesis, he noticed that in insects after spermatogenesis. 50% of the sperm, 50% of sperm, one second, 50% of sperm received some form of nuclear structure. 50% of the sperm received from some form of nuclear structure, while 50% sperm did not receive nuclear structure 50 percent of sperm found out them some nuclear structure is present here 50 percent sperm there was no nucleus at all so every single time this nuclear structure was present 
he called this nuclear structure as X body. He called it X body. Now, why did he call it X body? You do it right. Yes, I'll tell pedigree analysis today. Don't worry. I'll tell. It was it was actually correct. What I mentioned was correct last time. I cross verified. Okay. So he called it as X body. Remember how you do it in mathematics. Imagine you do not know any single uh, some uh, numerical formula or you do not know anything else, you call it X body, right? So even he called it X body. So if the 50% 50 50% did not like 50% who received the structure, he called it X body. Later, after many years, this was found to be your X chromosome. It was found to be X chromosome. Now, students, can I tell you where exactly question will come from? Can I tell you exactly where question will come from and where questions have actually come from? That is nothing but your sex determination in humans, sex determination in the case of your birds, sex determination in the case of your insects, sex determination in the case of your butterfly. Students, your entire sex determination can be divided into three types. One is called as your male heterogamity. Other one is called as your female heterogamity. And third one is called as your haplo diploidy. Now, what is this male heterogamity? What is this female heterogamity, students? Remember this one line very carefully. If the sperm or the male gametes is deciding the sex of the offspring it falls under male heterogamity that is the male will have two different types of sex chromosomes but in the case of female heterogamity the female gametes will be of two types that is two type of eggs will be there okay now here example is very important under male heterogamity the two example is going to be first one is going to be humans who have xx and xy xy is male obviously male heterogamity the other one is going to be your grasshopper other one is going to be your grasshopper we have xx and x0 xx as well as x0 xo is the male here now what about female heterogamity students can anyone tell me what are the examples for your female heterogamity the first one is your insects. The first one is your, well, not insects, say birds. The hen. The insects is here. The first one is going to be your birds. Under birds, do they have the ZW and ZZ type? ZW as well as your ZZ type of your sex domination. Here, ZW is going to be a female. It's going to be your female similarly we have the butterfly similarly we also have the butterfly so do you think number of chromosomes in male and female are equal see here do you think they're equal do you think they're equal here tell me in the chat quickly see here they're equal are they equal here tell me in the chat quickly are they equal tell me quickly Are they equal here again? Are they equal here again? See, one is Z0. If one chromosome is actually missing here, it means chromosome number is not same here. What about here? Chromosome number also is not same here. Right, chromosome number is not same. So, in the case of humans, it is same. Male and female chromosome number is same. But in the case of your grasshopper, XO type, chromosome number is not same. In the case of butterfly, again it is not same. So, chromosome number, this is an in-text question and we have covered this question in your in-text question series. Okay. <laughs> Students, the next one is going to be your sex determination in your honeybee. Sex determination in the case of your honeybee. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. That is, we have the male here and we have the female. Male, female is going to be your diploid. Female is going to be diploid, male is going to be haploid. 
that is with 16 chromosomes and here we have the 32 chromosomes, 32 chromosomes, 16 chromosomes. Male will produce sperm, female will produce the egg. When the fusion happens, what do you obtain? Can, you tell, can anyone tell me in the chat? If male sperm and the female egg is fusing, what do we obtain? Students, the one line we should remember here is the sex determination in the case of your honeybee is based on the chromosome numbers present, right? In the in the offspring. Now, if this is your female gamete, this is going to be n is again sixteen here. Here n is 16. Here we have mitosis happening. Here we have meiosis is happening. Meiosis is happening. Yes, meiosis is happening here. Now, when sperm and egg meet, 16 chromosome, 16 chromosome. So, whatever offspring you obtain is 32 chromosome. And I told you in the case of honeybee, sex determination is mainly based on the chromosome number. Now, what is the chromosome number here? 32 chromosome. So, if 32, 30, 32 chromosome, if 32 chromosome is there, it means it's going to be a female. It is going to be a female. So, that is n is going to be 32 here. Now, this female can either become queen or it can either become a worker. And they become a worker. Clear? Now, students, what other thing is this egg right here this egg right here can undergo a process called as parthenogenesis it can undergo a process called as your parthenogenesis and produce a male produce a male see this is n is 16 parthenogenesis is happening this here also n is going to be 16 itself and this male is called as your drone is called as your drone clear it's called as your drone students the entire sex, de sex determination in the case of honeybee it is based on the number of chromosomes present in your offspring if it is 16 chromosome it is going to be a male if they are 32 chromosomes it's going to be a female that's it that's it mm -hmm. Now, students, let me tell you on few important lines here. This drone right here, this drone right here, does it have a father? See, if you look here, this drone here directly developed from parthenogenesis from the egg, that is from female. So, can I tell no father? No father. No father at all. Now, can this drone later reproduce? No, it is sterile in nature. It is sterile in nature. It cannot reproduce. That is, it can reproduce, but the resultant will be a female only. If this drone reproduces, the offspring is going to be female only. So, can I tell? No son. No son at all. No son. Now, can this particular drone have a grandson? That is, this drone has a daughter. That daughter can undergo parthenogenesis and produce a drone one more. Remember students, this drone can produce a sperm. That will lead to a female. But that female can develop a drone. So, it, it can have a grandson. Yes, it can have a grandson. Now, this drone right here students, it doesn't have a father. But it has a mother. But that mother mated with this male here. Yes. So, so can I tell it can have a grandfather. So, there is no father here. There is no father here. It can, but it, this female is not from where? This female is developed from a drone only, right? This female is developed from a drone. So, it can have a grandson or grandfather. It can have a grandfather. Clear? Now, students, let's understand mutation. Let's understand mutation. Now, we are coming towards the end of the chapter. We are coming towards the end of the chapter. Mutation, pedigree, diseases, done. Do you realize? Do you realize, students, mutation, 
pedigree as well as your diseases entire chapters entire chapter is done now let's understand your disease uh, let's understand your mutation students mutation are of three types one is called a gene mutation one is called as a chromosomal aberration one is called as your genomatic one is called as your genomatic now what is the genomatic students genomatic is nothing but your change in chromosome number it is change in chromosome number yes this is change in chromosome structure change in chromosome structure change in gene number yes change in gene number change in gene sequence change in gene sequence yes what about gene mutation all of you gene all of you know gene mutation that is change in dna change in dna now this particular one that is genomatic that is change in chromosome number that can be of divided into further divided into multiple types that is this can be divided into aneuploidy aneuploidy as well as your euploidy now what is this aneuploidy and euploidy students in euploidy entire set of chromosomes entire set of chromosome can be changed then what is euploid uh, aneuploidy again students aneuploidy can also be further divided into two types aneuploidy can be further divided into two types that is hypoploidy hypoploidy as well as your hyperploidy Now, what is this hyper and hypo students? Hyper is nothing but your increase in number of chromosomes. Hyper is nothing but your increase in number of chromosomes. Here, increase in number of chromosomes. Increase. Now, what is this hyperploidy students? Hyperploidy is nothing but decrease in number of chromosomes. Decrease in number of chromosomes. Can we give a quick example? Can we give a quick example? Yes, students. The quick example is going to be your for hyperploid it's going to be trisomy of 21 trisomy of 21 there is increase in number of chromosomes extra chromosome right then we have down syndrome yes we have down syndrome then we also have klein finter syndrome yes we have klein finter syndrome all of them are hyperploidy that is increase in number of chromosomes increase in number of chromosomes now what is hypoploidy students example is going to be your Turner syndrome. It's going to be your Turner, Turner's syndrome. End out here, students. End out here. Do you realize how we entirely classified your entire mutation? And based on this, a one question can come. Okay. Have you liked the video, students? Tell me in the chat. Have you tell me tell me in the chat? Have you smashed the like button? Mm -hmm. The target is 400 students. The target is 400 before go pay command enters the class. 400 likes should be there. Quickly like the smash button if you are able to understand this particular mutation. Yes. Now, the next thing is going to be pedigree analysis. Next thing is going to be pedigree analysis. Now, you need to understand why are we doing pedigree analysis? Why? What is the importance of pedigree analysis? The main importance of pedigree analysis is to identify if in your family or relation, if there is a some type of chromosomal disease clear some type of disease as there or not that is unless of trait in several generations for family is called as pedigree analysis right now in human genetics it provides a strong tool to help in tracing the inheritance of a specific trait abnormality or a disease okay now students if you look at your previous year questions that is previous year need questions you will notice Questions have directly 
questions have directly come from this table here, right here. Yes, especially do you see this part here? Consensus mating, that is mating between relatives. This particular symbol has been so viral. They keep on asking, I don't know why. They always keep on asking this. Aneuploidy. Yes, neat UG 24. In aneuploidy, what happens is, in aneuploidy, there can be increase in number of chromosome. One chromosome can increase or one chromosome can decrease. Remember in trisomy of 21, in 21st chromosome, there is an extra chromosome is there. That is your hyperploidy. Hyperploidy means decrease in number of chromosome. Decrease in number of chromosomes. Okay. Now students, this is what I want to tell you. All of you take a screenshot. All of you want, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this. Oh, that is not visible in the last. Huh? I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. One. I'll tell you that one. I'll tell you that one. Students, listen to me very carefully. This is actually correct and this will help you to find, this will help you to actually solve every single pedigree analysis. That is, autosomal dominant, what are the characteristics? In autosomal dominant, you need to know, one second, can I capture this? Oh, oh, oh. No, I don't know what happened. Huh. Can you see this now properly? In your autosomal dominant, what happens? It is a little inverted, but it's fine. Autosomal dominant, dominant, don't skip generation. Affected parents can have unaffected children. Receive is going to be, it can skip generation. Unaffected parents can have affected children. Okay. Then, I'll move aside. Uh, hey, I'll send you the, I'll, I will give you the PP, don't worry. I will give you the PPT one second, don't worry. Now, so, Arshita is asking me, sir, what is frame shoot mutation and what is your point mutation? Do you want to learn that today? Do you want to learn what is point mutation, what is frame shift mutation? That will be thought by your Gopika ma'am in your prince in your molecular base of inheritance. In the next probably half an hour, she'll gonna come. Okay. Now students, in your X-linked, oops, 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 oops. The camera wire. In camera wire, we have sorry, I'm telling camera wire. In X link, in X link, we have dominant and recessive. In dominant, we have Disease never transfer from your father to son. In your X thing dominant, disease will never go from father to son. All daughters of a affected father will have affected, will be affected. Females are more affected here. Then we have receiver in recessive, X linked recessive. More males are affected. The disease will always go from mother to son and father to daughter. Then in the case of your X linked recessive. In the case of your X linked recessive, never father to son, it will never go. It will never go from father to son. Clear? Clear, students? Quickly, virus, sir. Where is the virus? Now, students, you will get this particular PDF in your telegram. You, you can utilize it from there. And also, if you want, I'll move aside a little. You can take a screenshot. You know, all of you can take a screenshot. 3, 2, 1, done. Now, apart from this, you also have Y linked, right? Y linked is very simple. Y linked will always go from father to father. That's all. Father to father. Okay. See, here, students, the example given here is representation pedigree analysis of a autosomal dominant. Ex that is, example is your myotonic dystrophy. Need PYQ. Myotonic dystrophy is an example of your autosomal dominant. That is, Affected parents can have unaffected children. Affected parent, this is the affected parent. Can he have an unaffected children? Yes, unaffected children. Clear? Affected parents can have unaffected children. Now, what about your second one? That is autosomal recessive. Example for your sickle cell anemia. Example for sickle cell anemia. Here, what is the reason? Unaffected parents can have affected children. Parents are unaffected. Yes, parents are unaffected. Can they have affected children? Yes, they can have affected children. There it is.
clear this is how you can identify pedigree analysis but trust me students they will never give you such complicated pedigrees in your life they will not give you pedigrees such complex pedigrees but if they give you also you know how to solve it now and what exactly they can ask you in pedigree is that they can ask you about the symbols they can ask you about examples they can ask you about example here myotonic dystrophy which is the only example which is the only example which is given in your ncrt for your autosomal dominant remember that very carefully remember that very carefully okay then we have autosomal recessive that is going to be your sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia now students can we start with the last chapter last part of this chapter next 20 minutes this chapter will be over next 20 minutes the entire chapter is over and when did we start we approximately started two hours back right do you realize approximately two hours back we started the class in mere two hours the entire chapter is going to get over okay can we start students quickly fire in the chat or like the video students i'll check your attendance mate i'll check your attendance is everyone marking the attendance or not no no one is marking we are still almost more than 50 likes is required to finish your entire target 400 likes target quickly like the video friends can we start the last part of your chapter genetic disorders last part students are you able to understand this is the block strategy we are actually giving you the high weightage chapters in such an easy manner do you realize the entire chapter is actually getting over entire chapter in just two hours and i know so many students are actually still struggling to understand this chapter they're like so this is so complicated sir so complicated so complicated it is not it is very easy the only complicated part is your numericals which we'll be doing in next in next five minutes okay next 20 minutes okay now students let, let me write let write down with me all of you write down with me the genetic disorders now one by one the entire disorder students the entire disorders can be divided into two categories all of you know that the first category is called as your chromosomal disease other one is called as your mendelian disease right let's write mendelian first because we study mendelian first we have the mendelian disorders then we also have chromosomal disorders disorder okay now what do we study under your mental disorder in mental disorder we study about your autosomal yes autosomal the autosomal can be further divided students yes it can be autosomal autosomal dominant or it can be autosomal recessive autosomal recessive yes autosomal dominant only i told you in your ncrt the only example which is given in your ncrt for autosomal dominant which will tell me in the chat quickly the only example for autosomal dominant is your md that is myotonic myotonic dystrophy diastrophy what would you call it myotonic dystrophy now what about recessive in recessive we have your pku phenylketonuria we also have your sickle cell anemia yes we also have thalassemia we also have thalassemia and we also have your albinism which is not given in sensitivity but you should remember they can give you a question albinism yes albinism is there now students what about under your mendelian disorder can we also have sex linked yes the end is there is sex linked that is example is going to be let me change the color for this yes the example for your sex link is going to be color blindness and hemophilia
Color blindness as well as hemophilia. Okay, done. Now what about chromosome? Chromosomal disorders again can be divided into two types. We can also have sex linked and we can also have autosomal here also. Yes. Can, can anyone, anyone give me an example for your autosomal example? Tell me check quickly. What is the autosomal example for your chromosomal disorder? That is going to be your Turner syndrome. That is sorry, not a Down syndrome. That is going to be your Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Yes. Over the sixth thing we have Turner syndrome as well as Kleinfetter syndrome as well as your Kleinfetter syndrome. Clear? This is how you should write. This is how you should write and remember what about your Mendelian chromosomal autosomal sex link. Autosomal sex link. In autosomal we autosomal dominant recessive. Sex linked autosomal sex linked for your chromosomal disorders. Did everyone write down? Did everyone write down? Everyone tell me in the chat quickly. Done? Done, 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 done. Yes. Now can we start one by one? Can we start with your color blindness now? Let's start with color blindness. Very simple students. Very simple. There is nothing much. There is nothing much to remember. Only remember the first few points which I am telling you. Apart from that, it's a piece of cake. Because if you know, the main questions actually come from here. The main questions actually come from here. They'll ask you what is autosomal dominant, recessive, sex link. They'll ask you directly here. See, we just learned color blindness is a sex link disease. Yes. Now, what happens here, students? Inside your eyes, inside the eyes, there is cones and rods. There is cones and rods. There can be a defect in that. That is, defect in either red or green cone of eyes. Unable to discriminate between red and green color. That is, imagine you're driving, fast you're driving, car, signal, red. Can the color blind tell, can a color blind person tell if it is red signal or green signal? He can't tell. He'll think it is green, he'll keep on driving. Accident. Remember, so color blind person cannot differentiate between red color and green color. Okay. Defect is due to mutation in a gene present on the X chromosome. Mutation is mainly dependent on the chromosome present on your X chromosome, gene present on your X chromosome. Males suffer more when compared to female. Females are usually carriers. Females are usually carriers. Males are technically affected more here. Males are technically affected more here. Do you see here? Mutation on the X chromosome. In X chromosome, there is a mutation here. Okay, students. Now, how will they ask you a question here? How will they ask you a question? They'll ask you a question for sure for color blindness, but how will they ask you a question? That is, they can give you information like this. That is, color blind man marries a girl with normal vision. You need to tell what is the progeny obtained with percentage. They can ask you percentage of progeny which is proper, unaffected, percent of progeny which is affected. Now, how will you solve this, students? How will you solve this? Very simple. Very, very simple. That is, first you want you to do is write down what is given. That is, parents. What are the parents? Normal vision woman and color blind man. Then what do you do? Then you form the gametes. Then you make the gametes. Gametes done? Yes. So gametes are also done. Now next, what is the next step? Next step is going to be cross. What do you do? X, X from here, X, C and Y from here. Now, what do you obtain? Now, what do you obtain students here? Two girls are carriers. Two girls are here carriers. Two boys are two normal boys two normal boys here two boys are normal two girls are carrier now they can give you question like this and they can ask you and they can ask you what is the percentage of carrier daughters they'll give you examples 25 percent 100 percent 75 percent 
एंड जीरो परसेंट वट इज द आंसर चैट क्विकली इफ द गिवन क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस वॉट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ यूर कैरियर गर्ल्स फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर रिपीज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन कैरियर गर्ल्स इज गोना बी योर हाउ मच कैरियर गर्ल्स इज गोना बी फिफ्टी परसेंट एक्सैक्टली कैरियर गर्ल इज गोना बी फिफ्टी परसेंट ना इफ दे कैन आस्क यू क्वेश्चन वॉट परसेंटेज आर एफेक्टेड इंडिविजुअल्स यूर दे कैन आस्क यू क्वेश्चन वॉट परसेंटेज ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स आर एफेक्टेड यूर वट इज द आंसर देन वट इज द आंसर देन स्टूडेंट्स एफेक्टेड इंडिविजुअल्स दैट इज गोना बी जीरो परसेंट जीरो परसेंट आर एफेक्टेड यूर एफेक्टेड नो वन इज एफेक्टेड स्टूडेंट्स रिमेंबर नो वन इज एफेक्टेड यूर ओके एफेक्टेड इज गोना बी जीरो नॉर्मल इज गोना बी अगेन फिफ्टी परसेंट नॉर्मल इज अगेन गोना बी टू परसेंट एड इज कमिंग ओके Oh, I can't see the name. Vishwa, Vishwa Teja, please watch the block one. If you watch block one, entire plant physiology has been done in block one. Block two, genetics. What is there in that? Now, students, do you want one more question? Should I skip the question? Do you want one more question like this, or do you want me to? Do you want me? To, do you want me to? Do you want one more question like this, or should I skip one more question? I have one more question like this. Do you want to do? Do you want to do one more question like this? Can we solve? Tell me if you want to, then I'll do it. Why will I do it? Bajaj Electronic Systems. <laughs> you want? Students, question will actually come in your examination like this. They will not ask you extra high-five questions. Okay. Now, look at one more question here. That is, if carrier girl heterozygous, that is, carrier girl marries a colorblind man. Carrier girl is marrying a Carrier girl is marrying a blind girl. Now you tell me in the chat. I ask you write it like this: What is the what is the percentage of what is the percentage of affected individuals? Can anyone tell me in the chat? Yes. Thaya. Yeah, yes. Can anyone tell me what is the percentage of affected individuals now? Can anyone tell me affected individuals percentage? Tell me. While you tell me that, I'll quickly solve this for you. Can I quickly solve this for you all of you? Yes. Now this is your parents. Mm -hmm. What are going to be your gametes here? Yes, these are your gametes. What about the gametes here? Yes. Can we do a cross now? Yes, we can do a cross. Yes, we can do a cross here. Now tell me in the chat, how many are affected? Look, look at the cross. I will move aside. I will move aside. Look at the cross now. Tell me. And tell me quickly in the chat, how many are girls? Tell me. I want answer for all this. Girls carrier. How many girls are carrier? Tell you. Tell me. and how many girls are color blind girls are color blind percentage i want in percentage students i want in percentage how many boys how many boys are color blind how many boys are color blind here and how many boys with normal vision boys with Normal vision, boys normal vision. Tell me percentage. All of you percentage. We want percentage. I want everyone to write down this. Write down girl carrier and answer. Girls color blind answer. That it should be mentioned here. I want to see it personally. I want to see personally. Yes, sufficient childs they have. <laughs> Yesterday I can't get over that part. Now students, remember here, girl carrier. How many girls are carrier? Tell me how many girls are carried here. Out of the two girls, 
out of the two girls one girl is carrier out of the two girls one girl is carrier so can i call it 50 percent 50 percent yes color blind girls out of the two girls one girl is color blind other girl is carrier so can i write 50 percent yes 50 percent uh, 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 we're doing I'll tell you, I'll tell you where you're going wrong. Some of you are going wrong. Now, what about colorblind boys? This boy is colorblind. Out of the two boys, 100%. Half is going to be 50%. What about normal vision? Out of the two boys, one boy is normal, one boy is colorblind. What is the answer? What is the answer, students? Tell me in the chat now. Are you able to solve this? Are you able to solve this? Are you able to solve this now? Mega? How is 25%? Everything is everything is 50-50. Everything is your 50-50. Out of the two, see, I'm talking about girls, boys separate. I'm talking about girls and boys separate. See, I'm talking about girls here. See, if I mention the entire population, then it will change. Then it will change completely. I am specifically talking about girls. In all of two girls, one is only carrier. That is, two is 100% friends. Two is 100%. If one is going to be 50%, half of it is 50%. Realize it. So, this is how they can actually confuse you in examination. This is how they can actually confuse you in examination. Do you realize? So, in examination, they can actually give you, they won't ask you the entire population sometimes. They will not ask you entire population. They will ask you specifically girls or specifically boys. That is, they can ask you how many girl carrier is there. Now, you tell me how many girls are there here totally. These two are boys. These two are girls. Now, out of the two girls, one is carrier. Other one is not. So, one is 50%, other one is 50%, right, technically. Girls colorblind, only one girl is colorblind, other girl is not colorblind. So, out of two, one is 50%, other one is 50%. Done. Boys, same. Okay. So, don't get confused, students. Don't get confused. Understand. Do you want to solve more questions like this? Do you want to solve more questions like this, numericals? If you want to solve more numericals, we have to ask Gopika ma'am to stay for at least 20 minutes outside. <laughs> okay. Or go become to drag me out. The next one is going to be your hemophilia. Next one is going to be your hemophilia. Now, what is hemophilia, students? It is a sex-linked recessive disease. It is a sex-linked recessive disease. A single protein that is part of your cascade of protein involved in the blood clotting effect. That is, students, in hemophilia disease, in hemophilia disease, what happens is blood clotting is not happening. If you take, if you add one cut, right? One cut, blood keeps on coming. One cut, the blood keeps on coming out. That is your hemophilia. That is, heterozygous female carriers for hemophilia may be transmit the disease. The family pedigree of your queen, Victoria, shows the number of hemophilia descendants. Okay. Mother of C, possibility of female becoming hemophilic is extremely rare here. A female will never become, an, uh, very rarely a female can become here. Only males are mostly affected in your hemophilia okay hemophilia the next one is going to be your sickle cell anemia again sickle cell anemia is a recessive disease all of you know is autosomal yeah. autosomal recessive disease and both hemophilia as well as sickle cell anemia both the diseases are blood related yes. they are related to blood both are blood disc blood causing okay both are blood causing now transmitted from the parent to the offspring when the both parents are carriers this, this is the most important line if you if you ask me in sickle cell anemia questions will come from two places in sickle cell anemia questions will come from two places now what are the two places one question can come from here the protein chain part the second question can come from here this line here transmit of from parents to the offspring when both parents are carriers for the gene. So, when both are carrier, then only the disease will be happening. Okay? I'll tell you, I'll show you an example. I'll show you an example. 
okay what happens when the hemo uh, sickle cell anemia happens what is the what happens there aren't enough healthy red blood cells to carry the oxygen that is your normal rbc which looks like this normal rbc will becomes sickle shaped a normal rbc will become sickle shaped like this like a sickle shape will become very sad very sad very sad okay mutation in the hb gene causing the abnormal hb synthesis resulting in the formation of sickle shaped cells students here if you notice right here we have your normal dna yes here we have t the t is replaced with a because of that mrna is changing we have gag now here we have gug because of that gag we have glutamic acid in the normal condition in the sickle cell condition what do we have we have valine at which position 1 2 3 4 5 6 at the sixth beta chain we have valine instead of glutamic acid what happens the change in the amino acid sequence caused due to the through a point mutation glutamic acid in the sixth position of the beta globin chain is replaced by valine causes the change in the hb and thereby rbc becomes sickle shaped and students remember one point here that is for a normal normal person our hb chain look like this hba hba now what about your carrier people what about your carrier there will be hba and one will be your hbs this is the color here this is the thief here this is the culprit here hbs now what about in your sickle cell patient in sickle cell patient sadly they'll have hbs and hbs only when hbs hbs both are present they'll become sickle cell anemic they'll become sickle cell anemic clear 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 next one is of phenylketonuria very easy students very easy that is affected individuals lack the enzyme to convert the amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine that is in general condition phenylalanine gets converted to your tyrosine but when there is no enzyme when there is no enzyme phenylalanine is not converted to tyrosine if phenylalanine is not converted to tyrosine what happens concentration of phenylalanine increases that is phenylalanine is accumulated and converted to phenyl pyruvic acid this phenylalanine becomes phenyl pyruvic acid and other derivatives accumulation of these in the brain results in the mental retardedness they become mental they become what cuckoo in the head okay these are also excreted through the urine and because of the poor absorption by the kidney next one we have thalassemia next one we have the thalassemia sounds so so nice no thalassemia say it thalassemia okay now autosomal linked recessive blood disorder it is also a blood disorder i think i mean sickle cell hemophilia anything we missed out huh? nothing i think we didn't miss out anything ha huh. what happens in the thalassemia students so we all of you know in hemoglobin how many chains are there tell me in the chat quickly in hemoglobin how many chains are there we have two alpha chains we have two beta chains yes thala for reason this is thalassemia is thala for reason 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and it's more than 7 okay <laughs> so here blood disorder resulting in forming of inadequate hb synthesis there is inadequate what inadequate hb synthesis out of the four chains out of the four chains alpha chain or beta chain they can be malfunctioning they can be malfunctioning right transmitted when the both parents are unaffected carriers for the gene defect could be due to the either mutation or deletion results in the reduced reduction rate of synthesis of one of the globin chains that is if a person has if a person has alpha thalassemia what happens if a person has alpha thalassemia alpha chain is missing so beta chain becomes more if a person has beta thalassemia beta chain is missing like not missing in terms beta chain is not functioning properly so alpha chain increases more and what you need to remember here is in alpha thalassemia uh, i'm saying thalapathy now <laughs> i'm saying thalassemia no thalapathy is yes. okay in alpha thalassemia it is chromosome 16 there is in on chromosome 16 there is defect in the hb a2 gene and hb a1 gene but in the case of students but in the case of your beta thalassemia it is chromosome 11 that is only an hbb gene is there perfected so we have abnormal hb 
with affected beta globin chain. Clear? In the case of beta thalassemia, beta chain is abnormal. Alpha thalassemia, alpha chain is abnormal. How are, have you called your friends? Yeah, how have you called your friends? Huh? Very important, very important doubt. Have you called your friends? Our admin is going crazy. Our admin is going crazy. One girl. Apala is saying, yes, I called one girl to other class. Megana also is like, yes, I also called one girl. Okay, students, that is the end of your Mendelian disorders. Now, can we start with your chromosomal disorders? Yes, can we? Yes, can we start with chromosomal disorders now? That is, in chromosomal disorder, we have something called as Down syndrome. Now, what do you need to remember about Down syndrome? Down syndrome is crossed by your trisomy of 21. On 21st chromosome, can you see an extra chromosome here? 21st position, one extra chromosome. Yes, occurs in females and males and is first described by your Langdon Down. Okay, so what happens here? What are the characteristics of your Down syndrome? What happens here? Listen to me very carefully. In the case of your Down syndrome, the disorder was first, okay, okay, okay. Langdon Down, 18, 1866. The affected individual with short stature, with small round head, furrowed tongue outside and partially opened mouth the palm is broad with characteristic palm creases. Physically and psy psychomotor and mental development is completely retarded here. That is in your case of Down syndrome. Now, what about your Klein-Finder syndrome? In Klein-Finder syndrome, first point you need to remember is Klein-Finder syndrome only and only takes place in the case of your males, and there is an extra X chromosome. Hence, it is 44 autosomes plus X X. Why? This is the genotype here. Okay. Now, what is the characteristics here, students? In the case of your Klein-Finder syndrome, what happens? Such individual has overlaid masculine development. However, the feminine development, that is development of breast, gynecomastia is also expressed. Such individuals are sterile in nature. So, overall masculine development, along that Development of breast, also called as gynecomastia, is also happening. Also happening. Okay. The next question. Not so much the next one. The next one is your Turner syndrome. Next one is your Turner syndrome. Now remember, Turner syndrome only and only happens in the females. It only and only happens in the females. That is loss of one X chromosome. So what do we have here? We have 44 autosomes plus X O. X O condition. One chromosome is completely missing here. One chromosome is completely missing. That is Turner syndrome. Now, what are the features? What are the symptoms here? That is going to be such female are sterile as ovaries are rudimentary besides the other features including the lack of secondary sexual characteristics. Lack of secondary sexual characteristics, students. Oh. Now, I have a question for all of you. I have a question for all of you. Can we do some questions now? Do you want to do some questions? Do you want to do some questions, students? For 15 minutes? Do you, want, do you want normal questions or numericals? I have both. Do you want normal questions or numericals? Do you want to do? Huh? Money? Sebastian. Sebastian, what is your last name? Sebastian DP is very nice. What is it, DP is? Sebastian DP looks very nice. Sebastian DP is even more amazing. You want to do? Want to tell me? I want everyone to type yes, sir. Every student, students, all the 88 or all the all the hundred students, I want everyone to type yes, sir, in the chat. Then only I'll make sure you solve the questions today. Then only I'll do numericals or both or whatever you want, I'll do. <laughs> Varun is like, no, sir, no. That is Aaron Eger. I couldn't see Sebastian. That's very difficult to see. That is old version, I guess. The third season, fourth season. Now, students, now can we, but if I have to solve the questions, students, normal questions, I will do rapid fire. Normal questions, I will do rapid fire. Normal questions, I'll do rapid fire. Numericals, I'll solve for you. What's that? Numericals, I'll solve for you. Normal questions, I will go rapid fire. And students, all these questions are PYQs. Okay. First question, can anyone tell me the first question answer here? 
first answer is very easy students all of you should be able to tell this the okay you see read the question i'll drink some water all of you ah uh. Quickly, I want everyone to participate. Then only this event or this session is going to be fruitful. Because when you're sitting in the class, it's very easy to not answer. But here you don't have an excuse. Exam is so close by. You do not have an excuse to say that no, sir, I don't want to answer. I want to sit quietly in the class. I don't want to do anything. That will not happen here now. Okay. Now, students. First question is going to be your Punnett square. The first answer is going to be your Punnett square. Next question, students. in which genetic condition each cell in the affected person each cell in the affected person has three sex chromosomes x x y condition where do you see it x x y condition tell me in chat quickly where do you notice x x y condition quick fires i want answer to be flying answer should be flying everyone x x y condition done ha <sighs> that is your kleinfelter syndrome we just learned kleinfelter syndrome happens only in the case of your males extra x chromosome override masculine development all that happens yes next question all of you quickly everyone should answer in a marriage between in a marriage between male with blood group a male with blood group a and female with blood group b the progeny had either blood group ab or b ab or b what could be the possible genotype of the parent now if the particular if a particular parent if a offspring has ab condition according to your co dominance according to your co dominance both the allele should be present in your parents both the present should be both the allele should be present in present so one parent should have allele for a one parent should have allele for b just yes, they should have now what about this b it means that one parent should have one a dominant allele one should be recessive allele now can we do a simple cross first one take let's take the first one ia I. Students, imagine if you do not, you are not able to use the logic and everything. Just do the cross and check. Just do the cross and check. Sometimes you might have some extra time in your exam, right? When you're so not confident, just do the cross and check. What is? What do we get? I B I B. I A. I B. I B. I. I A. I B. I B. I. Both of them will give you bleed bleed blood group. This will give you. A B blood group done done simple next question next question students do you understand this question just do the cross and check students just do the cross and check you should be able to do this very easily very easy question very easy question next question students what is the genetic disorder in which an individual has an overall masculine development gynecomastia and is sterile what is it called as quickly i want answers to be flying i want answers to be flying everywhere na ah. this is such an easy chapter after that you will tell me i want everyone in today's comments today i want to see so many comments today should flood with comments how principles of inheritance is so easy for you okay that is going to be your wizard kai na ga Klein Fender syndrome. We just discussed overall masculine development, development of breast. Okay, Klein Fender syndrome. Next question, students. Do you realize all of these are your neat PYQs? Neat PYQ students. Neat 2019 question. If you know the simple this chapter, such easy questions you like can understand. Should be able to solve. Next question, students. The frequency of recombination between the gene pair on the same chromosome as measure of distance between the genes was ex explained by. which was a scientist who explained gene mapping gene mapping yes the frequency of recombination between the gene pair 
on the same chromosome measure of distance between the gene measure of distance between the two genes was explained by student remember student remember the student students remember the student you students do you remember yes alfred stewart went all of you are very smart now all of you are very smart you should be able to answer all these questions next question students in a trium of snapdragon the red flower was crossed with the white flower and in f1 generation pink flower were obtained when the pink flower were self the f2 generation showed white red and pink flower choose the incorrect statement from the following choose the incorrect statement from the following quickly quickly <laughs> dear students i have told you law of segregation is it universal law of segregation is it universal subhashini law of segregation is universal obviously so this statement is completely wrong statement next question oh 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 oh, oh, oh it will answer should answer the best example of pleiotropy the best example for pleiotropy i made you write down this one i made you write down this question the best example for pleiotropy example for pleiotropy that is going to be your phenyl cutanaria now all the students in the chat i want everyone to tell me everyone to tell me in the chat phenyl cutanaria is caused by lack of which enzyme caused by lack of which enzyme quickly here phenyl alanine hydrolase enzyme phenyl alanine hydrolase enzyme if this enzyme is not present phenyl alanine cannot be converted to tyrosine cannot be converted to tyrosine i know all of you saw i know all of you saw by mistake <laughs> okay this is the enzyme students deliberately didn't tell you this because i knew there was a question on this okay next question the number of contrasting characters studied by mendel for his experiment number of contrasting characters characters chat quickly which number of characters easy question students nothing to think here seven characters he spoke about seven different characters and you should also know which is dominant and which is recessive also okay which is the dominant which is recessive why is there a dove sebastian is full uh, he's adding dove from that time i don't understand why he's adding dove huh why dove full piece you are next question chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed by are yaar easy question easy question students chromosomal theory of inheritance was given by which particular scientist i don't even explain this part certain and bovary in 1902 in 1902 certain and bovary next question students these questions are not easy questions technically these questions are your need pyqs need pyq we are solving need pyqs not easy questions identify the wrong statement with reference to the gene i the that controls abo blood grouping gene i that controls your abo blood grouping gene i controlling the abo blood grouping a person having only, has only two of the three alleles yes when a and b are present together the expression same type of sugar no that is your wrong statement that is your wrong statement because we know your gene a i a will produce your sugar that is galactose b will produce your galacto n, n galactose i mean yes so there is difference the difference is there difference in sugar is there okay next question oh ho easy match the following students remember the table remember the table students remember the table if you know that table where we drew entire uh, all the diseases which which is linked you should be able to answer this question very easily within 30 seconds 30 seconds need 2020 question 30 seconds i think one option is missing here
Oh, I think the question itself is missing, students. This is not match the following. Is one question is missing here. The question was supposed to be which is incorrect. Something is there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Something incorrect is missing here. Okay. Question is half written here. Sorry, sorry. Students. Next question. Do the next question. Do the next question, all of you. Do the next question. Experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance was given by experimental proof. Experimental proof was given by your T.H. Morgan. T.H. Morgan. Done. Next question. A cross between a male and female, both heterozygous for sickle cell anemia. Both are heterozygous for your sickle cell anemia. Right? Both are heterozygous. HBA and HBS. Both are HBA and HBS. Right? Both are HBA and HBS. Both are HBA and HBS. Whoa, 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 whoa. Aram se. Both are heterozygous. HBA and HBS. Now, what are they asking you? What percentage of progeny will be diseased? Easy. Just do the cross. Just do the cross. HBA, HBS, HBA and HBS. What do we obtain? HBA. HBA, HBA, HBS, HBA and HBS, HBS and HBS. Tell me, what is the percentage here? What is the percentage of this? Tell me quickly, what is the percentage? That's going to be your 1 by 4, which is technically 25%. Which is technically 25 percent. Oh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, some numericals I'm doing. Come now. That's right. No, come now, Miss Fun. If they see you, they get more energy. No, no, no. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if they look at you, they'll get more energy, ma'am. Full energy they'll get. Hmm. They'll make them solve some numericals. That's it. Okay, give them after that uh, 10 minutes. Ah, ma'am, definitely. Yeah. Students, are you excited for molecular basis of inheritance? Because I know. Ma'am has done this chapter 100 times also. If ma'am does, you'll be like, one more time, ma'am. One more time you do, we'll ask you, right? So, I think this is one chapter that I'll do forever on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. Research, go pick a molecular basis, molecular basis. <laughs> and, and it will be just 10 days apart. <laughs> they keep asking molecular basis of inheritance. <laughs> so, yeah. See, ma'am, still Jai Josh. Yes. How is it going, students? Are they able to solve questions? Ask them. Ask. I, I was checking the chats actually. They are yeah, solving they're questions. Solving yeah, yeah. Smart they become today. Yeah, yeah. And they, today they they're should... actually smart. Just that they're little, sometimes very lazy. Like, uh, why should I attend? Yeah. No need. Leave yeah, yeah. it. Leave it. Why yeah. should I watch blog series? Exactly. I will watch it after neat examination. <laughs> <laughs> students, do you realize we are in this short span of time, we are doing numericals plus your high weighted chapters and I know ma'am this chapter is backlog for so many students principles of inheritance and molecular basis both backlogs will be complete today only right ma'am yes okay um ma sir, please, please, yes ma'am please please yes please, please, please. what is that horlicks oh. <laughs> that's true sir this is <laughs> okay students know my secret now <laughs> students you should know our secret so gobika we don't drink much of tea or coffee we only drink horlicks and boost ah uh, not good for you so that is what we drink so ma'am bought me horlicks here <laughs> huh. i'll do that and you saw our shot recently right the boost was there after that shot was over i cut the boost and we ate the boost as such Hmm. Can we go to the next question now? Now, uh, hey, tell the answer this one. What is the answer? 25%, right? 25%. Now, next question, students. Now, pedigree analysis. Yes, boost the secret of higher energy, all of you. Next question, students. <laughs> well, not replied. Uh, select the incorrect ma match regarding the symbols used in your pedigree analysis. They have asked you 100 times also, you will not have the 110 times. And have you subscribed to our channel? Have you subscribed to our channel? All of you tell me in the chat quickly. If you are new to the channel, my name is Baswaraj sir. I am your botany master teacher. Just saying. 
and uh, some of you i don't think some of you know this right some of you do not know this gopika and gopika ma'am and i we are classmates do how many of you know that how many of you know that gopika ma'am and i are which are we are actually classmates from your masters i was in botany class she was in zoology class like we were classmates in first year many people don't know that that is your incorrect one this is because see, contiguous mating has to be two lines right two lines contiguous mating single line wrong next question students oh what is the answer oh i told show the answer students i showed the answer okay you didn't see the answer students you didn't see the answer imagine you didn't see the answer some of you know that right <laughs> yes yeah now let's see this question now do you want me to solve this question students do you want me to solve this question just say yes and i'll solve this question just say yes and i'll solve this question all of you now you saw the answer the answer is c but how is the answer c students can anyone tell me how is the answer c what is the expected percentage of f2 progeny with yellow and inflated pod so they are asking you to find percentage f2 progeny that is yellow and inflated yellow and inflated pod in, in a dihybrid cross experiment so what do we have dihybrid cross we have what do we have here now what are the parents side on the parents the parents are going to be your green color inflated pod and yellow color constricted pod constricted pod now how many of you remember how many of you how many of you what is this what is happening now how many of you remember the entire 9 is to 3 is to 1 ratio all of you remember right 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio all of you remember yes 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio all of you remember that now this is again same now what you need to do is if you do a cross if you do a cross between them what will obtain will obtain green inflated green constricted yellow inflated and yellow constricted that is nothing but 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 the same ratio will obtain right same ratio will obtain now here we have what they are asking you yellow inflated they are asking you ratio of yellow inflated right this is your yellow inflated that is 9 3 by 16 do it and tell me the answer 3 by 16 tell me the answer what is 3 by 16 that's all yes yes this do it 3 by 16 now the answer is done that is going to be your now students in the examination they can either ask you what is the percentage of green inflated tell me the chat. can anyone in the chat tell me can anyone in the chat tell me what is the percentage of what is the percentage of your green inflated can any, anyone in the chat tell me what is the percentage of your green inflated anyone what is the percentage of your green inflated that is going to be your 9 by 16 tell me in the chat 9 by 16 right next question here if a female individual is with round head if a female individual with a small round head furrowed tongue partially open mouth broad palm with characteristic palm crease do you notice this is a direct line of ncert again direct line of your ncert yes also physically psychomotric and mental development is retarded the chirotype and analysis of such an individual shows 10 seconds all of you just 10 seconds 10 9 
एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन टाइम्स ऑफ दैट इज योर ट्राई सो मी ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन दिस इज टेक्निकल योर डाउन सिंड्रोम राइट डाउन सिंड्रोम इफ यू नो द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स यू कैन सॉल्व एवरी क्वेश्चन विथ ईज एवरी क्वेश्चन डन 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 ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सिकल सेल एनीमिया एंड हीमोफीलिया आर ऑटोसोमल डोमिनेंट स्टेटमेंट नंबर वन स्टेटमेंट नंबर टू सिकल सेल एनीमिया एंड हीमोफीलिया आर डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ ब्लड यस दे आर डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ ब्लड नाउ वन मोर थिंग आई फॉर टू मेंशन हियर इज योर सिकल सेल एनीमिया इज अ क्वालिटेटिव डिसऑर्डर क्वालिटी इज मिसिंग वाइल थलासीमिया थलासीमिया इज क्वांटिटेटिव डिसऑर्डर रिमेंबर दैट आल्सो क्वांटिटेटिव डिसऑर्डर इजी व्हाट इज द क्वेश्चन नाउ What is the answer? Remember, I told you in the in your syllabus. In your syllabus, what happens? In your syllabus, the only example for your autosomal dominant, only example for your autosomal dominant, that's going to be your myotonic dystrophy. So, can I tell this statement is wrong? This statement is correct, right? Done. Next question, students. Low frequency recombination. Low frequency recombination indicates the genes present if frequency is recombination frequency is low it means linkage is very high if linkage is very high can the two different genes on a chromosome located very close to each other yes done located close to each other that's it recombination frequency is very low linkage is high very close to each other easy question next question students in drosophila genes of color of the body and color of the eye are present on which particular chromosome again direct line of ncrt direct line of your ncrt that is going to be a chromosome x chromosome x here located on the chromosome x done now assuming that the fur color of a animal is dark range from range from the color shade and white a cross is made between a male with a dark fur color and the female with white color sir what would be the fur color of the f1 generation remember students i told you example of fur color example of fur color skin color height of an individual all of these are examples of your polygenetic inheritance yes they are example of your polygenetic inheritance in polygenetic inheritance do you find one exact color no in polygenetic inheritance you find a wide range of colors wide range of colors in polygenic inheritance yes so all intermediate colors we will obtained all intermediate colors remember that point all intermediate colors next question a father will never pass the gene for hemophilia into the son obviously because it is a x linked disease hemophilia is a x linked disease that is sex linked recessive trait obviously so both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of your a obviously it makes sense right if you read only it makes sense so much next question if a color blind female if a color blind female marry some man whose mother was also color blind this is a mother whose mother was also color blind it means the son is going to be yes carrier it means sun is, sun is also going to be color blind because he's going to get the x chromosome from here y chromosome from the mother y chromosome from the father what is the chance of progeny having the color blindness do the cross this is the lady here this is the husband husband's mother is color blind husband's mother is color blind means whatever chromosome he gets from his mother that has color blindness in it so he, this person also be color blind color blind here let's do a cross Tell me in the chat what is the answer now. Tell me in the chat what is the answer. The answer is going to be hundred percent. Answer is going to be hundred percent now. Okay. Clear. <clears throat> Next question. Which of the following occurs due to presence of autosomal linked dominant trait? I told you. What is the answer for dominant? 
tell me what is the example of your dominant dominant is going to be what myotonin dystrophy only one example is there in crt only one is there dominant one next question exotype of sedimentation can be found where the exotype where do you find exotype i told you exotype we told you right done exotype is seen in your grasshoppers exotype is seen in your grasshoppers in birds and butterflies it's z z z w type z z z w type is there right next question in which disorder change in a single base pair of genes from beta globin chain results in the change in the glutamic acid to valine phenyl phenylalanine sickle cell anemia if i tell you phenyl anemia you will also believe me it is your sickle cell anemia next question a heterozygous pea plant with violet flowers was crossed with the homozygous pea plant with white flowers violet is dominant over white which one of the following represents the expected combinations among the 40 progenies so what has it given us heterozygous pea plant with with violet flower heterozygous dominant was crossed with a homozygous pea plant with white flowers homozygous let's do a cross let's do a cross capital v small v small v small v capital v small v small v small v now out of this can i tell 50 percent is 50 percent is violet 50 percent is white yes 50 percent is white so what is the answer out of 40 40 divided by half is 20 20 are going to be your violet 20 are going to be white done done easy question next question again which of the following symbols represents the mating between relatives in humans oh answer is given here consensual mating consensual mating easy question last two questions students last two questions for you last two questions let's see who can do this question let's see who is able to do this question how can i zoom it are you able to see the question students are you able to see the question tell me if yes if not i'll write the question for you tell me are you able to see the question if not i'll write the question for you last two or three questions are there are you able to see the question or should i write it for you tell me quickly in the chat are you able to see or if should i write it no not able to see the question can you zoom on your phone you able to see the question right no okay fine all right try to zoom in try to zoom in <laughs> try to zoom in you can see right now listen to me carefully in a certain plant red fruit r is dominant over yellow fruit yellow fruit a tallness is dominant over the shortness if a plant is given what if a plant is given as r r t t genotype is crossed with is crossed with a plant with a genotype with a r r t t imagine you're doing a cross between them imagine you're doing a cross between them what is the percentage of tall plant with red fruits what is the percentage of tall plants with red fruits tell me chart quickly before i solve you should be able to tell what is the gametes you students gametes are going to be your rt yes you will also have gamut is going to be your r small t yes this is also possibility here we have rt only possibility now when we cross this and this what do we obtain we obtain r r capital t small t now what do we obtain if we do this r r small t small t now what is the phenotypic ratio what is the phenotype here this is going to be your red tall yeah, it's going to be red tall this is going to be red short red short so 50 percent is going to be your red tall 50 percent is going to be your red tall clear are you able to solve banny sebastian is it clear 
are you able to solve such questions easy questions yes next question the total number of progeny students a total number of progenies obtained through dihybrid cross of mendel is total number of progenies progeny is around 1280 in f in f2 generation in your f2 generation how many of them are recombinants how many are recombinants and how many are how many recombinants They're asking you how many are recombinants easy question again do it before me let's see students what is your phenotypic ratio tell me phenotypic ratio is going to be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 students i'll explain how to do such questions Dihybrid table is not required. They will not ask you dihybrid table. They will ask you such questions from dihybrid table. Okay. If this is your phenotypic ratio, listen to me very carefully how to solve such questions. Can I tell these two are your parental type? Parental type, I have told you already. Parental type. There is no crossing over here. So, can I call them also pure types? These two inside are your recombinants. They are your recombinants recombinants so can i tell they are impure <laughs> they are impure now how many are there here how many are there can i tell 9 plus 1 is 10 here we have 3 plus 3 is 6 3 plus 3 is 6 students if they ask you to find a number of if they ask you to find a number of uh, recombinants or number of this thing simple formula just what do you do first i'll do for pure i'll do for pure you need to try to you need to find for recombinant what is the simple thing you need to do take the number of pure divide by the total number of progenies into into the number of progenies in your f2 that is one two eight zero into one two eight zero and when you do this you obtain some calculator i will use calculator you use uh, you do it on your own mm -hmm. This is around 800. This is around 800. 800 of them are pure. 800 of them are pure. Now, what about this? It's going to be 6 divided by 16 into 1280. 1280. What do you obtain, students? What do you obtain now? Tell me check quickly. Answer. That is going to be your option number C, right? 480. Yes, yes, yes. Students, last question. Homework question. Homework question. What is the homework question, students? Mary's father has hemophilia. Mary's father has hemophilia, but her husband is also hemophilic. What would be the chance of other daughter having this disease? Homework question. Take it. Take a screenshot and do whatever you want. This is your homework question, students. This is your homework question. I want to see answer to this question in the comment section. If there is no answer, I will add the answer. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> if there is no answer, I will add. The, I will only reply to. I will only reply, and I'll tell the answer. Or some of one of them can type. One one, of, one person can type. Sir, I was not able to solve this question. I will reply the answer to that. Okay. I will reply the answer to that. Clear, 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 clear. Okay, I'll give you the I'll give you answer. Answer is D. Answer is D. Let's you can solve now. Answer is D. Answer is going to be D. If you're not able to solve it, if you're not able to solve this, I will tell you how. Okay. If you're not able to solve this, I'll tell you how it is. Don't worry, not now. That is the challenge. Take your time. Don't Google. <laughs> Take your time. Think about it. Think about it and then do it. Okay. Uh, how many of you want the class notes? Also tell me in the chat. I'll, I'll show you the class notes also. <laughs> answer is, anyway, I told you the answer, no? Now, how do you save this, students? How do you save this? Save. Save as, not file, huh? no, no, no. Cancel. 
I'll do export. I have to call copy command for this. Export as PDF. PDF. This is your POI. Principles of inheritance. I will keep it in uh, pictures. See. <gasps> no. POI. POI new. I think I don't know something it saved, sir. Something it saved. POI something it saved. Sir, if you are not able to solve it, it will become minus 5. Yes. Share the class notes, I will share the class notes. So, do you realize, I think we took 3 hours, right? 3 hours. But do you realize in last 3 hours, we not only did, we not only did the entire theory, we also did numericals. And do you see how many numericals we did? Do you realize how many numericals we did? That's the beauty of this block theory. That's the, uh, that's the beauty of your block strategy. In less time, more productivity, right? Let this get saved. Near completion, it says, I'm getting anxiety now. Why it's not completing still? If this doesn't save, you're not getting notes now. <laughs> if it's not saved, notes are not there. Okay. So, thank you so much, students, for attending today's class. <laughs> thank you so much, students, for attending today's class. Quickly mark your attendance. And if you're not there, and students, I would tell you one thing. Please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel because uh, this, students, do you think it's easy to stand here for three hours and talk and without taking a single break and making the entire presentation, finding questions? No, it is not easy. But, you know, when it feels easy, when you subscribe, when you comment, when you like the video, when I read your comments, so beautiful comments, I feel in the heart, I'm like, okay, fine, it was all worth it. So if I want to feel all worth it in the heart, I want to see some beautiful comments and some likes and some subscribers on the channel also. So if you consider subscribing to the channel, it will be helpful to us also to grow as a team. Right? It will be helpful for us to grow as a team also in the future. Okay. It is not completing. It's giving me anxiety now. <laughs> okay. It is not finishing. Oh my God. Oh, oh it's over. Huh? Okay. Okay. It's over. I think it's over. Students, pray it is saved. Okay. Students, pray it is saved. Pray. Please pray it is saved. It is not saved. Um, I don't know what to do. Exit. Current file is not saved. Oh. Okay. I'll do something. I'll do something. I'll find it if it is saved somewhere. One thing, students, you don't go anywhere. Gopi Kamam will come now and teach you monthly basis, but I'll just find it somewhere here. I'll go to where did I save students? Where did I save it? Pictures, right? Ah, yeah, it is there. Notes are here, students. Don't worry. Notes have been saved. You are all of you will get the notes on time. Today only. You want today only or tomorrow you want? Do you want it tomorrow or do you want it today? Saved. Why is it getting saved again? Ah. Hey, yeah. Why is it getting saved again? I don't know what is happening, students. No, you will get 10 minutes break now. Take break. All of you take break now. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. Sir, when will the class start for 11th moving to 12th? Very soon. We have so many things planned today. We have so many things planned today. 11th moving to your break. This is the break time. This is your break time. <laughs> okay, students, your class will start in next 10 minutes. Next class will start in 10 minutes, okay? Next class will start in 10 minutes. This is your break time. If you want to go, you can go or you can watch me struggle here. You can watch me struggle also. I don't know why I'm struggling so much. Break is till 10 minutes break you have. Okay, take 15 minutes break. Six forty will start. Six forty will start. Twenty minutes break is too much. Okay, six forty-five. Six forty-five. It's starting. We are starting properly. Break till it's over. Huh? Okay, okay, it's over, students. It's over. Break till six forty-five. Oh, my legs are all hurting now.
ब्रेड टिल सिक्स फोर्टी फाइव प्लीज एंड टू माई मील माई इज लॉकड आउट
I think just saying bye bye to everyone. Bye bye students. Uh, my job is done for now. The next block I'll be taking is ma'am. We'll be doing biotech. The next block is going to be biotech from biology side, and uh, tomorrow there is going to be a special video coming out in which ma'am fell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So are you ready students for the special video which is coming tomorrow? Bye bye to everyone. So tomorrow we have a tomorrow we have a special video coming out on the channel so please check it out. That is very very important for your preparation. Not preparation in fact it is for your uh, writing the examination. If it's like if you don't watch this video some more things can go wrong. <laughs> and watch it because ma'am fell. And watch it also because ma'am fell. That we have cut it out. That is not there in the video, but ma'am fell in that video. Okay, the special video is coming out tomorrow, uh, and uh, it was something different. Even we never did it on the channel, right, ma'am? No. We was never. We have never done it. Right? You will see something different today tomorrow. So please check it out, and uh, quickly like the be- smash smash the like button because Gopika ma'am will be like the smash button. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> you know, after three hours of talking, the tongue becomes uh, <laughs> like you know, it's like fish. The tongue will move weird. <laughs> like, the like the smash button. <laughs> so yeah. So students, uh, class will resume at uh, exactly at six forty-five right now, and Vam will be doing your molecular basis, molecular basis of inheritance. Behind the scene on Telegram. Yeah, we'll send, we'll send behind the scene. I'll, that fall is very bad. That's that fall you'll not get. <laughs> that is for personal use. <laughs> it is so dramatic also. I I could not react in time also. <laughs> oh god, it was so hey, it was not to laugh. It was very serious injury. Ma'am leg was swollen like an elephant. And here, yeah, ma'am, see this. Ma'am hand was completely scarred here. Full. They, can see they can't see it, ma'am. Yeah, they cannot see. I was scared for a second. <laughs> like I, some, thought I, died. I thought you broke your hip uh, for a second. I'm like, oh my god, no more classes on YouTube for only one month. <laughs> Ma'am will come in wheelchair. <laughs> okay, so let them take a break. Yeah, let them take a break, ma'am. Then <laughs> leave them. Oh, yeah. I don't want to leave them. Take molecular basis also.
हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई यू ऑल बैक ओ दीक्षा कौशल दीक्षा मैम इज यर मैम हैज फाइनली लैंडेड सेफली स्टूडेंट्स आई यू नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क मैम हाउ इज अर नेक डिट शी बिकम फ्रॉम स्केल आर टू वेक्टर वेक्टर क्वालिटी आई एम वेक्टर इन डायरेक्शन इन मैम्स नेक रेडी ऑल ऑफ यू मैनी ऑफ यू डेंट कम बैक बस वो सर योर जॉब All should come back. Yes, I will. I told you not to take all of their energy. I told you it's a simple way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let everyone join. Yes. Now they're asking, ma'am, how is your neck? Okay, we'll start slowly. People will come. Okay, because uh, we had already given the timing. Okay, those who are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe. And my name is Gopika, and those you are, those who are seeing my class for the first time, welcome you all to Vedantu Neat English. I hope I'm audible and visible, right? So this is the first. Yes, this is the first class of your block two. Just now, Baswasa just finished principles of inheritance, and now I'll be starting molecular basis of inheritance. Okay, and again, block two, all the block strategies are from scratch, but it also is in a pace that you people have already revised the chapter at least once or gone through the chapter once. Okay, if there is any student who is doing this for the first time, then after this class, please go back and read NCERT. Ready? So you know if you are ready for my class, what you should do? All of you tell me what you should do in the class. Okay. Yes, awesome. Okay, because of your chats, more people should come. Okay, because of your chats, more people should come. That is your responsibility. Yes. Okay. So, students, this chapter, molecular basis of inheritance. Every single student, as soon as they see this chapter, they'll be like, "Oh, I cannot study so big chapter. This is one of the longest chapters." Yes, totally agree. But if you see this, this chapter is also like a story that is happening inside our body. A small, what is happening inside our nucleus? A very small story. But we have few terms to learn, and we have few things to learn. So, we will try to make it as easy as possible. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Hi, Shri Vishnu. If you're new to this class, definitely you will join all my other classes. Okay, okay. Molecular basis of inheritance, like how you have a movie, a teaser. No, I'll give you a teaser of this chapter, and then we will get into the actual story. Okay. So this chapter basically starts with simply with your nucleic acid. Okay. This is what it's starting from. That is nucleic acid, and definitely there are two types of nucleic acid. That is your DNA and RNA. Right. DNA, RNA. Now we all know DNA's full form is deoxyribonucleic acid, and your RNA's full form is ribonucleic acid. Now, students. What do I understand from these terms? Very simple, ma'am. You have written deoxy. That means something is lacking here. Some oxygen group is lacking here. That is what you are talking about. Yes or no? So when we talk about deoxy and ribonucleic acid, we know that one oxygen group on the second carbon is lacking, or the oxygen group is lacking in your DNA, and it is present in the RNA, which makes DNA and RNA very very different from each other. All of you agree to this? Yes or no? Gayatri, I already told you this is the first session of block two. Why is there so much doubt? Okay, why is there so so much doubt? So in this de deoxy ribonucleic acid, we know that some nucleotides are there. That means one sugar is there, one phosphate is there, one pentose sugar is there, one phosphate is there, one nitrogenous base is there. In that sugar molecule, one OH is O is missing. Right? That makes this both different. Now, other than that, ma'am, what is happening in this chapter? Very simple thing. Other than this, what is happening is there is a cell 
okay and inside that there is a nucleus let's consider this only as the nucleus and inside this nucleus there is a double stranded structure which is called the dna okay this dna will get converted to mrna that mrna will form protein so what did i say this material this dna will form mrna this mrna will be able to form protein and this is what we call the central dogma simple thing dna is there it is doing some process becoming mrna that mrna will get converted to protein and that protein will decide the different texture uh, you know attributes on our body that is what is happening got it that is what is happening now all of you i know that you know many of them went and they didn't want to come back because they are not serious they think that questions are only going to come from uh, principles of inheritance so i want all of you to do a job for me quickly share the link with your all your telegram friends and ask them to join quickly let me also do that lazy people they've gone somewhere okay and if you have joined the session right now quickly smash the like button okay because that is a motivation for me to go forward right yes okay we have told them to join now okay chalo yes so students now this is the general thing now this one no what i've written here this is called the central dogma that means everything in your molecular biology or everything to do with your molecules everything to do with your cell every inheritance that has come everything will be controlled by these people okay this is what the chapter is about this is the general idea of the chapter now other than that what do we have now students other than that we have few exceptions few regulations and all that okay so now let's see other than this ma'am what are you going to make a study first we will understand few experiments okay first we will understand few experiments how they came to a conclusion that dna is the genetic material not protein not rna that is the first thing we'll study then we will study this your central dogma okay we will study central dogma that also is leading to this after central dogma you are going to study some places where you can do gene regulation okay very very important thing that is your gene regulation in your central dogma itself you will study transcription translation then you will study gene regulation and under gene regulation you will study your lac operon concept after lac operon what will you study you will study hgp and dna fingerprinting that's all that's all this chapter has but after the class you should all go and read ncrt chalo let's start okay now look here I have kept an image here. Let's understand what is there in the image. Very simple. One cell is there inside the cell nucleus. Is there in the nucleus? There is chromosomes. That chromosome, if you see, it is DNA. The continuous binding, right? DNA will wound around what students? All of you tell me. <coughs> DNA will wind around what? Protein. What is the protein name? All of you tell me in the chats by then. Okay. Yes, very good. Octomer of histones, right? So this DNA molecule will go around a histone protein that will continuously condense to form your chromosome. So from that, if you see, we got a DNA. From DNA, if you see, we'll get a gene. From gene, if you see, you'll be able to see your entire nucleotide and everything that is there inside. This is the chapter general idea. Now, how did they actually come up with this? So, students, this is an additional information, but it is necessary for you. So there was a scientist called Frederick Mischer. Frederick Mischer was working on owl cells, okay, owl cells, and in the owl cells, there was in from the nucleus he had extracted something, and he called that a nuclein. What did he call it? Nuclein. So there was a scientist called Frederick Mischer. He was working on owl cells, and in from the nucleus he extracted something, and he called that as nuclein. Okay, got it. Now there was another scientist called Altman. He was like, okay, wait a minute. This nuclein has some kind of acidic property. Okay, this nuclein has some kind of acidic property, and that acidic property because of which I will call it nucleic acid. This is just a discovery, very, very, very basic understanding. Okay, so this is how the word nucleic acid came into existence. Now, what is nucleic acid? Simple DNA, RNA. Which are the nucleic acids you know? All of you in the chats, which are the nucleic acids you know? Okay, so that is all of you. Chat should move fast. I think chats are thoda slow. Yes or no? (laughs) 
one second students yes now i can see yes dna and rna that is your nucleic acid and I, as i told you dna is made up of nucleotides what is dna made up of nucleotides and each nucleotide has three components okay dna is made up of nucleotides and each nucleotide has three components what are those three components a phosphate group a pentose sugar and a nitrogen base okay a phosphate group Again, a normal phosphate group is there, a pentose sugar, that means a ribose sugar can come, right, a pentose sugar, 5 carbon sugar is there and then we have nitrogenous bases which are of two types, which are the two types of nitrogenous bases, come on all of you, okay, two types of nitrogenous bases, which are they, come on all of you in the chat quickly, okay, now, if I, by the time you tell the answers, I will tell you, if I push if I push phosphate outside, I can call this as a nucleoside, okay. If I push one person to a side, okay, I am there, Diksha ma'am is there, Baswa sir is there. I pushed Baswa sir to one side. So, me and Diksha ma'am will become nucleoside, okay, because we pushed one person to a side. Same way, if I push phosphate to one side and have pentose and nitrogenous uh, bases, we will become a nucleoside very good so nitrogenous bases are purines and pyrimidines we'll go into depth but just understand all this this is just uh, general understanding okay yes now again see we just have few things what is that full form where is it present what is it doing that's all now see here again this is only for you to have a more clarity on the you know the understanding of the chapter these are all general we have still not entered the chapter this is just the teaser okay full form is deoxy ribonucleic acid correct this is ribonucleic acid now structure double stranded structure this is one strand this is one strand double stranded structure so what will i call it we also call it double helical structure again watson crick all these people help us find this double helical structure double stranded structure rna single stranded structure okay now location it is in the nucleus now the catch here is location the actually the synthesis is happening in the nucleus that means from dna okay to your mrna that mrna will go out to cytoplasm otherwise in other words dna to hnrna that HNRNA will go as mRNA, mature mRNA. That mRNA will go where? To the cytoplasm. To the cytoplasm. Okay, so the location if you say exactly cytoplasm but the synthesis, half of the synthesis is happening in the nucleus. After that, the mRNA will go into the cytoplasm. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? One second. Yes. Yeah, picture abhi bhi baki hai. Okay, picture is there. Okay, ask me the doubt. Okay, so students, this much clear? Now, nucleus got synthesized and cytoplasm. Okay, now, found in. Where is DNA found in? Where is DNA found in? Okay, check your connection, dear. I am audible. Right, students? Am I not audible? I am audible, no? Yeah, picture abhi bhi baki. Yeah, I am audible. Please check your uh, connection. Okay. It is found in almost all the living organisms have DNA as the genetic material. Then you will be like, ma'am, what is RNA doing? RNA also is the genetic material in some viruses and few plants also. But other than that, RNA is capable of doing many other functions. Catalytic function. Okay. Adapter for molecule. It acts as an adapter molecule. Yes or no? It again helps in our transcription to form the protein. So, it is doing multiple other jobs even though it is not the major genetic material. Okay. One second students. Yeah. Now, let's try to understand what am I talking about. I told you DNA or your deoxyribonucleic acid is made up of a nucleotide. Right? Did I say this? It is made up of a nucleotide. Now, what do I mean by a nucleotide? What are the parts of your 
nucleotides. Let's do one thing. Let's split the board into two. Yes. Okay. Now, students, nucleotide. What are the parts of the nucleotide? All of you know this. Again, three things are there. What is it? First, a phosphate group. Phosphate group. A pento sugar. And a nitrogenous base. Okay. Done. This much clear. <laughs> Audible. Right. Yes. Very good. Is this clear or not? Okay. Pento sugar. Phosphate group. Yes. Very good. Now, phosphate group. When we write, how will we write? You can write the bonding anywhere. Okay. We can write the bonding anywhere. Okay. OH. One second. Is pink visible on the board? Yes or no? Students, what is this? Yeah, all of you tell me the answers quickly, quickly. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. More we'll study, don't worry. Okay, I will write it smaller so I can show the bonding, but it's not possible, never mind. So, students, there will be 3 OH. Okay. And a double bond. Oh. Yes, correct. Double bond O. Okay, very good. Now, we have a pento sugar. Pento sugar. Diksha ma'am will see this diagram and Diksha ma'am will sit and cry. So, we will draw neatly students. So, Diksha ma'am shouldn't feel bad. Okay. Here we have a pentose sugar molecule. So, all of you know you have always drawn a sugar molecule. Now, what is the difference between your DNA and RNA? What is the difference between your DNA and RNA? This is your first carbon. Second, third, fourth. Fifth, I'll tell you, this second carbon, there will be a OH in the case of your RNA. Here, what will be there? Only H will be there in the case of DNA. Got it or not? Okay, I'm not writing that here, but I'm just telling you. Okay, here only H will be there. Understood? Yes or no? Yes, choosing color is always a problem. This is your pento sugar. Next one is nitrogenous base. Okay, nitrogenous base students, again, two types are there. Purines purines. This purines is a nine ring structure. What did I say? A nine ring structure. Let's see how is it. Okay, look here a nine ring structure. Now we'll label it. Okay, we'll label, label it and see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's a nine ring heterocyclic structure. Okay, I'm writing it here. Nine ring Or you can write double ringed also, no problem. But here 9 is there. So, I am writing 9 ring. Otherwise, you can write double ring. Heterocyclic. Okay, heterocyclic structure. Got it? Easy? Easy or not? Yes, correct, correct. That and all we are going to do. Okay, double ring, heterocyclic structure. Clear? Yes, a structures. See, now you would have studied little of the structures in biomolecules. I am drawing the structure to explain you better. But otherwise, they won't ask you structure or anything. I am just drawing this so it will be easy for you to understand what is happening. Now, this nitrogenous base, we understood. No, this line won't go, no? Okay, never mind. Now, here only I am writing pyramidins. Students, even though the name is big, the ring is small. It's a single ring structure, okay? The name is big, but the ring is small. They only have this six rings, okay? Again, label it one, two, three, four, five, six. So, it's a six single ring, okay? It is a single ring and it is again heterocyclic, okay? This is your entire nucleotide okay phosphate sugar purines 
pyrimidines. Now, the next most important thing that you need to know is about your purines and pyrimidines. What are present in this purines and pyrimidines? Okay, very simple thing. In your purines, there is very easy way to remember pure as gold. What is how will you remember? Pure as gold. That means P stands for purine. A stands for adenine, G stands for guanine. You will get all these notes on Vedantu Neat English Telegram channel as well as on my Telegram channel. Okay, do not worry. Pure as gold. Clear? Now, this pure as gold, adenine is there, guanine is there. You can remember it otherwise also, no problem. But in case in exam hall you are under too much stress, you are not able to focus and you forgot adenine and guanine. Because when I am very stressed, I cannot remember. So, what do I do? I always make tricks. So, pure as gold. Now, when I come to pyramidins. Pyramidins also, students, very easy to remember. Cut. Cut. Okay. Again, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. I want all of you to answer who are doing revision with me. I don't want you to just sit. Chuma, like you're watching a movie, don't sit like that. Keep answering as I am continuing. Okay, now uracil students, it is present only in RNA. Okay, it's present only in RNA, not in DNA. But in DNA, who is present? Time is present. Okay, so cut pure as gold. This is both the purines and pyrimidines. Now, purines and pyrimidines have to bind. Now, the backbone, who is the backbone of the DNA? All of you tell me in the chat box. Who forms the backbone of the DNA? Okay, now DNA, we tell it is a double helical structure. Now, who forms this backbone? Can any of you tell me in the chats? Why are you people writing RNA? Or is it that I am not able to see? You people have typed RNA, why? Why, why, why? Yes, who forms the backbone? Very good. Sugar and phosphate forms the backbone. So, there will be a bond between them. Yes or no? Sugar and phosphate will form a bond between them and that bond is called phosphoester bond. Okay. So, this both will form a bond called as phosphoester bond. Any doubts in this? Okay. Any doubts in this? Phosphoester bond. Yes. So, here... They will form phosphoester bond. So, sugar and your who? Sugar and your phosphate. They both will become the backbone. Then you will be like, ma'am, what about the nitrogenous base? Nitrogenous base also will form a bond. Whenever a sugar and a nitrogenous base, okay, imagine it's a purine. It will form a 1,9 glycosidic linkage. I'll show you how it is. 1,9 glycosidic linkage that means the first carbon and the ninth, ninth ring right the ninth one so fun one and the ninth one will form a glycosidic linkage this is only in the case of a sugar and a purine okay sugar and a purine so here what will happen they will form a glycosidic linkage they will form a glycosidic linkage is this clear is this clear Okay, simple thing. I have only written the bond name. I have not joined it correctly because here one water molecule will get removed. Okay, it will get two cluster. So, we will write it in the next next uh, slide. So, here students very simple. Phosphate and sugar forms this backbone. Now, this backbone is formed because of phosphoester bond. Clear? Sugar, phosphate, phosphoester bond. Now, the sugar will combine with any of the nitrogen bases, be it adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, anyone it is binding, it will form a glycosidic linkage. You can otherwise, to be more safe, tell N glycosidic linkage. N is because it's combining to the nitrogen. Okay, there will be nitrogens on this. Which are the places where nitrogens will be there? Last time I taught you people in the purine, which will be 1, 3, 7, 9. That means in the structure on the 1, N, 3, N, then 7, 7, N, 9, N. All these places, 1, 3, 7, 9, all these places, what will be there? Nitrogen will be there. Now, all of you tell me for purines. 
for purines last time i told you for purines also i mean sorry for pyrimidines where is nitrogen present yes awesome 1379 is for purines nitrogen will be present in these places that's why i can call this glycosidic linkage as n glycosidic linkage because in the ninth position there is a nitrogen so it's going and binding with the nitrogen so i can call it n glycosidic linkage now who will tell me for pyrimidines who will tell me for pyrimidines who is the smart one in the class come on who will <laughs> pyrimidines pyrimidines Come on, all of you can tell it definitely, hundred percent. My students who have watched my class will definitely tell it. Only two are there. Very good, very good, Priya. Very good, Sanvi. Very good, Neet UG. Very good. One and three on the here. Look here, all of you. On the first and on the third position, there will be a nitrogen in a pyramid. And so one comma three. This is important to know. Just in case a question comes, let's always be prepared. Okay, is this clear? So this bond will be formed because of one water molecule getting removed, and this bond will be formed from if it is a purine on the ninth one. Okay, yes, is this clear? Any doubts? This is your entire nucleotide. Now many nucleotide. Okay, many nucleotide will combine, combine to form a poly. nucleotide many nucleotide will combine to form a poly nucleotide chain so dna is formed by poly nucleotide chain clear all of you clear any doubts ask me right now any doubts ask me right now okay this you remember uracil thymine you remember bonds you have to remember okay any doubts tell me fast because this is the little tricky part after this everything is a story okay we will learn it like a story do not even worry did you all mark your attendance the poll is asking wow what a number 4 4 no doubts okay yes good job students in case any of you have doubt how is this uh, you know bond forming i'll show you see this is your sugar molecule no this is your sugar molecule here there is CH two OH. This OH and one of the O's here will form the H two O. Okay. Again, this question won't like they won't ask anything related to structure, but just for your information. Now, the most important part of this chapter, they can give this as a match the following incorrect, uh, mismatched. Anything can come from this directly. You will get four marks. All of you know this chapter has the highest weightage. So again, don't ignore anything. Now look here. Bacteriophage known as five one seventy four has five three eight six nucleotides. Can I ask all of you a question? Why is it mentioned nucleotides and not base pairs? Because look here, base pairs, base pairs, base pairs. Why only here nucleotides? Who can tell me why only nucleotides is mentioned here for five one seventy four? Okay, bacteriophage lambda has four eight five zero two. Forty-eight thousand five not two base pairs. Okay, E. coli has four point six into ten to the power six. Four point six into ten to the power six base pair. Yes, give it a try. It's easy. Nucleotides means what? Nucleotides are always there. Yes, awesome. Very good because this is a single stranded. Okay, this is a single stranded. And these are all double stranded. So whenever it's single strand, you cannot tell base pair. How can you tell base pair? I'll tell you. See, look here. I told you this people forms the backbone. Now to keep these two people in place, right? To keep these two people in place, there should be bonding, no? Like I always say, if two people are planning to get married, they have to go. They have to get themselves registered. They have to have people. Marriage should happen. Chuma, if I were Oh, he is my husband. Will people believe? No, there should be proof. That's why you have to show your birth certificate, marriage certificate. That means to keep these two people together, we need our bonds, right? Purine and pyrimidine is required for that this to happen. Okay. So here it is nucleotide because it is single stranded. Now, haploid content of human DNA. Human DNA has three point three into ten to the power nine. Okay. Now the catch here is. 3.3 into 10 to the power 9. Now most of the students when they are studying NCERT will ignore this, thinking that oh, 
2 point, this is so easy, 3 point 3 into 10 to the power 9. The question will come, give the haploid content of human DNA. Now, what will you tell? You only know, you have by hearted haploid content of human DNA. In the question, if it is given, diploid content of human DNA, what will you answer? What will you answer? All of you tell me. This is haploid. So, just do into 2, diploid, right? Into 2, 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9 base pair. Yes or no? This will be your diploid content. So, that's why students, you should not buy heart. Okay, if you buy heart, you will not have the, you know, you will not, your sense will not work to do this that time in the exam hall. You will be like, oh, I studied haploid. Why is this lady asking me diploid? It's out of syllabus. I need bonus mark. You will start fighting there. No one will give you bonus marks, right? Yes, very good. Very good. 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9. Okay, 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9 is your diploid content of DNA. Okay. What is the question? By 20th Reshma. Why are you attending all the blocks? To ask this question. Are you attending all the blocks? Yes, are you a regular student? Then I will be very, very proud. Done? Clear? Yes. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Fine. Students, now, I already mentioned about nucleotide. One second. I told you about purine and pyrimidine also. Look here, all of you. This is how the structure will look like. Okay, this is how the structure will look. Can you see? There's a phosphate group. Then there is a sugar. And then there is. That's what I told you. Here, what will happen? Your CH2OH will be there. It will combine with one O here like this. Okay, and it will remove one water molecule minus H2O. This will lead to the formation of a phosphodiester bond. Okay, or a phosphoester bond. Okay, it will lead to a formation of phosphoester bond. Too small it became, no? Writing phosphoester bond, okay? Then, from there, here if you see, a sugar with a nitrogenous base will form what? It will form a glycosidic, glycosidic linkage. N glycosidic linkage, if it is a purine, 1, 9 glycosidic linkage. Okay? Fine. Now, students, this diagram is, all of you remember, this is given in your textbook. This is a diagram in your textbook. Okay? There is given, see, normal bindings are happening. If you look at this, what are the things, few things that you will understand, I will tell you. First thing, you will understand that phosphate, okay, phosphate plus sugar will form the backbone. Isn't that the first thing you understand from this diagram? Can you see? Phosphate is there, sugar is there. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. Phosphate and sugar will form your backbone. Any doubts in this? Backbone. Okay, backbone. Now, what else do you see in that? You see that two backbones are there and these two people or the two strands are held together by your adenine and purine and pyrimidines. Yes or no? So, this bonding is happening and if you notice exactly, you will see at Gopika Mam's class. What is at Gopika Mam's class? At Gopika Mam's class. What is at Gopika Mam's class? Adenine will always bind with thymine and guanine will always bind with cytosine at Gopika Mam's class. Okay? Now, you have to remember more to that. More to that, what you have to remember? Adenine will always bind with thymine with two hydrogen bonds. Two hydrogen bonds. And guanine will always bind with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So, this is what you have understood from this image. Other most important thing that you see in this image is, you will see, ma'am, why? what is this 5 dash N and 3 dash N? Okay. 5 dash N and 3 dash N is very simple student. If you look here, in the 5 dash N, you can see a phosphate, a free end, right? A free end you can see. Here if you see in the 3 dash N, you will see a free OH group. So, wherever, wherever, always listen to this carefully, wherever there is a free OH group, it will be a 3 dash N. 
free OH group of what? Free OH group of the sugar. If there is always a free OH group of the sugar, it will be the 3 dash end. Clear? And if there is a free phosphate end, that will be the 5 dash end. Okay? A free phosphate end, it will be the 5 dash end. Is this clear? Okay? I have, I have also told you in the previous when I took molecular basis, I told you why this dash came. 3 dash and 5 dash. Very simple reason students. Now, see this is your, this is your pyramidal. Yes or no, this is your pyramidal. Now, if I label the pyramidal, I mean number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if I don't put the dash, how will I know if it is, you know, 5 dash and or 3 dash and or how will I know if it is a purines or pyrimidines numbering? Yes or no? How did I say it was 1, 9 glycosidic linkage? Because I knew it was 1, 9 glycosidic linkage. But if both of them, if this end did not be exist, it will be 1, 9. How will you know this 1 was of the sugar? How will you know this 9 was of the pyramidin? So, to make that a little easy, they just put a end to it. Okay, 5 dash end to 3 dash end. Just to distinguish them, to understand them easily for us. That's all. Okay, this and all you study in PhD. But just I'm telling, just just casual, okay? To distinguish. Is this image clear? Question can come. What is 5 dash and what is 3 dash and or which is the correct thing about 3 dash and which is the, you know, incorrect about the 5 dash and. So, you should be in a position to tell that 3 dash and means there will be a free OH of the sugar. 5 dash and means there is a free P or the phosphate group in the 5 dash end. And these people are held together by purines and pyrimidines with the help of two or three hydrogen bonds okay yes now bonds as we told students bonds is clear no yes bonds are clear can can i move further i'll give you a slide for that look here see there's a slide for that a nitrogenous base is connected to the first carbon of the pentose sugar through an N-glycosidic linkage. Okay, N-glycosidic linkage to form a nucleoside. So, first a nucleoside is formed, then a nucleotide is formed, right? A phosphate comes in attached, it becomes a nucleotide. When a phosphate group links to the fifth carbon of the nucleoside through a phosphoester bond linkage, a nucleotide is formed. Okay, two nucleotides are linked through a 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester linkage to form a dinucleotide. So, first, very simple one nucleotide is another nucleotide forming. Again, continuing, continuing, continuing. So, that this two, this one nucleotide, another nucleotide formed a dinucleotide. Okay, and when two bindings are happening, it will be phosphodiester linkage. No more ester linkage, phosphodiester linkage. Clear or not? Simple, I just put this for you people, just for your understanding. Now, all of you look here. How did this double helical structure come into existence? Or how did we know that, you know, DNA was double helical, double stranded? No one told us, no? So, how did this finding happen? Very simple, student. Discovery of double helical structure, every single person always say Watson and Crick. But there were two other people called as Wilkins and Franklin. Out of this, Franklin did not get recognized. Okay, again, because she might be a woman or because it was too late. I don't know the actual reason. So, <coughs> okay. Okay, very good. Fine. So, look here, Watson and Crick, very simple students, they followed, so actually, if you look, Darwin also, when we talked about Darwin's also, we knew that Alfred Valleys also came up with the same finding by reading Thomas Malthus' book about population, right, natural selection theory, when Darwin came across, at same time, Alfred Valleys also in Indonesia had come up with the same theory. Okay, and both of their theory had something to do with Thomas Malthus' book about population. Same way here also, 
मल्टीपल पीपल केम ओके इट्स नॉट लाइक वन पर्सन जस्ट लाइक दैट ब्लूम्ड आउट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड बी लाइक यस डीएनए इज अ डबल हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर नो इट डज नॉट वर्क लाइक दैट नो सो हियर विल्किस एंड फ्रैंकलिन डिस्कवर डीएनए स्ट्रक्चर बाय एक्स रे डिफ्रैक्शन सो दे टूक दे आइसोलेटेड फ्यू सेल्स दे डिड एक्स रे डिफ्रैक्शन एंड दे नोटिस दैट दिस डीएनए स्ट्रक्चर इज नॉट वेरी रेगुलर इट इट हैज समथिंग डिफरेंट एंड दैट इज वेन दे फाउंड इट वॉज अ डबल हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर सो कंटिन्यूइंग दैट हु डिड your watson and crick continued that and came up with a proper existence telling that yes dna is a double helical structure we had viewed it under that x ray okay x ray yes she was a woman roslyn franklin she did not get recognized all this three people got recognized okay this three people got recognized except roslyn okay which is a very sad story because those times it was very difficult to be recognized okay now students is this clear so the double helical structure was given up by watson crick franklin and wilkins out of which three people got recognized franklin did not get recognized simple thing they took few cells they saw it under the x ray diffraction and they noticed that the structure was a double helical structure okay double helical structure the double helical structure pitch was 3.4 nanometer per turn there will be 10 base pair simple thing now this is your double helical structure per turn 10 base pair will be there and how what is the degree at which they turn 360 degree right 360 degree they turn okay so in each turn there will be 10 base pair and the pitch will be 3.4 nanometer we'll see the salient features don't worry okay look here see what are the salient features of this double helical structure they cannot just tell that dna is a double helical structure there should be some number there should be some you know prove proving that this is a double helical structure it is made up of two polynucleotide chain where the backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate okay and the base is project inside okay the two chains have anti parallel polarity what do they mean one is going like this let's not draw straight line one is going like this one is going like this okay one is from 3 dash to 5 dash and one is from 5 dash to 3 dash and that means they are parallel but they are anti parallel polarity they have one is from 3 dash to 5 dash another one is 5 dash to 3 dash okay now it means that same thing what i told the bases in two strands are paired through hydrogen bonds very simple a is bound with two hydrogen bond g is bound with three hydrogen bonds okay forming base pairs adenine forms two hydrogen bond thymine forms the same thing what i told as a result carefully listen, listen to this as a result always a purine comes opposite to a pyrimidin this generates approximately uniform distance between two strands of the helix that means if an adenine is coming and if an adenine is binding with a guanine it will go wrong if an adenine is binding that means a purine is binding with a purine right a purine is binding with a purine how will it be okay right then pyrimidin will be left alone imagine you like a person that person too complicated let's keep it purine and pyrimidin only okay this is purine purine likes another purine adenine likes guanine but what will pyrimidine do pyrimidine wants or your cytosine wants guanine itself but then this people are busy that's not possible no so that's why always okay always purine will bind with the pyrimidine pyrimidine will bind with the purine okay is this clear i wanted to make an example but it's too complicated yes consequently the distance between a base pair in a helix approximately 0.3 nanometer 0.3 nanometer okay the plane of one base pair stalks over the other in the double helical this in addition to the hydrogen bonds confers the stability of the helical structure now what and all do should we remember you should remember that it is a double helical structure right you should remember it's a double helical structure how is it a double helical structure because there are two strands wound around each other yes What is the next point, students? All of you, tell me one one point each. I didn't tell an example. The ex example was a flop. Okay, I wanted to tell something, but it did not come out the way it was in my head. Okay, so sometimes it happens. You no, know, you want to say something, but something else comes out. That is the situation. All of you, tell me one one salient features. First one, I told double helical because it has two strands with each other. Next point. Next point. Yeah, so slow. This buses are drain all your energy. 
no energy for molecular basis very important chapter huh? very important chapter then you will sit and cry in the exam hall oh no i should have listened to that gopika ma'am she was crying and telling the same thing tell quickly it is see both the strands so the backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate okay sugar and phosphate and it is kept together because of your purines and pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines they are bound by your hydrogen bonds that you can write okay they are bound by hydrogen bonds and always your adenine that means your purine and pyrimidine will always be equal to each other that is your chargaff rule okay purines and pyrimidines will always be equal to each other yes very good fine now calculate this all of you now let's see now let's all understand chargaff rule first the leave place for chargaff rule no we'll do it here only students what is chargaff rule i told you again see always purine and pyrimidine has to be equal that means adenine guanine okay now let's put plus adenine plus guanine should always be equal to cytosine plus thymine agreed or not okay always purine ratio should be equal to a pyrimidine ratio okay otherwise problem will happen how many boys are there that many girls should be there if everyone wants to get married yes or no okay yeah how many pandus are there that many champa should be there otherwise marriage will not happen otherwise sampa won't happen okay i think sir told you so pandu champa how many pandu and champas are there they should always be equal but but the thing is all of you forget this one thing a binds with t right a plus t divided by g plus c need not be equal to 1 need not be equal to 1 that means what that means what okay pandu and champa has to be equal this is pandu this is champa they both are equal but does that mean does that mean okay adenine and thymine adenine thymine regions are there at rich regions are there gc rich regions are there can this two be equal students why why should this two be equal why should this two be equal not necessary no not necessary okay that is not at all necessary pandu and champa one couple sampa and pampa one couple why should pandu and champa and sampa and kampa be the same number not required this is another couple this is another couple they can be different different okay let us just make a name in one minute okay sampa and pampa so there's never a name like that okay yes okay now keeping that in mind you are going to calculate this okay so always remember adenine and guanine adenine and thymine the percentage or the number whatever it will be equal okay how many guanines are there that many cytosine should be there so this also will be equal got it okay this one this one doesn't have to be one there can be more adenine thymine sites than more guanine site uh, cytosine sites this has to be equal to one okay this has to be equal to one but this need not be equal to one is this clear okay yes now look here a thymine is 30% thymine is 30% means adenine also will be 30% yes or no thymine is 30% adenine will be 30% now how will you calculate guanine and cytosine quickly tell me in the chat guanine and cytosine now simple way we know thymine is 30 adenine is 30 so 60 is over in 60 so 100 minus 60 is 40 so divide this 20 20 Got it? Any doubts? Okay. Yeah, Ramu Gutti, Shivu Gutti. Okay, is this clear, students? Easy. This is how you will do the sums. Okay. So this is hundred percent, right? Total. So this also, I hope it's clear. Don't get confused. This is your Chargaff rule. Chargaff rule. Okay. This is your Chargaff rule. Chargaff rule is very simple. Purine should always be equal to pyrimidine. Okay? Yes. Next one. Let's start with the main portion. Teaser is over, students. Now movie is going to start. Okay? Now movie is going to start. T 
teaser done exhausted no right teaser is done now we'll start the movie central dogma i told you it is the controlling factor of every single thing everything is getting controlled by this very simple thing i'll tell you how it what i'm talking about see dna is there okay dna will have the ability to form mrna mrna has the ability to form a protein now other than that dna can also form its own copy with the help of replication with the help of replication dna can form mrna with the process of transcription okay with the process of transcription transcription mrna can form protein with the help of translation yes or no clear or so far okay so we have a double stranded dna capable of forming a single stranded mrna that mrna capable of forming a big polypeptide chain okay a big polypeptide chain is this clear any doubt so far okay students this has to be different 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 types okay they can't be same same not same same different okay okay different different, different colors it will be yes yes so transcription translation dna to mrna mrna to protein this is what is happening now this is what is the chapter all about right this is what the chapter is all about it is double stranded dna forming a single stranded rna sorry mrna okay and that finally forming a entire polypeptide chain your entire central dogma or the actual topics in this chapter is going to start here now let's start students like i always tell you such a big dna okay such a big dna means what around 2.2 meter long dna i need this dna to be inside the nucleus not even inside the cell cell is already very small inside that i have to keep it inside the nucleus how will i keep such a long thread i will use the help of who i will use the help of you i will use the help of your proteins okay i will use the help of your proteins which are positively or negatively charged is dna negative or positive all of you tell me in the chat with the help of proteins called as histones this histone proteins will help in the packaging of dna packaging of dna so that this dna can enter into the nucleus without any problem right into the nucleus now i asked you all a question is it positive or negative dna is negative okay dna is negative so because this dna is negative protein has to be positive for going around it yes so this is what the thing is packaging of dna 2.2 meter dna has to be put inside the nucleus for that what am i going to do what am i going to do simple thing okay so students there is a, this is a circle or this is a bead around this the dna has to go okay because all of you know how we, how do we uh, do this forming a making a chain when we make a chain what do we do we let the thread go inside the pearl and roll it roll it roll it and form a chain or, or else if you have seen the flower ladies doing also they do this tying 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 and they make it same way one protein will be there around this protein we have to send the thread right around this protein we have to send the thread so simple thing let's see what is going to happen so this is your protein okay this is a histone and 
how many histones are going to be there how many histones are going to be there all of you tell me let's write histones how many histone proteins are going to be taking part in this process H1, H2A, H2B, H3, H4. Five histone proteins are going to take part in this process. Okay, in this process. So let's see what are this. Now look here, students. H2A. Okay, everything will be double in structure. Two two it will become. Okay, two two it will form. So this is our H2A. Okay. Then the next one is H2. B, H two B again, okay, like this H two B. I don't know to draw three D and all. I'm drawing just so that you people understand. Okay, here it is H three. Okay, H three. Okay, then we have H four. We have H four. Clear? This is how the winding will happen. Okay. Okay, winding will happen. Okay, now students understand each of them. Each of them have become two in number. Each of them have become two in number. And that means what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can call this. I can call this as an histone octomer. Agreed, all of you? I can call this an histone octomer. Now the DNA molecule will go around this. Okay. DNA molecule will go around this, right? Okay, I'm using all my artistic knowledge I have, and this is your DNA molecule. Okay, fine. Now, because students, this is all like a what it is. This is all like you know, all circular structures. Thread is going around it. Definitely, definitely, they, it's not necessary that they stay in place. Yes or no? It's not necessary. That they stay in place. To keep all of this person in place, we will use our H1 protein or your linker protein. We will use your H1 protein or the linker protein. Is this clear? Okay, H1 protein, or it is other words called as your linker proteins. Okay, linker proteins. Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. Linker proteins. So to keep the entire histone octomer in place, we will have one linker protein that is there. That is your H1 protein. Now the thing is histone octomers. Okay, histone octomers. Students clearly listen here. Histone octomers plus DNA together is called what? All of you tell me. Together is called what? It's called a nucleosome okay together it is called a nucleosome okay thank you tilu yes around the histone octomer yes very good okay correct okay histone octomer plus dna will form nucleosome now the question is will there be only one nucleosome Students, all of you tell me, will there be only one nucleosome? There will be many nucleosomes. Yes or no? So, if we see a DNA under the microscope, if we see a DNA under the microscope, see this is the field of microscope. Then what you will see? You will see many, many nucleosomes. So let's say this is your DNA, or this is your structure. What you are seeing in the microscope, you will see many. nucleosomes wound together and i can call this as i can call this as beads on a string structure what can i call it beads on a string structure yes or no okay very very important question beads on a string structure is seen when it is in the when it is seen under the Microscope, yes or no? Many nucleosomes will be there. Will there be only one nucleosome? Not how can it only have one nucleosome? Such a long, okay, such a long DNA. We have to go around, 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 right? So there will be many nucleosomes, and that will look like beads on a string structure. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? Now, all of you tell me which is the protein that is the most? Two proteins are highest. 
two proteins are very rich in number. Which are the two proteins which are rich in number given in your textbook? Starts with L and A. L A. Yes, tell quickly. Which is this? Lysine and arginine. Yes or no? Lysine and arginine. Yes, very good. Lysine and arginine. Write nine. Lysine and arginine are the protein rich. Okay, rich proteins of your histone okay these two are the most rich one is this clear any doubt so far let me know right now okay yes done okay fine got it clear that is done look here students you can see your two uh, na nanometer dna it will be bound bound like this histones again many of them again they will condense condense finally form the chromosome okay finally form the chromosome now other than that students we discuss about nhc what do we call about nhc that means non histone non histone chromosomal chromosomal protein what is this non histone chromosomal protein that means in higher organism when condensation has to happen other than the histone proteins we will need more proteins to come in yes or no during that time we will use your non histone chromosomal protein in higher organisms is this clear okay is this clear yes correct non histone chromosomal protein again for during the process of condensation we will be using this then you have euchromatin and heterochromatin again euchromatin lightly stained heterochromatin densely stained one that means in a, if you see a normally a chromatin area you will see some dark regions and some light regions depending on that they have told euchromatin and heterochromatin last time i had given a box okay you can go refer my notes i have given a box euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatin loosely stained because they are loosely packed Okay, that is the two things that you have to study. Euchromatin. Okay, loosely packed. When they are loosely packed, students, imagine all of you are spread all over the studio. I take one bucket of holy colors and I throw like this. How many of you will get stained? Very few of you will get stained. That means because you are all spaced so much, there are chances that the water will go in the spaces. So, because they are loosely packed, they will also be lightly stained. Right? Lightly stained. Now, heterochromatin means what? Okay, all of you will tell me if they are transcriptionally active or inactive. All of you tell me, I think someone already told. Subhashni already told, transcriptionally active, very good. This will be transcriptionally active areas, okay. Active. Now, heterochromatin students, euchromatins ulta. Okay, heterochromat, ulta means opposite, okay. Later, don't text me and ask, ma'am, what did you say? Heterochromatin will be densely stained. Densely packed first of all and because of that they will be darkly stained. Darkly stained. This is active so obviously this will be inactive. Clear? Easy? Easy? I am writing with so many colors but the board is not catching the screen is not showing any colors. Such a sad story my life is. Okay. Let's start with the first experiment. Ready? First experiment. Okay, first experiment is your Griffith's experiment. So, Griffith's experiment starts with streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay, what is it? Streptococcus pneumoniae. He uses streptococcus pneumoniae in this experiment. That is a causative agent. Okay, here, streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae basically have two strains. Smooth strain and rough strain. So, he, they, he took a smooth strain which had a proper mucopolysaccharide layer. Okay, and then he took a 
rough strain which did not have this mucopolysaccharide layer. Okay. They noticed that this S strain was virulent. That means that it has the ability to cause an infection also lead to death. And they noticed that this R strain did not have this virulent nature. Okay. So, obviously what will they think? This nature is because of the presence of this mucopolysaccharide layer or this mucus layer. Okay. Because of this they thought that the S strain was virulent. Okay. Fine. Then he tried to do this test. Yes. Okay, look here. Actually, in my class, no one will chat. Okay, they will only listen to the class. Okay, yes. Look here. Smooth strain, mucopolysaccharide was there. Rough strain, no mucopolysaccharide was there. So, it was obvious for them to think that, okay, it is virulent. Okay, now virulent, non virulent. Now, students, normally what would happen? Normally, what would happen? When I put S strain, which is virulent into the mice, the mice will die. Exactly, that only happened. Okay, I injected the S strain or the S virulent strain into the mice. Okay, then what happened? The mice died. Then I took the R strain, which was a non-virulent strain and I put it into the mice. The mice is happy, it's living. Okay, now, now he was like, okay, let me do one thing. Most of the time, when we want to drink water, when we want to, you know, heat something, what do we do? We increase the heat and we believe that the germs in that will completely die. Right. So, he, he uh, dead S strain or the heat killed S strain. More than that, heat killed S strain was used and the mice again lived. Mice was happy, mice was living. Now, he thought, okay, let me do one thing. With both the positive results I got, that means the two cases where the mice lived, I will keep it together. What could happen? The mice should have lived. Normally, what will happen? Normally, what will happen? If I was doing the experiment, what would I expect? I would have expected the mice to live. Yes or no? So, same thing he did. He mixed the living R strain with the virulent, uh, with the heat kill S strain and he noticed that the mice died. Griffith got full shock. Griffith was like, wait, what went wrong? Right? And Griffith did not know why this happened. So, Griffith was a very safe gamer. He basically called it as transforming principle. He called it transforming principle. He called it transforming principle because he understood one thing. Definitely, heat killed S strain had completely, you know, got damaged because here the results were like this. He noticed that, okay, he noticed that this Something from the heat kill S strain had got transformed to the R strain and made the R strain virulent. He did not know what it was, so he basically called it as a transforming principle. Okay. So sad. All of you are feeling so sad for the mice. Focus on the class, or else your marks will die, and then you will sit and no one will be there to tell you. Oh, RIP 4 marks, RIP 5 marks, RIP 10 marks. No one will tell. Listen here. Yeah. Very nicely, they are telling oh, you, Papa, my mice died off. Two minutes silence, it seems. In the paper, two minutes silence will be there if you see one question in this and you are praying for the mice. Okay? Clear or not? Transforming principle. So he called it transforming principle. Because he noticed something had gone from this heat kill S strain to the R strain. Okay. Yes. Finish two minutes silence for everyone. When question come, they'll be like, oh, two minutes. I don't know. My brain is not braining. Yes. Okay. Now come back. Oswald Avery, McLeod, McCarty. Avery, McLeod and McCarty's experiment was the biochemical nature of this transforming principle, right? Okay, now the thing is that what is this biochemical nature? That means they knew that something was there in this S strain, okay? Something was there in this S strain. So, they basically took all the things that was there in the S strain like, first let me write what did they take? Students, they took these two things. They took heat killed. They took heat killed S strain plus R strain 
and they did different experiments on this. Okay, what is the experiment? First, they used RNAs. First, they used RNAs. So, when they used RNAs, what was expected? What was expected? This RNA, if RNA was the genetic material, by putting RNA's enzyme, the RNA would have got degraded. So, Avery, McLeod and McCarthy's experiment was very simple. They took three enzymes, RNA's, DNA's, protease. These three have the ability to degrade RNA, DNA and protein. This was a simple experiment, okay. They took the same combination that was given by Griffith, okay. That Griffith, okay, that Griffith experiment, the same combination was taken and first they added RNAs. What was expected students? Again, don't give two minutes silence for the mice. The mice will again live here. So, don't be sad. The mice lives, okay. Again, the next set they took, the same thing, next set they took protease. They used protease. Here also they noticed that the mice lived. The mice lives. At the last, they took DNAs and they noticed that the mice died. Very simple experiment. Very simple experiment. Here, what was expected? Here also, here, DNA was there. DNA was still the transforming principle. Yes or no? DNA was still the transforming principle. Here also DNA was there. Here what happened? DNA got degraded. Degraded. DNA got degraded. And because the DNA got degraded, here what happened? No transforming principle was there. Is this clear? All of you tell me with a fire emoji in the chat if this is clear. No transforming principle. This chapter has around 40, 36 to 40 marks weightage. Yes, yes, inhibited transmission or transformation, right? Yes, Dr. Vijay, I told your name. What did you get from it? Yes, understood. Very simple experiment. They took three enzymes. The three enzymes was RNAs, DNAs and protease. They expected that if RNA was the genetic material, when we add RNAs, the mice should uh, die. Okay. Next, they did protease. Again, they thought the same thing. When they took DNAs, they noticed that the mice actually died. That means what? The DNA got degraded and because of that, the transforming principle did not ex exist at all. Right? You want me to explain it again? See. Heat killed S strain and R strain which was taken from your Griffith's experiment. Okay. To that, they added three enzymes. First, RNAs was added. When you add RNAs, what is expected? What is expected? RNA will be absent in this combination. Right? RNA will be absent. Because RNA is absent, the mice live. Nothing like that. Because RNA is not at all the genetic material. Even though the RNA dies, DNA is still there. DNA is still there. Yes or no? DNA is still there, so the mice will live. Again, same expected here. Protease, protease also here the protein was absent because the protein got degraded. But again, DNA is still present. Again, the mice will. Here, what happened? That uh, one second, some confusion happened. No. Ah, oh, students. Oh my God. Oh my God, no one told me. Ulta I have written. Who will tell me I wrote it? Ulta. The mice died. Mice. Oh. Shh. That's why I am thinking something. Students, now it makes sense. Na? The mice died. Here also the mice died. Here the mice should live. God, this experiment. Now understood. <laughs> yeah, you people. Two minutes silence for mice, no, two minutes silence for yourself. This experiment I wrote wrong. You people didn't tell only. See, now it makes sense. See, look here. Mice died. Why did the mice die? Because DNA is still there. DNA is still getting transformed. Here also, the mice will die. Why? Because protein got absent, but the DNA is still there. The mice will die. Here, the mice will live. Why? Because DNA is gone. DNA is not there. DNA is not there. 
That means transforming principle is not there. Two minutes silence for you people. Yes, ma'am. Understood, ma'am. Understood. What did you understand? What did you understand? <laughs> Two minutes silence for all of you. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Yes, ma'am. What you understood? <laughs> Wrong it was. The mice should die here, no? Because DNA is still there. Here also the mice should die. Why? Because DNA is still there. Transforming principle is still there. Here what has happened? The mice should live here. Why? Because the DNA went. Ha, brain will not brain. Okay, and then two minutes silence for rat it seems. Understood ma'am, understood ma'am. <laughs> Some of them are not even replying. They are like, oh no, how will I face ma'am? Now clear, now it makes sense. So wherever DNA is there, the mice should die. Because uh, again, it's getting still transformed. Yes, wherever DNA is not there, that means only during the presence of DNAs, the mice should live. Because DNA got died, then nothing is getting transformed. Okay? Yes. Fine. Ha, take one minute break. That all your brain, braining is happening. <laughs> now at least you people understood now at least you understood look at this experiment again this is actually a very tricky experiment that's why this experiment got rejected they told no by this we cannot prove that DNA is the genetic material that's why you know Hershey and Chase had to come because this experiment is very confusing some people tell it in a different way some people tell it in a different way so everyone were confused, zoologists, botanists were confused, they told no, this experiment cannot be the reason for proving that DNA is the genetic material. So, okay, so what we will do, we will not accept this, but it's important for you to know. Is this clear? Now you can tell me fire emoji in the chat if this is clear. Look at this once again, I'll move from the screen, look at this once again. Any doubts, tell me right now. One tricky experiment it is, but one question can come from this. One question can come. Quickly. Now tell me if you understood or not. And those who joined right now quickly like the session. It's a motivation for me. Ha. Huh. Now they are thinking two times. Should I put fire emoji? What if this also is wrong? <laughs> okay. Yes. Fine. Okay. Now you people have understood. Okay, fine. Next students, Hershey and Chase experiment. So Hershey and Chase experiment here, what and all was taken? Bacteriophages were taken. Centrifugation happened. Yes or no? Okay. So here... We took bacteriophages. What is bacteriophages, phages? Some, if some Britishers are in class, they'll be like, Mom, it's bacteriophage. Okay. So, bacteriophage or phage. This is simply a virus that infects bacteria. Okay, virus that infects bacteria. Yes or no? So, this was allowed to infect on your E. coli cells. Okay, this was allowed to infect your E. coli cells. But the catch here was that they basically used two different radioactively labeled, you know, um, plates, okay, two, two radioactively plates to culture this medium, right? One was P32, another one was S35. Okay, one was S35. So, we know that P32 or your phosphate is only present in DNA. And we know this S35 is only present in proteins. So, with this in mind, the culture was kept to, okay, to get radioactively labeled. So, this bacteriophages were radioactively labeled. So, we all know DNA is the genetic material, but this was like a experiment to find it, right? So, here what happens to the genetic material, the DNA got radioactively labeled in this situation here. The protein code got radioactively labeled. Now, after centrifugation, okay, 
after centrifugation what are we supposed to get after centrifugation we are supposed to get in the pellet we are supposed to get the genetic material okay in the pellet we are supposed to get the genetic material and in the supernatant what are we supposed to get we will get the protein coat and all that so what was noticed here they noticed that in the pellet okay of this we noticed radioactively labeled genetic material okay and we also noticed that inside the e coli also there was radioactively p32 so they understood that okay the transforming principle is dna is this clear let's see here look here all of you this diagram very simple don't break your head don't push yourself to an extent that oh my god it's so complicated so hershey and martha chase these two people proved that dna is the genetic material with a very simple experiment that is they took bacteriophages they allowed it to get radioactively labeled okay in s35 and p32 we know that for p32 or your phosphate is only present in dna so there is no doubt at all rna was not ever a doubt at all then s35 we know it is only present in protein so that clarification they made first only then they allowed this bacteriophages to infect the e coli cells okay they allowed the bacteriophages to infect the e coli cells after infection what is the most important character of a virus the moment they infect the cell they will leave their genetic material inside the cell yes or no so this also they did the same way same thing happened you can see this red color is radioactive labeling okay as the nest they infected the cell of e coli they put the genetic material inside with the help of blending okay with the help of blending what happened this protein coat which was you know hanging on the cell that was removed after that they did centrifugation centrifugation is done by to understand the density difference with the help of centrifugation we notice that no radioactive oh, oh, oh. no radioactivity was detected in the cell students transforming principle what was happened it has actually infected the cell right genetic material if it infect the cell only it will be able to change something from non virulent to virulent okay what is happening oh ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho what is happening radioactivity means what it is a way for us to understand right we cannot label it manually so radioactive labeling means what under an uh, under when we see it under audio radiography or when we are seeing it we will be able to understand that there is a difference okay so radioactively labeling is done for our understanding to make this better otherwise how will you know in pellet what is there supernatant and what is there okay so that's why we do radioactive labeling okay it's a way of labeling and helping us understand to give that clarity okay is this clear soul uh, something i forgot okay so let's stop talking with each other i'll remove you from the class stop talking with each other okay it will disturb other people also stop talking listen to the class very important chapter okay so no radioactivity detected in the cell radioactivity detected in the supernatant that means what protein coat was found in the supernatant and not in the pellet okay here what did they notice radioactivity detected in the cell okay radioactivity detected in the cell that means it's confirmed that dna is the genetic material and no radioactivity detected in the supernatant so this gave us an idea that dna is the genetic material dna is the genetic material okay and where was it found it was noticed that in the pellet we got radioactive radioactivity was seen in the pellet is this clear okay yes or no clear or not what are they talking sumalata some family story they tell mother in law fights yes clear <laughs> okay chalo
they won't like the video conscious people won't like the video i will not take class also anymore okay now look here properties of a genetic material like how we have politicians okay how we have for every single sector see now you are a neat aspirant right you are a neat aspirant yes 100 percent okay so uni equivocal it was proved that Hershey and Chase was the people who proved that DNA was the genetic material. That means 100% with proper proof, uh, it is proved by Hershey and Chase. Okay, that is the question. Every time it will be asked, repeated from the NCRT. Now students, if I want to stand in politics, okay, I need to be 18 plus or if I want to vote, let's keep it simple. I don't know about politician. If I want to be 18, uh, sorry, if I want to vote, I should be 18 plus, I should be an Indian citizen. I should have a voter's ID. All these are the normal criteria to vote. Same way, normal criteria to be a genetic material is that they should be able to undergo replication. They should be able to undergo what? Replication. That means form their own replica. Okay. Second thing, they should be chemically and structurally stable. Because why? Because see, if a person... If, if it is a genetic material, whatever happens, if a person's body get burned, if anything happens, a fire happens, we expect that the genetic material still stays intact, right? Until it is a very extreme situation, our genetic material will stay intact, okay? Not because by just by, you know, any small inconvenience, okay, it's very hot outside, genetic material has got changed. So, none of the outside or inside things should change the genetic material. So, it should be chemically and structurally very very stable okay mutation it should be capable of mutation but at a slower pace okay it should be at a slower pace not fast mutation fast mutation is not agreed okay now express Med uh, Mendelian characters or inherit it, that means it should be having the ability to inherit characters right now some of us look always young like I'm telling some of you might look very young for your age. That is because your genetics or your parents' genetics or your entire family, all of them are very young. So this person or this genetic material should be in a position to inherit something from your parents, right? From your ancestors. That information should be stored safely within it. So express Mendelian characters. Is this clear? Replication, chemically and structurally stable, mutation and express Mendelian characters. Okay. Now, RNA, uh, I will not tell much about RNA here. We will learn it as and when we go. So, students, RNA is not a genetic material for most of the organisms, mainly because they are not chemically or structurally stable. Structurally, they are not stable. Why they are not stable? Can you tell me? All of you know one thing that is one or two things that is making them, uh, you know, unstable. Give it a try, all of you in the chat. Give it a try why they are not stable. Second thing, this RNA mutates at a faster rate. Mutates at a faster rate. First genetic material, yes, RNA was the first genetic material that led to the formation of your DNA. Totally agree, but what is the reason? It is the genetic material for virus also agreed. But students, why is it not structurally and chemically stable? Why is it not structurally and chemically stable? Yes, very good. It's because first thing, because of the presence of that extra oxy group, right? Presence of that OH group. And second thing is the presence of uracil instead of thymine. Okay, the place, the presence of uracil instead of thymine is also a reason why your RNA is not chemically and structurally stable. Even though it is the first genetic material, it is still a genetic material in virus, right? TMV and all we study, right? It is a genetic material in all of this, okay? Yes. Now, why DNA is preferred over RNA? Again, the same reason. Simple reason is because, again, DNA is chemically and structurally stable. Again, because of the absence of that oxy group. I'm not writing a lot. Okay, because of the absence. It's given, one paragraph is given in your textbook, students. Okay, oxygen group, because of the absence of the oxygen group. Second thing, because of the presence of thymine instead of uracil. Yes. And second thing, they can do uh, DNA replication. Even RNA can do it can form its own replica. 
थर्ड थिंग इज वॉट इट शुड बी केमिकली स्ट्रक्चर स्टेबल रेप्लीकेशन डन थर्ड थिंग वॉज वॉट वॉट इज द थर्ड मोर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक वेरी गुड स्लो म्यूटेशन इट डज स्लो म्यूटेशन एंड फोर्थ वन वॉज एक्सप्रेस मेंडेलियन कैरेक्टर्स एक्सप्रेस मेंडेलियन characters all this is done by your dna that is the reason why dna is accepted as the most genetic material yes or no okay because it is the most widely accepted genetic material chalo let's start with dna replication ready for dna replication all of you so far did you understand everything so far did you understand everything all of you in the chat so far did you understand yes okay fine now dna replication i told you dna has the ability to replicate or make its own copy but dna replicates in a semi conservative manner semi conservative method okay semi conservative method means like i told you students look here that is your conservative this is your semi conservative let's take with a very real example how many of you have siblings raise your hands in the uh thank you shri vishnu can you raise your hands in the chat how many of you have siblings how many of you have siblings or even if you have a very best friend from your childhood raise your hands put the pink hands pink hands is there no i think pink hands is there i guess if i teach maths you will fail yes most of you If you have best friend also, you can raise your hand. Yeah, put that heart that Subhash Nee put hand hand. Okay, most of you have siblings. Most of you will have best friends. Okay, or someone close to you, very close to you. Now, what is going to happen? Parents are there. Okay, understand? Parents are there. Okay. Now, what is going to happen? <laughs> hand ping waving it seems. <laughs> okay, so students, this is your parents. Now, each parents, your siblings are there. Parents are there. you will get into a fight with your sister or your brother okay parents will hear you shout you will be crying they'll come to solve this is the solving stage but mother has uh, teamed up with son and father has teamed up with daughter and they are supporting each other they're telling oh my daughter won't do this my son won't do this they are trying to solve your issue the moment they come to a point where they will question you about something that you did mistake maybe why did you sleep yesterday late or i saw you online on whatsapp kuch bhi whatever it is parents go against you for one minute immediately what you will do you will hold your sibling you'll like no no we are always good we never fought you both will come back together and you will make your parents go back yes or no all of you have done this once at least in your life yes or no those who do not have siblings also don't worry it's not something this it's just that if you have a friend also is more than enough so students here conservative means there is parent dna or your template dna that will help in forming the new daughter dnas okay main xerox copy the xerox same way parent dna will help to form the daughter dna parent dna will help to form the daughter dna after that parents will come back together daughter dna will come back together this is called as conservative method now semi conservative means what you both fought parents came to uh, solve the problem and parent that means mother and uh, son got full company telling that over oh, this fool talk to this father and uh, her daughter like him only very short temper that girl also is i don't want them mother will tell son will be very happy son will be like yeah yeah mama let's both be a team right and then again daughter and father also will be become a team that is called as semi conservative this is just an example for you to understand okay this is just an example for you to understand you have to look at this colors and understand what i just told so parent dna parent dna will act as a template form the daughter dna parent dna will act as a template form the daughter dna and parent daughter dna will fuse parent daughter dna will fuse this is called semi conservative in other words i can tell it is forming hybrids okay it is forming hybrids is this clear to all of you is it clear to all of you quickly tell me in the chat is conservative and semi conservative yeah you would have fought for chocolate gobi manchuri uh, dresses 100 things you would have fought but the moment the mom or dad tells something that you did in the mistake in the past you both will suddenly become together 
Yes or no? Yes or no? So that is what is conservative. Here, they both have become together. You like you've become as teams in the home. So this will be parent plus daughter DNA. Yes, clear? Fine. Now that is so our DNA does semi-conservative method. That is this method. There are conservative dispersive method. You don't have to worry. You only have to worry about semi-conservative. But it is important for you to understand because numericals will come from this. Okay. Now, Messelson and Stahl experiment. These were the two people proved that DNA is a DNA is uh, replicating in semi-conservative manner. How did they prove? It's very simple. One second. How did they prove? Students, if I have to form a hybrid, okay, now imagine you all have a white color t-shirt. Okay, during the COVID time, there was very much tie-dye, tie-dye going around. People put rubber band from all the side, put colors, tie-dye t-shirts were forming, okay. So, what do they do? They take a white t-shirt, dip it in one ink, lift it up, dry it, put it in another one, dip and dye. That same way, these people also did it. I'll tell you how. So, imagine first they took, first they took N14, no, first they took N15. Okay, this is a heavy isotope of nitrogen. Okay, heavy isotope of nitrogen that is N15 NH4 Cl. Okay, N15 NH4 Cl. Yes or no? Okay, now in this they allowed the DNA to grow. So, what is expected after this? You will get a DNA, both the strands will be N15. Simple. First you dip it in blue, so both the, the full t-shirt will be blue in color. Both are N15, both are heavy. Okay. After this, they let the E. coli, because students, they took E. coli for replication experiment is because E. coli, okay, because E. coli cells replicate every 20 minutes. We need to do replication for a very shorter time, right? We cannot be like 48 hours, we'll give time for replication. We do not have that kind of time. So, they took E. coli, which will replicate every 20 minutes. So, the first they left it, so they observed that both of them were N15, okay? After that, the same strand, they allowed it to grow on your N14, that is uh, light, okay? N14 NH4Cl, light isotope of nitrogen. What was noticed here? What did they notice? Very simple thing. One was heavy. Okay. Another one was light. Right. So, they noticed N14, N15. So, here they understood that our DNA does do semi-conservative. Okay. They understood that our DNA does semi-conservative replication. Yes or no? They got a hybrid. Can they leave it here? No, they cannot leave it here. They need to do more for another 20 minutes. Okay, to see how long this is going to happen. So, when they did it for a longer time, they got what? They got more light strands. Two light strands. And they got two hybrid strands. Yes? After 20 minutes, what did they get? They got 50-50, right? They got 50% hybrid. They got 50% light. Okay? Again, if they would have done it for 20 minutes, what they would have got? Again, for 20 minutes, if they would have done, they would have got 75% light. They would have got 75% light and they would have got 25% hybrid. Since this question was asked, when I did the most expected question also, I did this. When I did the previous year questions also, I did this. Okay. This question keeps asking what happens after 80 minutes, what happens after 60 minutes. So, you should be in a position to tell. So, after 60 minutes means see, this is the 20 minute. Okay. So, first you will get a hybrid. Okay. So, 20, 20, 20, 60 minutes you will get 75% light, 25% hybrid. After 80 minutes, what will you get? After 80 minutes, what will you get? You will get 87.5% light. Okay. And you will get 
ஆப்டர்ட்டி So we have taken E. coli because it replicates faster. Because it replicates faster. Okay, it takes replication every 20 minutes. Is this clear students? This is the ex experiment. What is the doubt? What's your doubt? I did not see your doubt. What is Laddu, Yadav and uh, Tillu and all doing? Hello? Students don't talk with each other. They're doing it purposefully to distract you. So stay focused. What is your doubt unknown? I cannot see your doubt. Please put the doubt again. Okay, is this clear? Any doubts? So the question will be asked this way. Okay? Clear or not? Okay, so the question will be asked directly. So if you know the answer, you can directly write the percentage. If you want to draw and do it, you can draw and do it. Okay? This was Messerson and Stahl experiment. You can see here, this is what I drew. So here you can see NH15 DNA. Again, they kept the first generation. Generation 1, you will get hybrid. Okay, generation 1, you will get hybrid. And centrifugation was done depending on the density gradient. Heavy and light, no? So it was done depending on the density gradient. And they used what? The density gradient used was cesium chloride. Okay, cesium chloride was used. That gave us the hybrid and again next generation. So they stopped it here for 40 minutes. They have directly done. You can do 20, 20, 20, 20 up to 80 minutes. Okay. This is called replication. Heavy DNA is this one N15. Light DNA is N14. Heavy DNA is. Okay. See here light, light, light only, light only. Students, light only. Can you see here? N14, N14. Hybrid, hybrid. Students, because see, after this, you're not keeping it, you're not keeping your E. coli in N15 anymore. See, you're again keeping it in N, uh, you're not keeping, oh, one second. What am I telling? <laughs> First, you'll keep it in N15. After that, you're not keeping it in N15. You're keeping it in N14. So, N14 will keep coming. Light DNA will keep coming, not the heavy DNA. Is this clear? Okay, so here, this is your first generation, I'll write it here, first generation, okay, first generation will happen here, you will get your hybrids, after that you will continue, here your second generation will happen, okay, second, here your third, it will be light only and this 80 minutes may fourth generation, okay, fourth generation, understood, one, two, three, four, right, now also understand this, See, if they are asking about 80 minutes, okay, if they are asking about 80 minutes, one generation, okay, the first one generation takes 20 minutes, one generation takes 20 minutes, then 80 minutes means how much? Four generations, so four generations will take how much minutes? 80 minutes, so that's how you will do the maths, so correct, four generations we got, one, two, three, four, any doubts? Unknown, did you understand? Yes, exactly. Heavy, parents. Heavy means parents. Okay, light means, again, daughters. Heavy and uh, hybrid means daughter and parent. Okay, daughter and parent. Clear? I think it's clear now. Okay, this is parent actually. This is your N14. This will become the parent. Okay, this will be, N14 will be, whatever you depend on N14, you will get your daughter. So, this will become your hybrid. Here I have written hybrid. Okay, hybrid. Yes, okay, awesome. Now, look here students, same thing is given here. 
here they put it in N15, that is N15 NH4Cl, okay, ammonium chloride, okay, N15, after 20 minutes you will get hybrid, that is your first generation, after that, don't write this as first generation, this should be a first generation, okay, first generation, after that they have done generation 2, after 40 minutes you will get, see, can you see, light, light hybrid, that means 50% light, 50% hybrid, okay, this will continue with the help of cesium chloride, again I have written this, uh, here I have given, they grew E. coli in a medium containing NH4Cl N15, N15 is a heavy isotope of nitrogen, that's why we use density gradient word, centrifugation, density gradient means there is a difference in density, okay, now the result was that, okay, same thing students, don't need to read and waste time here, we can understand here, CCM chloride gradient. Okay, any doubts, please let me know later. Yes, okay. Keep it unclear, no problem. Now, I told you about DNA replication. Now, it's very important for you to know what, it's important for you to know how this unzipping of DNA will happen. Okay, so students, this is unzipping of your DNA happening with the help of some enzymes. Okay, these are the two strands of your DNA. These are the two strands of your DNA, 3 dash to 5 dash, anti-parallel, no, 5 dash to 3 dash. Now, DNA replication to happen, we all understood that there should be a parent, okay, there should be a parent DNA or your template DNA and there will be a, a daughter DNA form for this. For this to happen, for this to happen, we need to separate the two strands, no, D double helical structures like this, you need to separate them. For separating, we have some enzymes, okay. For separating, we have some enzymes, okay. Yes or no? So, look here, the first enzyme that we need is your first most important enzyme is DNA polymerase. First important enzyme is DNA polymerase. So, understood these two are the template strand. DNA polymerase have some condition. I will only work on a single strand and the strand polarity has to be from 3 dash to 5 dash direction. This is the condition of DNA polymerase. We will be like, okay, it's agreed, your condition is agreed. Second problem of DNA polymerase is it, it will not start the reaction, it will not initiate the reaction. It needs another person's help called as a primer, okay, primase or your primer, okay, it needs the help of a primer or a primase. With the help of a primer only, it will start the reaction. So, primase will come and join here. Okay, primase will come and join and the daughter strand will be formed. Okay, daughter strand will be formed in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay, no problem. We did not face any problem here. Everything happened very smoothly. Now, the second problem is because this DNA polymerase has a condition that it will only work from 3 dash to 5 dash. This strand is 5 dash to 3 dash. So, DNA polymerase will not work. Yes or no? Okay. Yes, it is an RNA primer. So, here what will happen? 5 dash to 3 dash. RNA polymer, sorry, DNA polymerase will not work. DNA polymerase will be like, no, I told you that I will only work from 3 dash to 5 dash. Why are you making me work from 5 dash to 3 dash? Yes. So, Primer will be like, okay, don't worry, I have a trick. Let's do it in reverse pattern. That means I will attach myself here and this DNA polymerase will continue. Again, because it is in a reverse direction, more energy will be required. Again, it will keep continuing. Okay, keep continuing. Okay, here again, this will happen. Okay. So, students, other than this, we have SSB uh, enzyme and uh, topo isomerase. I'll tell you about it. But just understand this much. Understood? Understood? Yes or no? So, we did it in reverse pattern. Is this clear to all of you? <laughs> clear or not? Tell me quickly in the chats. I'm, I'm looking at your chats. Yes, leading strand and lagging strand will come one second. Before that, just try to understand this. Okay, this is the normal thing. But the most first ever catchy thing that we forgot is, how did this strands open up? This is a double helical strand. How did this opening happen? It opened because of an enzyme called as helicase. So, helicase was the one who allowed the opening of this double-stranded 
स्ट्रक्चर ओके नाउ हेली केस ओपन बट डी एन ए इज इन सच अ सिचुएशन दैट दे विल ऑलवेज ट्राई टू कम एंड बाइंड बैक ये दे विल ऑलवेज ट्राई टू कम एंड बाइंड बैक फॉर दैट वी हैव एन अदर एनजाइम कॉल्ड एस 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 बी पी ओके एस एस बी पी एनजाइम विच विल अवॉइड द बाइंडिंग ऑफ द टू स्ट्रेंड्स ओके बाइंडिंग ऑफ द टू स्ट्रेंड्स इज दिस क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू येस और नो सिंगल स्ट्रैंड बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन एस एस बी पी सिंगल स्ट्रैंड सिंगल स्ट्रैंड बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन ओके सिंपल डबल हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर आई नीड टू ओपन इट टू गेट माई पेरेंट स्ट्रैंड एंड टू फॉर्म द डी डॉटर डी एन ए सिंपल थिंग फॉर दैट For the opening of the strands, whom did I call? Helicase I called. Helicase opened it and gave. Now SSBP enzyme will be like, okay, see, if I separate two people who like each other, if I separate two people who like each other, they will have a tendency like, oh, I want to be, I want to meet him because parents. See, imagine parents is helicase. Parents is helicase. Parents will be like, you're not in an age to do all this. Stop all this. But the girl or the boy will be like in so much frustration. I want to meet him. I want to meet her. I want to meet him. I want to meet her. That to avoid that, there will be one sister or a brother. That is SSBP. They'll have high BP and they'll always be behind this people, telling that your helicase told that you cannot be together. So you shut up and be at home. Correct. So SSBP will do that job. Single stranded binding protein. Now, students, because they will be continuously crying, cribbing. so much problems they'll make the strand which is up to where it is open no problem but there will be 2.2 meter dna is there so the rest of the portion will uh, the rest of the portion of the dna will have super coiling to avoid super coiling from happening we will use another enzyme called as topo isomerase okay or it is called gyrase okay topo isomerase i am teaching this i have not taught this before is because i did not see much questions but last time when i was checking somewhere i saw topo uh, topo isomerase so i thought i should add this okay topo isomerase or gyrase is to avoid the super coiling of the dna okay let's understand it once again two people are there they like them very each other they like each other very much and they are double stranded structures to separate them who came their father came that is the helicase enzyme why are we doing this because we need to separate these two people to get our parent dna and to form the new daughter dna for replication to happen right so can you see a hybrid is happening one parent one daughter one parent one daughter so helicase has separated them but they are crying and frustrated that they want to come back together so we have ssbp a sister or a brother who has high bp will be always taking care that they will not come back together so they will avoid binding of the two strands together because they are continuously crying and going through a mental depression they will go through super coiling to avoid super coiling we'll take them to a doctor the doctor's name is topo isomeris topo isomerase or gyrase is this clear is this clear clear ssbp is to avoid the binding topo isomerase is to avoid the super coiling of the rest of the dna the tension the rest of the dna will face no to avoid that you have topo isomerase or gyrase is this clear who asked me the doubt okay yes uh, neat ug is this clear Yes, topo isomerase, eukaryotes, gyrase. Need UG understood to remove the super coiling. Okay, here to remove the super coiling. Now that much is done. Ah, uh, DNA polymerase made the strands also. It made the daughter strands for us. Problem kind of sorted. Now the thing is because since we used primer. and that is a rna can rna be in a dna definitely not so since dna polymerase work got over dna polymerase will be like hey throw this fellow outside so so the body will listen to it and it will remove all the primers okay it will remove all the primers since the primers got removed 
there is lot of spaces in between them yes or no can you see lot of spaces in between this strands to fill that spaces again dna polymerase will add the nucleotides or the sequences but to attach all of this together we will use the help of ligase okay we will use the help of ligase is this clear so the gluing the gluing will happen because of dna ligase dna ligase will do the gluing job students please do not write dna ligase adds the nucleotide dna ligase will join the nucleotides or the sequence that is made by the dna polymerase okay so dna ligase will do gluing is this clear so one person gluing one person opening one person forming the new strands another person leading the strand understood all this will happen in the spot called as ori or origin of replication origin of replication origin of replication now let's label the strands let's label the strands so this strand which did not have any problem okay this strand is called the leading strand or the continuous strand and this one which caused so much of problem because uh, you know dna polymerase is like that stupid person who will not do any job that's why this is called as a discontinuous or lagging strand okay it's called a discontinuous or lagging strand and the fragments are called as okasaki fragments and why is oka is not coming okasaki fragments is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you yes or no it's very easy try to understand in a very easy way people who have watched multiple classes of mine by now this would be thorough for them but those who are watching for the first time it might not be thorough for you but slowly try to understand we are doing dna replication we have to separate the parent dna to form the daughter dna for that we are going to help we are going to use helicase to open the strands and then we are going to take the help of who we are going to take the help of primer to lead the strand because the our dna polymerase will be like no no i will not i am big of a star you go a front okay with the umbrella front of me then i will do the job so primase will attach itself and continue forming the leading and the lagging strand but dna polymerase has a problem that it will only work on a 3 dash to 5 dash strand so this strand becomes the leading strand with no problem but because the second strand is from 5 dash to 3 dash dna polymerase will not allow to do it the dna polymerase will be like no no i will not do it so primer will get an idea that why don't we do it in a reverse pattern okay why don't we do it reverse so it will do reverse and that reverse will lead to the formation of a leading strand i mean lagging strand okay and those fragments right once we removed the primer there were some fragments that fragments are called as okasaki fragments because a person called okasaki found the fragments is this clear to all of you clear or not easy pc easy or difficult okay yes here i have written again ora origin of replication helicase unwinding enzyme our dna polymerase forms the new strand primase that initiates the uh, dna polymerase and ligase gluing strand ssbp avoids the binding okay avoids the binding and your topo isomerase topo isomerase removes recoiling sorry super coil remove super coil clear yes that mouth like structure no that y is called as the replication fork okay that y that like this opening is called the replication fork see look here this one leading strand lagging strand and then original dna can you see that original dna is undergoing very 
thick super coiling to avoid that we will use topo isomerase okay and here you can see how it is attaching how it is forming the new strand okay how it is forming the new strand this became the leading strand this will become the lagging strand yes ready transcription ready for transcription all of you okay transcription means basically dna to mrna now we learned replication now dna to mrna okay leading strand see leading strand is formed on the 3 dash to 5 dash end but that strand is from 5 dash to 3 dash okay the formed strand is 5 dash to 3 dash but it is formed from the 3 dash to 5 dash yes now look here transcription students basically it is from dna to mrna it happens in three steps first is i mean three uh, units your promoter uh, structural gene and uh, terminator okay now it happens in three that that entire thing is called the transcriptional unit okay initiation elongation and termination three steps and who are helping promoter is there structural gene is there terminator is there like i always tell you structural gene is the region at which transcription actually happens or that is the sequence that forms the mrna because we do not need 2.2 meter dna to get converted to mrna not required so this is the starting point of this reaction right the starting point of this transcription happens at this region where your structural gene is there now always understand in dna we always take only one strand to form the mrna that is because simple reason is because both the strands will end up forming two different proteins and according to our central dogma one dna should form one mrna one mrna should form one protein if we take both the strands of dna then we'll get two different proteins yes or no we'll get two different proteins okay then so next thing is see two strands it will form a students after this transcription i'll give you a break now don't ask a break flow will go off okay see two strands of dna if i take i'm going to get two different proteins which is not okay from the central dogma right next thing is if i take two strands and i form two mrnas those two mrnas will bind with each other because they'll be complementary to each other right common sense complementary to each other so i can only take one strand and the strand which i take is called the template strand got it the strand which i take is called the template strand yes students one second Yes, sorry students. Oh, did them all leave already?
yes look here why are we taking only one strand clear so the strand that we take is called the template strand so the other strand is there no which is not the non template strand that strand has actually one special character very simple mm, let's just take this uh, i'll take the first five a t g c a children this is your template strand okay this is your template strand sequence now let's write the mrna that will get formed from this template strand okay the mrna formed will be what a will bind with u because thymine t will bind with a g will bind with c c will bind with this and this this is the mrna you got right this is the mrna you got okay now if i write the coding strand coding strand of this so this becomes a template strand this becomes the mrna can you see is it too small okay this becomes the mrna now i'll write the coding strand okay coding strand sequence opposite to this what will be there a one second something happened okay this is the template strand wait confusion will happen wait so i'll write it here big okay a t g c a okay whatever i have written in blue is the template strand if i write t it will become confusing okay now i'm going to write the mrna i'm going to form it will be u a c g u this is the mrna i formed now i'm going to write the coding strand the coding strand will be what t a c g t can you see this so this is my template strand this is my mrna i formed this is the coding strand now can you tell me there is a very very easy similarity between my mrna and a coding strand can you tell me what it is can you tell me what is okay what is the similarity between my mrna and coding strand yes all of you quickly what is this what is the similarity students look properly if you see properly you will understand that uracil is replaced by thymine that's all right so if i take the template and the coding strand that means the mrna formed will be similar to the coding strand yes or no so here the question is can you now write the sequence of rna transcribed from the above dna two ways you can write you write or uh, uh, you write mrna for this mrna for the coding uh, template strand or you replace all the t in the coding strand with u simple yes or no yes or no yes except you all are similar so if you want to solve this two ways to solve it is writing the mrna for this template strand or replace all the thymines in the coding strand with u simple yes or no so this is the catch of this okay now if you look here you will see the promoter promoter is there okay on the upstream and here terminator is there in the downstream so here you can see student this promoter region and the terminator region but here is actually where the transcription is going to start here this is the place where transcription is exactly going to start because of the presence of structural gene yes or no because of the presence of structural gene so in your entire 2.2 meter of dna there will be a small portion which will be the structural gene which will help in the formation of mrna keep it very simple in your head don't get yourself confused at all okay this chapter is confusing because most of it you assume now let's see what how is transcription happening very simple first i told you three steps transcription is happening what are the three step initiation initiation that will obviously happen from the promoter region in the promoter region your rna polymerase yes or no we have to form mrna at the end of transcription rna polymerase will come bind with the sigma factor and move forward 
near the structural gene region. So that becomes your initiation. In the next process is the actual process that is elongation. That means your structural gene will form the mRNA and send it outside, right? Send it outside. That is your elongation. And the last we have termination, right? We have termination, which will actually be when the RNA polymerase does not know when to stop. So, in the terminator region, we have a factor called as the rho factor. So, the RNA polymerase will combine with the rho factor and stop the reaction. Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. Initiation, sigma factor, structural gene, the actual formation of the mRNA and termination reaction, rho factor with RNA polymerase. Okay, RNA polymerase is the person who is going to do this. Are we good to go? Did all of you understand this? Is there any student who did not understand? <laughs> Clear? Fine. Okay, now look here, students in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, genes are different. Okay, in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, genes are different. Okay, yes, structural gene is the actual region that will code for protein because the structural gene region will have the exons that will actually help in coding. Now, that is what we are going to understand. Now, genes are of two types, okay, monocystronic and polycystronic. Genes are of two types, monocystronic, monocystronic and polycystronic. Okay, polycystronic. That means in monocystronic, this one strand of mRNA will only be able to form or code for one protein. But this strand will be able to code for multiple proteins. That means they have the sequence for multiple proteins. This is what is polycystronic. Cystron means a small sequence on a gene. That's all. Okay. So, two types are there. Monocystronic, polycystronic. Monocystronic is shown in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. They don't have any complexity. Monocystronic is shown in eukaryotes. That is in us. Okay. Eukaryotes. Now, what is the benefit? What is the disadvantage? What is the advantage? What is going to happen as simple students? In our monocystronic gene, we have something called as the split gene. What do we have? Split gene. That means we have both the coding and the non-coding sequence. Okay. We have both the coding and the non-coding sequence. So, this is the gene. So, here if you see, the purple ones are the exons, introns, exons, introns, exons. The exons are the region that will actually code. Exons are the region that will actually code for protein or help us in translation. Then what are these introns doing here? Introns are the non-coding sequence on the gene which we do not want for translation. So, with the help of splicing, we will remove these introns and we will form a new mRNA or new gene with only exons in it. Okay? Yes? Okay? Yes, like split personality, this is split gene. Exon, intron, exon, intron. Now, this will block our protein synthesis, right? So, to avoid this, we will do RNA processing. We will do what? RNA processing. Processing, processing it seems, RNA processing, okay, clear or not? This problem is not there in prokaryotes, this problem is only there in eukaryotes. Uh, tell us what problems we don't have, we have all the problems. Now students, I will form a gene that is completely with exon and we will do capping and tailing for it, okay? We will put a cap and we will put a tail so that we save them from any kind of exonucleus, okay? Capping is done and tailing is done okay capping with the help of methyl guanosine triphosphate and tailing with the help of poly a tail okay yes capping and tailing is done so it is protected completely from any exonucleus which will trim the ends and we do not want any more introns or any problem to come again yes yes correct prokaryotes polycystronic uh, 
eukaryotes monocystronic okay yes i have written here no see eukaryotes prokaryotes pp you remember pro poly pro poly okay yes now students i'll show you the image our textbook has given an image this is called as rna processing so you have to answer the question that in prokaryotes is rna processing happening yes or so, no question okay in prokaryotes rna processing is it happening or not yes first question i'm asking you in prokaryotes is rna processing happening during transcription yes or no yes or no question to all of you answer quickly after that i'll continue no okay just now i told i should expect more answer yes very good okay very good so rna processing will not happen in prokaryotes because they do not have split gene or they do not have heterogeneous rna okay heterogeneous rna is hn rna that means two mixing is there no exon and intron intron so two different types okay so look here students here you can see structural gene is forming an mrna that mrna has a yellow orange yellow orange portion that means an exon yeah exon intron exon intron exon intron portion okay now with the help of splicing look here with the help of splicing we will remove the introns from it okay we will remove the introns from it <clears throat> is this clear is this clear or not one second yes what happened okay never mind yes is this clear students okay yes so here what is happening splicing is happening okay it's called lag rate sequ not not required so here splicing will happen that means the removing of this introns and finally we will get a proper proper mature mrna okay we will get a proper mrna which will have a proper capping and tailing okay this capping is because of methyl guanosine triphosphate and tailing is about the poly a tail this is only seen in your eukaryotes this is only seen in your eukaryotes now i wanted to tell you one more thing students your energy okay in all this i saw one question not now it's a very long back like in the sense 2019 or 18 question but still i'll just tell it to you during replication during transcription everything they need energy okay and who is giving this energy the energy is given because of see normally your nucleotides are this right sugar and base right now when i add two phosphate to this what will it become students just look at this and tell me what will this become this is your normal this is your wait one second my god this is your nucleotide nucleoside okay this is your nucleotide now tell me what is this whole thing this whole thing what is this whole thing called as can anyone give it a try yes okay what is this whole thing called as it will be called as see it is nucleoside nucleoside triphosphate okay nucleoside triphosphate agreed or not okay so this nucleoside triphosphate will be used as an energy okay energy in all your processes of replication transcription translation everything okay is this clear 
yes it acts both as a substrate as as an energy yes perfect okay it acts both as a substrate and an energy source okay is this clear nucleoside triphosphate it, it can be deoxy nucleoside in dna otherwise just write nucleoside triphosphate okay De deoxy also you can write when uh, dna is coming otherwise general nucleoside triphosphate is this clear it acts both as a substrate and an energy source this is in both replication transcription everything okay yes students i will not give you a longer break because i have to leave from the office there's no one in the office today is an off so that's why i will not give you longer breaks i'll only give you five minutes break because i need to finish and go leave before everything shutdowns okay is this okay for all of you okay so i will give you maybe okay now we have genetic code then we have insertion translation then we have lacopron then we have HGP, then we have DNA fingerprinting. Okay, now maybe another one hour we'll be able to finish it. Okay. Yes, students, uh, shall I give you a 5 minutes break or 10 minutes break? Now what's the time? Okay. Okay, I cannot give you dinner break. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, there will be a tomorrow a special session is coming. Yes, I am a little tired, but yeah, resume back at 9.15, okay?
yes ready biotechnology i am doing in the next block that is on 17th 17th okay 17th i'll do the 9 am class and uh, i think baswa sir will do the next class 3 3 pm class or ulta one or the other way will be doing okay let's continue students ready okay so transcription is clear i hope its transcription is clear any doubts in transcription please ask me right now okay let me open your chats yes transcription clear right okay now students next thing is genetic code so why do we need genetic code is very simple reason on the mrna on the mrna there should be something to code for protein right code for protein so for that to happen we cannot just have nitrogenous basis we cannot just be like agctdd what are these people going to code for which are the proteins that they're going to code for for that we needed a genetic code and this was found by george gamo who was a physicist not a biologist not a zoologist nothing he was a physicist and he was like okay let me do one thing there are four nucleotides a g c t now this four nucleotides if i take each one of them will i be able to code for 20 amino acids so the standard 20 amino acids were there okay in that standard 20 amino acids we needed to check if if i use one that means one of them how many will i get i'll be able to code for four amino acids if i take two of them that means two sets okay then i'll be able to code for 16 of them okay that means if i take this two this two like that if i keep doing i'll get 16 of them still i'm not able to reach 20 amino acids then the last option was i'm going to do four into three that is 64 so with 64 codons i am going to code for 20 amino acids this was the plan this was the plan okay so george gamow physicist who argued that since there are only four bases and we have to code for 20 amino acids the code should consist a combination of three bases each that is why it is called as a triplet so all the codons were a triplet that is because four threes are they got 64 that could code for 20 amino acids okay so here you can see in your textbook there are few codons given now you have to remove a few of them and how will you remember row one row two row three that is how they do it right u u u okay u u sorry u u c u u a u u g that's how they made this okay the first box so like that you have to know phenyl alanine you have to know the stop codons so if you see here you can see three stop codons are there so students out of the 64 of them that you know george gamo told about in that 64 of them 61 is the useful one or the ones that will code for amino acids and the three of them are nonsense codon or the stop codon or the stop codon is this clear and which are the stop codons look that look at there and say u a a u g a g and your u g a yes or no those three are the stop codons is this clear or not right yes so out of the 64 codons 61 of them will code for amino acids the three of them are nonsense codon or the stop codon which is u a a u a g and u g a okay yes thank you sir okay now look here students the salient features or the you know what what you need to know about this genetic code and why, what is this genetic code how can they help right so the salient features of genetic code is that the codon is triplet 61 codons code for amino acids and the three of them are nonsense codon or the stop codon okay nonsense codon or the stop codon now some amino acids are coded by more than one codon hence code is degenerate students this was asked one of the years i solved this question in this channel itself okay 
thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much okay it gives me the motivation to continue the class okay yes yes thank you students thank you sir so look here some amino acids are coded by more than one code that condition is called the code is degenerate okay this question was there in your in text question in text question remember we solved this the code is read in an mrna in a contagious fashion that means a g a t c a c c c u u u i will read it like this i will not read a g a comma t c a comma c c u comma u u u comma no i will read it in a contagious fashion or a continuous fashion is this clear okay now the code is nearly universal that means u u u in bacteria also will code for phenylalanine u u u in human also will code for phenylalanine that means universal no matter it is the prokaryote or a eukaryote same things it will code for okay yes same things it will code for so the code is nearly universal for example from bacteria to human u u u will code for phenylalanine is this clear okay now a u g has dual function so some of the codes have dual function like a u g is a start codon at the same time it also codes for methionine okay it also code for methionine this is clear these are the most important characteristic or salient features of your genetic code okay now students ready for translation translation after this you have to go back and read ncrt or this chapter will forever be a headache for you okay because this chapter is the longest chapter i know you people hesitate to read ncrt if possible i would have kept ncrt but now it's not possible in the board it will not be that comfortable but please go back and read ncrt okay please go back and read ncrt now look here students the first ever thing about translation is what mrna has to form protein for that we have genetic code right and the first ever step of your translation is charging of your trna you'll be like ma'am from where did trna come students mrna okay this is your mrna mrna has codons on it right codes this different different codes are there these are the codes can mrna read it did you study that mrna has a special structure to read the codes we did not read, study about it so we are going to take a higher a person called as the trna right trna all of you answer answer sir very good rani only rani knows the answer huh? what sir is asking just now i finished yes yes aug is a initiator codon and it codes for methionine now students did we study that mrna has any special thing no so we are going to hire our trna which is an adapter molecule that will do the job of reading this code and attaching the amino acids okay reading the code attaching the amino acids reading the code attaching the amino acid it is like you read two chapters your mom will give you a reward you read three chapters your mom will give you a reward so that reading job is done by your trna and the ribosome okay so the first ever step is called as amino acylation or charging of your trna let's see how it happens see in the cytoplasm see amino acids will do amino acyl trna synthetase with the help of amino acyl uh, trna synthetase what is going to happen look here with the help of atp we will release 2 pi and form amp so energy form we are using is adenosine monophosphate okay here we need monophosphate why i'll tell you that let's look here monophosphate 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 yes so students look here very simple amino acids has to bind with amp not atp amino acids has to bind with amp with the help of an enzyme called amino acyl trna synthetase to form aa amp complex why is this done 
This process is called charging of tRNA or amino acylation of tRNA because we are bringing this tRNA from outside. We have to make it ours, right? For that, we are doing an entire setup, right? Got it or not? Okay. So, students, look here. A, A amino acids with AMP will form a complex called amino acid AMP complex and with PI. How did we get AMP? When we hydrolyzed ATP, okay? Now, this AMP complex will be able to enter your tRNA. It will be able to enter your amino acid acceptor site on the tRNA. Are you all following me? Are you all following me? Yes or no? All of you, are you all following me? That is... Amino acid plus AMP together will form a complex called AAMP. Okay, AAMP. That AAMP can enter where? Into the amino acid acceptor site on the tRNA molecule. So, the first step called as charging of tRNA has taken place. Okay, charging of tRNA has taken place. So, this AAMP plus tRNA will give us a A T R N A. That means once the amino acid with the AMP gets into the amino acid acceptor site on the tRNA, AMP will be left out because it's energy. We do not want it anymore, right? So we will form an amino acid tRNA complex and AMP will be going out. Is this clear or not? All of you tell me again. Is this clear or not? This is the first step called as amino acylation of tRNA or charging of tRNA. How many of you understood? Raise your hands quickly. I have to explain it again otherwise. Tell me quickly if you all understood. Quick, 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 quick. Raise your hands if you understood. If you don't reply fast, that means you don't want me to go home safely. Clear? Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, very simple students, very simple process. So, take it in a very simple way, okay? So, amino acids are there. We need to make sure that they enter into the tRNA which we hired, right? For that, we are doing one process, like how we have uh, one process. So, that kind of process we are doing, okay? ATP, we will hydrolyze to get AMP. AMP will combine with amino acid, get into the amino acid acceptor site of the tRNA with the help of this complex after that once it enters the tRNA it will tell AMP you go I have I got into tRNA now I don't need your help and they will form AA tRNA complex okay now look here one second mm, student slide got mixed up Okay, one second, one second. Okay, look here, all of you. Okay, now I told you mRNA does not have the ability to read. That's why we have taken the help of a ribosome plus a tRNA complex. Students, the ribosome used will be ribosome used in eukaryotes. All of you can tell me this. I've discussed this last time also eukaryotes the ribosome used will be ATS ribosome that is 260S and 40S okay and in prokaryotes it will be 70S prokaryotes will be 70S that is divided into 50S and 30S you will be like ma'am what are you telling you don't know maths or what 60 plus 40 is 100 why are you writing 80 because S stands for Swedberg sediment not the size okay not the size okay yes or no now students ribosome eukaryotes 80s 60s and 40s prokaryotes 70s 50s and 30s so once the smaller unit comments join this entire translational unit will get activated that means trna with ribosome trna plus ribosome will start reading the codons and start attaching the proteins. Can you see here? 
on the ribosome there will be an E site, P site and A site. Okay. So, from here can you see A, C, C. Imagine this is coding for, uh, not imagine it is actually coding for TRP. Okay. It is going to code for TRP. It is not maths is not weak. It is Swedberg's unit. It is not addition. Okay. Look here students. So, TRP that is your tryptophan is waiting to come to the A site. So, it will accept her. Accept the site is A site. From here, it will go to the P site. P site is the site where the polypeptide chain will be formed. Okay. So, from after that, it will exit from the E site. So, on the ribosome, we have three sites called as E site, P site and A site. In the A site, the new one will be waiting to come. On the P side, formation of the polypeptide chain or your protein formation will happen. And the E side, exit will happen. Is this clear or not? Is this clear? Okay. So, we have an exit side, an acceptor side and a peptide side. So, here what will happen? This, this will come and bind now. Like that many people will come and bind, 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 bind and then form the polypeptide chain. Then you will be like, ma'am, when do they know when to stop? They will stop exactly when they see a stop code on here. When they see a stop code on this entire tRNA plus ribosome, this entire translational unit will stop forming. This entire translational unit will stop. Is this clear to all of you? Again, raise your hands if it's clear. Raise your hands if it's clear. Rest of the three chapters will be happening in the crash course as we already discussed. Few chapters which are most difficult for the students, we will do it on YouTube. Rest will be on the crash course, okay. So, the three, I have done all the chapters on this channel first of all. So, if you want to go, you can go and watch it, okay. You can go and watch my previous videos. Otherwise, you will have to join the crash course, okay. Yes, students, all of you tell me, is this clear? Raise your hands, all of you, if it is clear. Translation is clear. Hindu, even I don't know Hindu, even I want to leave to home, so I don't know, even I have to finish the chapter. Every chapter is covered in Super 6 series, so if you want to watch the rest 3 chapters of Human Physiology, you can just type the chapter name with Gopika ma'am, it will come on YouTube, otherwise you have to join the crash course, okay? Yes, clear? Okay, great. All of you understood? Very good. Okay. So, understand? This is your translational unit. tRNA ribosome reads the code on the mRNA, attaches the protein, forms the protein synthesis. Sorted. Translation. Done. Okay. This is how your tRNA will look. Here will be your amino acid acceptor site. Here only AAMP came and joined. Okay. Here only AA, AMP complex came and joined and then became AA. TRNA. Okay, A TRNA. Now look here, students. A translation unit in an mRNA is a sequence of RNA that is flanked by a start codon and a stop codon and codes for polypeptide. Okay, an mRNA also has some additional sequence that are not translated and are referred to as untranslated regions. The UTRs are present at both 5' end as well as at the 3 dash n. So, if you remember your transcription, no, like this, you had a promoter, you had a terminator. Here, there are something called as students leader. Here, this here, this portion is leader and um, trial, okay, leader and okay, trial, trial, okay, trailer, leader and trailer, okay, leader and trailer. So, here there will be some set of regions, here also there will be some set of regions. So, that is your UTRs. That means they will help. They will be there till the mRNA, but they will not go for protein formation. That means from DNA till transcription, they were there. This UTRs will be sequenced, okay? In the mRNA also, they will be there. From the mRNA, they will not become proteins. So, that becomes the UTRs. Got it? It is to enhance the translation. UTRs are to enhance the translation. See here you can see they are required for efficient translation process. Okay. Clear or not? Clear or not? Leader and uh, again I forgot. Leader and trial. Don't have to worry about. Just know that UTRs are present. They will be in the mRNA but they will not get formed to the proteins. Okay. 
Yes. Students, here insertion and deletion, very simple thing. We know that codons are triplet. Even if one goes or one comes in, problem will happen. So, here you can see which leads to problems like sickle cell anemia, which causes point mutation, right? Sickle cell anemia. So, that is caused because of insertion and deletion. You can see Ram has a red cap. I removed the H and how much problem it caused that the frame shift mutation happened. That means the entire reading frame got shifted. Okay, now I am no, no more able to read it. Okay, no more I am able to read it. Yes or no? So, frame shift mutation has happened. Okay, now here Ram has red cap. I added one extra letter. I added one B here. What happened? Insertion happened. So, insertion or deletion of even one, 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 you know, nucleotide or even one change in a nucleotide will cause point mutation. Is this clear? Okay. Yes, UTRs are catalyst. Okay. That's why we tell here UTRs are catalyst that is efficient. Like uh, catalyst, we cannot tell, but then basically they are actually helping in improving the translation efficient translation process okay catalyst word i don't know if it's the right thing to use that i will check and let you know now regulation of gene students every time do we have to switch on the fan and ac not required no we don't have to switch on the fan and ac every single time okay sometimes we have to switch it off same way our genes also does not keep everything switch on for the longer time that means regulation of gene okay regulation of gene so, basically, you start from DNA to HNRNA, HNRNA to mRNA, okay, mRNA to translation or protein. Chalo, let's write translation, translation, okay. Now, students, during any of this process, okay, from DNA to here, first, this one, this one. No, no, wait, 1, 2, DNA to HNRNA, 1, HNRNA to mRNA, 2, mRNA to translation, 3. How come 4 was there, no? 1, 2, 3, translational level, processing level, ha, here, splicing, HNRNA, here, transport of mRNA from nucleus to cytoplasm translation okay here three here four okay 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 since so I was just looking at this what 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 went wrong okay so let's say okay students so during any of this okay look here carefully DNA to HNRNA, that means this one. During your transcription level, you can switch off the gene. Gene can decide to switch off. Or when it goes from HNRNA to mRNA, that means proper RNA processing, that time also gene can get switched off. Or when mRNA will be sent from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, that time also the gene can get switched off, okay, by not sending it to the cytoplasm. Or when mRNA forms protein, during translation also the gene can decide to switch off so so thank you shakti and uh, tilu reshma okay so students look here during transcription level that means forming the primary transcript the gene can decide to switch off or the gene can decide to switch off when it is doing rna processing hnrna to mrna which is there only in eukaryotes not in prokaryotes okay so this step not in prokaryotes or when mRNA is going from uh, from the nucleus to the cytoplasm that time also it can get switch off yes or no or when it is doing translation that means mRNA to protein that time also the gene can decide to switch off okay understood so in, during any of the stage the gene can switch on or switch off that is totally up to the gene now if you want to study it is totally up to you no no one is sitting on your head right no one will be like oh you have to study it's up to you you all come wantedly See now how many of our students are in this class, they have come by themselves, yes I want to study no matter what, right, that is because you have kept that trust to your parents, you have kept that word to your teachers, you want to prove yourself right, that is your choice, same way as Jean's choice, okay, so look here, 
we have only one thing you have to study in this gene regulation is that lacopron concept that means the gene the the gene can decide when to switch on and switch off in the presence or in the absence of lactose in the presence or absence of lactose this you are only studying for prokaryotes not only lacopron students many concepts are there valine concept is there tryptophan concept is there that means depending on if cryptophan is present and absent one uh, one model is there presenting on if valine is there or not one concept is there but thankfully for you only lacopron concept is there and if you understand this there is nothing better than this okay i will uh, teach you this students you have to remember you have to remember pipos that why whom you will remember pipo 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay pipo pipo z y a okay pipo z y a students this is basically a set of genes a set of genes we have okay now what do you need to focus is we have pipo z y a okay are you all yes correct awesome so pipo z y a was that means not pipo z y a lac operon concept was found by jacob monard okay sorry by jacob and monard by jacob and monard these two people were the ones to find lac operon simply understand so much if lactose is present if lactose is absent what is going to happen okay pipo z y a okay yes or no pipo z y a yeah you can think it is a jeans brand you can think any brand it is but just remember it for the exam that's all matters to me nothing else okay pipo z y a okay fine yes so students here we have lac i okay lac i which is a regulatory protein what is it a regulatory protein this lac i will release your mrna that mrna will form a repressor protein that mrna will form what repressor protein okay that repressor protein no 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 if i draw in this color you will not be able to understand repressor protein okay it will form a repressor protein now students first scenario think like this this is the first scenario first scenario you do not have any lactose that means the e coli we are talking about prokaryotes e coli has no lactose at all because it has glucose it does not need lactose so e coli does not have any lactose in the first instant during that time what will happen i told you i gene will form a repressor protein this repressor protein will go and bind with the operator repressor protein will go and bind with the operator and cause a complete block here now who is going to come if transcription has to happen who is going to come rna polymerase is going to come rna polymerase will be happily dancing and coming like this who is this rna pol okay rna pol will be happily dancing and coming and he'll notice that there is a big problem on the operator there's a big block on the R uh, operator region and i cannot do transcription so that means what gene is switched off gene is switch off okay gene is switch off when lactose is absent is this clear okay because transcription is a process by which we have to form mrna so rna polymerase only will be coming okay now second instance students second instance One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pipo, say after me, Pipo. Okay, Pipo. Pipo is there. Second instance. Okay. Second instance is also same thing will happen. Okay, same thing will happen. This fellow will form the mRNA. That mRNA will form repressor. Okay, that mRNA will form repressor. okay this instance what is the difference this is when the lactose is present 
when lactose is present okay in the e coli cells lactose is present so what will happen students since lactose is there lactose will be like lactose becomes the inducer lactose becomes the inducer and since lactose is an inducer it will go bind with the repressor like this and it will form a complex and because of this this repressor will not be able to go and bind with the operator okay yes clear or not because this inducer inducer means lactose this lactose will go and bind with the repressor and it will form a repressor inducer complex now this repressor will not be able to move imagine there is one sumo coming and holding you like this can you move can, will you get up and go to the operator telling that I will make a block? No, no, you will just stay like this. Like this. So, same way, think like this. Inducer came and just caught the repressor. It will not the, let the repressor move to the operator. So, who will be happy? Who will be happy? Your RNA polymerase will be happy. It will walk all the way. It will come. And here there is given ZYA. ZYA. These are the proteins that will give this Z will give beta galactosidase beta galactosidase this beta galactosidase what it will do students this beta galactosidase will convert lactose to glucose and galactose okay it will what will it do it will convert lactose to glucose plus galactose clear okay yes that is because this i gene is controlling like raka is controlling now z over now y y gene will release something called as permease which will increase the permeability it will increase the permeability of your e coli cell to absorb more lactose it will increase the permeability okay Yes, it will increase the permeability of the E. coli cell to absorb more lactose. Okay, now last one is the A that will release permease, I mean trans, trans acetylase that will basically use up or you know discard the extra galactose in the galactose in the body whatever beta galactose extra is there that will be removed by the trans acetylase according to your textbook trans acetylase function is no, not known even if you search a lot of research papers you will not get a very good clarity they just say that it actually helps beta galactosidase to do that finishing okay we do not want anything unwanted in the cell so for that removal trans acetylase will help okay so is this clear so lac operon during this situation what is going to happen the gene is going to get switched on. Gene is switched on. So, this is a positive mechanism. This is a negative mechanism, right? This is a positive, this is a negative mechanism when the lactose is absent and this is a positive mechanism. Okay? Clear? Okay, got it. Next one. One second. So many spaces I have left for lack of run. Here, students, here you have your NCRT. Look at NCRT. You have Pipose ZYA in the absence of inducer. That means lactose is not there. Repressor mRNA will form repressor. That repressor will go and bind with the operator, and here the gene will be switched off. Okay. Second instance, you have lactose. That lactose or the inducer will go and bind with the repressor and stop this complex to go to the operator. So, your ZYA will form lac mRNA, that is beta galactosidase, permease, and trans acetylase will be released, and your transcription translation will happen. Okay? Yes or no? Translation, translation, transcription will happen. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? Now, regulation of lac operon by repressor is a negative mechanism. That means if repressor is taking control of it and the gene is switched off, it's negative. If lactose is taking control or the inducer is taking control, the gene is switched on. That is a positive mechanism. Okay? Yes. Last topic, human genome project. Are you ready? 
Are you ready? Yes? No? Let me see. Did we make 500 likes? Did you all make 500 likes? Students, any doubts, please ask. Okay, don't hesitate. Please ask. I am ready to explain it many times to you. So, please do ask. <coughs> wow. We made 589. Awesome. 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 Students, I did not see half of your message. I told you my power is not so sharp to go till there. Okay, so sometimes I don't, I cannot. Okay. Ready? My Kanju students have liked so much. Wow. Wow. Kanju students making me proud. Right? Okay, chalo, let's start. At this point, no, I should send cockroach into a neat exam. Cockroach frog is there, cockroach frog is there. We have been telling for I don't know how many times I've told in this channel. At last, you know, I'll send cockroach with you people for neat exam. You look at it and you write. What are the characteristics? Okay, human genome project. We have exam in another 20 days and now also you're asking when, where is cockroach? That's the first class I took in this channel. Okay. Okay. Human Genome Project students, this is one of the mega mega project and the other word other word is mega project. And it was found by Jameson James Watson uh, in ninth. This project is a very mega project mainly because of many many things. That is because it took 13 years. It took 13 years to finally come into place. So, from 1990 to 2003, they kept finding methods. They kept finding methods. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, Sanjana, so beautiful. Uh, okay. So, students, okay, 1990 to 2003, 13 years they took. Okay, to finally get this project in place. So, this is the mega project. And how much money did they spend? 9 billion US dollars. Not only that, many, many continents came together. Many, many institutions came, uh, came together. Many top, top institutions put their hand together to bring into existence. Okay, bring into existence. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, look here. Human Genome Project, James Watson, 990 to 2003, 13 years, okay. Mega project because they spent 9 billion US dollars and many countries participated in this, okay. Many countries participated in this. Now, this project was what students, basically storage, storage of your entire human genome, right. Your entire human genome was stored in one place, okay, stored in one place. Now, 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs. Okay, this was complete. We imagine carrying a book with this. If you had to carry a book with this, you would have 3,300 books, each book having 1,000 letters and 1,000 pages. Okay, 3,300 book. Thank you, Abhi. 3,300 books you would have to carry to keep your one person's human genome content. So, for that, they finally came up with a solution called as let's make it technical or let's make it bring computer and biology together and they brought about bioinformatics okay that means where you take biology content and use with the help of technology with the help of computer get all of these things in place okay okay now look here goals of hgp identify all approximately 20 to 25000 genes in a human dna okay now Determine the sequence of 3 billion chemical base pairs that make up the human DNA. Okay. Store this information in databases. Improve tools for data analysis. Transfer related technologies to other sectors such as industries. If it is going to help us, why don't we send this to medical industry? Why don't we send it to other industries so that they can find medicine? They can help and understand why a mutation is happening. Like that multiple things are there. Right? Multiple things are there. Yes or no? Anush Raj, what is the issue? Did you ask me any genuine question of the chapter that I ignored? 
Please ask the question. I just now told you I'm not looking at the chats. Okay. Just improve tools for data analysis, transfer related technologies to other sectors such as industries, address the ethical, legal, social issues that may, you know, may arise from the project. Okay. That is, okay. Yes, thank you, Reshma. Okay, students, okay. Ethical, legal. This is LC, right? Ethical, legal, social issues. Full form was asked. One of the year, full form was asked. Okay? So, it's very important for you to know ethical, legal, social issues. Okay? No, dear, I will go home and have. Okay? I will go home and have. Thanks for asking. Thanks for checking on me. Okay? So, students, ethical, legal, social issues, full form LC. So, they had to address what if any ethical, legal, social issues happen because they're doing this database, right? And this database is not just done like that. They have to learn the sequence. They have to extract the from it from a person, find the sequence, put that sequence into the appropriate chromosome. Now, in my class, now imagine Rani is there, Abhi is there, Nancy is there, Subhashni is there, Dr. Pratyu is there. Each of their talent I know. And each, depending on each of their talent, I've told them, you become class leader, you become, uh, you know, dance head, you become sports captain, you become... That is because I understood their talent and I've given them the opportunity. Same way is this. Understand the sequence, understand what this could be used for and give it to them. And students, very, very important question from this one question that has come is, chromosome 1. Okay, chromosome 1 was the one that was last sequenced by HGB project that is in May 2006. That means very, very recently the chromosome 1, right? The chromosome 1 sequence was found. Okay, so if a question come which was the latest or which took the last, you know, to finally come into place was chromosome 1 that was on May 2006. Just keep it in mind, okay? Now look here students. Two, techno two methods, okay, two methods were there for doing this HGP project. That was one was the blind approach, one was the proper approach. So, the blind approach is called as um, sequence annotation. The blind approach was called as sequence annotation. Do not look at this paragraph and faint. I will tell you what is there in the paragraph. Sequence annotation means taking everything, non-coding plus coding. Taking all the sequence taking all the sequence and trying to find something out of it. Methodology means what? I told you, you have to understand their talent and give them the opportunity for that. For understanding talent, I can use multiple methods. I could conduct a fest. I could conduct a classroom activity. I could just notice them. I can do many, many approach. Same way, methodology one was sequence annotation. That means taking all the coding and the non-coding sequence, which is a blind, stupid approach. Second approach was express sequence tag. This question had come previous years. We saw it again in this channel. Okay. Express sequence tag or EST. That means we only take the ones that are able to form RNA. That means expressed as RNA. So look here. The method, method involves two approaches. One approach focused on identifying all genes that are expressed as RNA. Very, very important. This was the same line asked in the question. I don't know how many of you solved it. Okay, how many of you were there with me during this class? Two as express sequence act. The other took a blind approach of simply sequencing the whole set of genome that contained all the coding and the non-coding sequence. And later assigning. Students, this HGB project is actually, to be frank, it's like a something that you can buy hard. Okay, because it's just reading and just by hearting. Because understanding, you will not need a lot about, you should know a lot about bioinformatics, bio, uh, bio statistics, which is not practical at this point. So, just try to know the major part, that's all. Okay, don't be like, oh, I have to understand what is happening, what is EST, what is this? What? If you go like that, then you will never understand. Okay, now, for sequence, the total RNA from a cell is isolated and converted into random fragments. Okay, for sequencing, that is with the help of Sanger sequencing. I've told you this, Sanger sequencing. Okay, Sanger sequencing. That means for sequencing, the total DNA from a cell is isolated, converted into random fragments of relatively smaller size. Recall, DNA is a very long polymer. Okay, 
and there are technical limitations in sequencing very long polymers. So what did we do? We basically cut them with the help of our biological scissors like endonuclease and exonuclease. Okay. Now and cloned in suitable host using specialized vector. Okay. So what did we do? This you will understand better when you learn biotechnology with us. They used yeast and bacteria. Yeast and bacteria was used and the vectors used were back and yak. Okay, back and yak was the vectors used that is bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome. So, they cut them into random fragments, they inserted into the host that is your back with the help of back and yak, they inserted it into yeast and bacteria. Okay. The cloning resulted into amplification of each piece of DNA fra fragment so that it subsequently could be sequenced with yeast. The commonly used host were bacteria and yeast and the vectors were yak and back. Good to go? Okay. Now, look here. This was the two approach. Sequence annotation with the help of Sanger sequencing. We took coding sequence, non-coding sequence and amino acid sequence. Basically, we took everything. Okay, that is the blind approach. Express sequence tag, we only took the ones that are expressed as mRNA. So, how did we do it? We converted the mRNA into RNA, uh, sorry, mRNA. MRNA into DNA with the help of reverse transcriptase. That DNA, we made a copy, complementary DNA. Like that, we will get the strand which has only sequence. That means which has only proper exons in it. Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. So, what did we do? We extracted the MRNA. From that MRNA, we got cDNA. That means what? With the help of reverse transcription. That cDNA, what did we get? That cDNA is a strand. If you give a template, if you keep that DNA as a template, we'll get another one. We'll get a proper double stranded, right? We'll get a proper double strand with all the sequence, which will all express as RNA. So, students, this is a reverse psychology, right? Reverse thing. We did not take protein and we did not find mRNA. From mRNA, we understood which and all DNA, which and all can be sequenced properly. Okay? Yes. Now, look here, students. This is again your salient features. You have to by heart this. There's no option. Now the human genome contains of this numbers. You have to know. Okay. I cannot see because of reflection. The average gene consists of 3000 bases. And the largest. Uh, this one very very important. The largest known gene is called your dystrophin in 2.4 million bases. And the total number of genes were estimated at 30,000. Much lower than the previous estimates. The functions are known over for 50% of the discovered gene. That means, again, 50% is unknown. Less than 2% of genome codes for protein. That means, less than 2% is capable of doing translation. Capable of doing translation. Is this clear? Okay, this is all your... Okay, this is all... Uh, you have to write it somewhere and learn. I forget to drink water. When someone writes, I remember suddenly. Okay. Repeated sequence make up the large portion of the human genome. Students, all of you know, repeated or the bulk DNA is 99.1%. The rest is 0.1%. That is That makes all of us different from each other, right? See, repeated sequences are stretch of DNA sequences that are repeated many times, sometimes 100 to 1000 times. They are thought to have no direct coding function, but... They shed light on chromosome structure, dynamics and evolution. Okay. Now here, very, very important point. Eighth point. That is chromosome 1 has the most genes and Y has the fewest genes. Okay. Yes. <sighs> yes, I do take classes regularly on the channel. You should come regularly to know this. Right. Now look here. Scientists have identified 1.4 million locations where single base students SNPs single nucleotide polymorphism all of us have straight hair but one thing has changed texture will change right so here A G A C A now there is uh, one student called Anush Raj in the class okay Anush Raj okay and there is one student called Abhi in the class so this is Anush Raj this is Abhi. Okay. And say we have. 
we have one more person in the class one doctor okay so students can you see in anush abhi and the doctor there is only this difference only one nucleotide different right only one nucleotide different can you see only one base pair has changed one pair one uh, this purine or pyrimidin has changed can you see that will in, that will be more than enough to cause a difference in all the three people's character okay more not only character everything chalo ready now let's do dna fingerprinting yes can we do it faster okay dna fingerprinting involves identifying differences in some specific regions in the dna sequence called as repetitive dna okay students the best way to study dna fingerprinting is from ncrt because no one how much ever they try to put it across it is very difficult to not follow ncrt ncrt is the most important okay very very important thing is ncrt so always follow ncrt for your dna fingerprinting otherwise you will get very confused very very confused okay read uh, ncrt more than enough and again like i tell you you do not have to like you know understand so much and become tomorrow forensic anything no so just know the basics to answer your pyqs look your dna fingerprinting involves identifying differences in some specific regions in the dna that means me and you both both were there in the crime scene right both of us were in the crime scene what makes what what will be easier for us to understand what is the difference right that difference we have to find out right because i told you 99.9 percent .9 is bulk finding out that is not useful for us 0.1 percent is useful for us so look here because in the sequence a small stretch of dna is repeated many times again let's take abhi and uh, anush as a example abhi and anush in anush imagine in anush okay a g a t t was repeated 50000 times or say 5000 times same sequence in Aj, uh, abhi will be repeated only 50 times that is more than enough for us to find the difference between this both people yes or no so that is what they're talking about so look here students separated from a bulk genomic dna as a different peak during see these repetitive dna are separated from bulk ge genome de genomic dna as different peaks during density gradient centrifugation during density gradient centrifugation if this is the graph we will get a broader spectrum and a smaller spectrum right so the broader one will be the bulk one the larger one will be the bulk one and the smaller one will be a repetitive sequence so from that we will be able to give it out yes or no right yes so students thank you anush okay look here students so this is the broad one this is the narrow one this narrow one will give us the repetitive this broad one is the bulk dna are you all understanding yes or no this is not the first time i hope you are studying this chapter okay now look here the bulk dna forms a major peak see forms a major peak and the other small peaks are referred to as the satellite dna depending on the base composition so students this repetitive repetitive dna itself is called satellite dna in the satellite dna there will be mini satellite and uh, mini satellite and <laughs> my brain is not working at all one second let me give it a thought so it's all if you tell me mini satellite and micro satellite my god my brains worked micro satellite regions okay so in this repetitive sequence itself you will have tandem repeats okay i'll come to that let's not worry depending on the base composition that is at rich or gc rich length of the segments and the number of repetitive units the satellite dna is classified into many categories such as micro satellite mini satellite i should have just looked here but that time that also I, I could not think about so students if the basic repeat okay basic repeat is 11 to 60 okay basic repeat is 11 to 60 base pairs then that will be called as mini satellite and if the basic repeat is 1 to 6 base pair it will be called as micro satellite are we good to go okay 
yes mini and micro satellite okay suddenly when glitch came off like browsing came off like when suddenly from 5g it becomes 2g no it happened like that so look here the satellite dna is classified into many categories such as micro and mini satellite depending on the repeats micro satellite when the repeats basic repeats is 1 to 6 base pair mini satellite when the repeats is 11 to 60 base pairs okay these sequences normally do not code for any proteins but they form a large portion of the human genome. These sequences show high degree of polymorphism and form the basis of DNA fingerprinting. Is this clear? Are we good to go? Okay. Students, notes you will get on my telegram. I mean on our telegram, Vedantu Neat English telegram. <laughs> yes. So, from the junk DNA or the bulk DNA, we will get repetitive sequence. Okay, repetitive DNA. That repetitive DNA can be repeated in different, different ways. That means, like I told you, in Anush, it was A, G, A, T, T. It can be A, G, A, T, T. Again, A, G, A, T, T. That means, continuously it is repeated. Can you see? A, G, A, T, T, A, G, A, T, T, A, G, A, T, T. Continuously repeating, this is called as tandem repeats. Okay, tandem repeats. Students, if I can remember this entire chapter, even you can remember this entire chapter. Okay, if I can remember this entire chapter without seeing any notes, if I can teach you, you should also be in a position to answer all the questions from this chapter. Okay, yes or no? I cannot see from there, yeah? You people should tell me from here. Yes, did we make it 600 likes? Wow, my students are awesome today. Something happened to my students. Some God has come from uh, up, right? Some God came and then they told, okay, just like it. How much will you make? Go become I'm shout. Yes or no? That's what God told her. Yes, I drank students water, it's just uh, breathing issues, B -b breath is not coming out. Yes, look here, tandem repeats. Now, the same thing in Abhi can be different. In Abhi, it can be A, G, A, T, T, U, 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 A, G, A, T, T, A, A, A. That means interspersed, that means, can you see, one here, one here. Okay, so this will be interspersed repeats okay that means they are being they are not continuous they are repeating but they are not continuous now depending on the repeats tandem repeats there is this one called as satellite dna satellite dna and this satellite dna can be divided into two mini satellite and micro satellite okay mini satellite means 11 basic repeats will be 11 to 60 base pairs Micro satellite means 1 to 6 base pair, basic repeats. This is what they told in that paragraph. Is this clear? Okay. Is this clear? Yes, students, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop very soon. <coughs> Spectacles won't help. It's because of the reflection of the board. There also it's black. No, I can't see. Because I'm looking from here and turning here, light is reflecting on the screen. Okay? People are so mean, yeah. Telling me to buy spectacles. I'm not even that old. Okay, so now, still this one, this mini satellite, it's VNTR probe. That means variable tandem repeats. And this is called as short tandem repeats. STR. Okay, short tandem repeats. VNTR and short TR. Okay, so short tandem repeats. Now, look here. This we did. Now, look here, how do we do DNA fingerprinting? So, you think you are in forensic, okay? First, you will do isolation of DNA. Obviously, it could be from hair, it could be from serum, it could be from any of the sample. You have got isolation of DNA. Digestion of DNA by restriction endonuclease. I just showed this action, sorry, does not mean I am eating it. Digestion of DNA by restriction endonuclease. Restriction endonuclease are biological scissors, okay? Then, Separation of DNA fragments by electrophoresis. So, depending on the 
the width or the width of the DNA, number of repeats, everything, it can be separated, right? It can be separated on the electrophoresis. Now, electrophoresis is the gel. So, you can use agarose gel, okay? It is not very sustainable to keep it on the gel for a longer time. So, we will do southern blotting. That means transfer that to a nitrocellulose plate. That nitrocellulose plate, this process is called southern blotting. It is not because they found this when they were sitting on the south side. It is because southern blotting, northern blotting, western blotting. One student asked me also last class, ma'am, is it because they are sitting into this, when I was taking a class in the platform, they asked me, ma'am, is it because that person was sitting towards the south? Not really, that is because of the scientist's name called southern, southern, okay? Now, hybridization using labeled VNTR probe. Students, in the VNTR probe, look here, in the VNTR probe, we can have we can have coding and non-coding sequence. Now, I want to know what, which is the sequence that is different, the one which are coding, right, the different ones. For that, I will be using a VNTR probe. Probe means a small sequence of DNA that will be complementary to the probe that is there. Now, Anush has AA, this one, Anush has AATC. That is only there in Anush or that is repeated 50,000 times in Anush. To that complementary, I will form a probe, okay, which will be radioactively labeled. And that I will see under the audio radiography and I will be able to understand who is the culprit, who is the person in the class. Yes? Okay, got it? That's all is your DNA fingerprinting. You have to know this four steps and this uh, VNC. VNTR probe belongs to the class of satellite DNA. Refer to as mini satellite. Done. A small DNA sequence is arranged tandemly in many copy numbers. The copy numbers varies from chromosomes to chromosome in an individual. That is why I told you we will form something complementary to this VNTR probe. How much it is repeated in Anush, it cannot be repeated in me. So we, I will definitely find the culprit because when I give a complementary strand, this will go and bind with the VNTR on the electrophoresis or on the southern blotting. That I will see it under the radio radiography, auto radiography. I will be able to exactly see the bands. Yes or no? Right? So, yes. See, copy numbers vary from chromosomes to chromosome in an individual. The number of repeat show very high degree of polymorphism. As the result of this, as the result, the size of VNTR varies in size from 0 0.1 to 20 KB. Could be asked as a question. Consequently, after hybridization with VNTR probe, the auto radiography gives many bands of different sizing. These bands give a characteristic pattern of an individual of differing size. Understood? This is what I exactly told now. These bands give a characteristic pattern of an individual's DNA. It differs from individual to individual in a population except in cases of identical twins. Okay? So, this is what we did. Imagine we got a blood sample, we extracted, we digested it with the help of restriction digestion or restriction endonuclease. We did electrophoresis, we got some band. That we copy pasted to the southern blotting that, to, that is to your nitrocellulose membrane. With that we did hybridization of DNA and we used a VNTR probe which will go and attach to the exact places and then we saw it under and we could see proper bands. Is this clear? Just look at this diagram for one minute. Look at this diagram for one minute. <coughs> All of you. Yes, yes, I drank. <laughs> okay, done. See, this is the one. Paternal chromosome, maternal chromosome, can you see? It will not be same. Each chromosome, it will be different. See, person A, person B, completely different. Okay? Now, here we have the sample of three people. Okay? This was the sample we got from the area where the blood sample, like one murder happened. This is the suspects we have. Can you see? It never matches. It's not the same. So, that, this way we were able to understand that the, you know, the DNA we got from the crime scene and the DNA of this person B is the same. This is how, this is how we will be able to do your DNA fingerprinting. Yes or no? Okay. Students, polymerase chain reaction is to make your copies, multiple copies. DNA fingerprinting is not the DNA fingerprinting is what? From a chunk of DNA, you have some suspects. You try to figure out what is, is this the person, the exact person? Why the 
with the help of electrophoresis you will be able to get these bands then only you will be able to prove yes or no because nowadays people manipulate they change this they do operation of the fingerprints we cannot identify like that they wear mask and do crimes so we cannot you know predict this so this way we will be able to get the exact genetic material okay exact genetic material okay now students can we do some problems can we do some questions but you have to be very fast okay you have to be very fast so gopika ma'am reaches home safely okay yes can we start first question a short length of dna molecules has 80 thymine and 80 guanine bases the total number of nucleotides in the dna fragment is dna fragment is thank you so much thank you so much do not forget to comment this okay if you put it in the live how will a student know that should i watch this ma'am's lecture is it worth watching right yes tell me students answer this all of you answer quick 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 8 minutes I should be leaving from here. Calculate properly. We have time in gone in. That means T and G we have. You have to calculate A and C. Total this and tell me the answer. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. So it is 320 because 80, 80, 80, 80. 84 is a 320. Easy. Correct? Yes. 84 is a 320. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, next one. Choose the correct statement. Haploid content of human DNA is 4.6 into 10 to the power 6. Our nitrogenous base is linked to the pentose sugar. Students, you people, please read. Okay. Which is the answer for this? Which is the answer for this? Correct statement. Okay. Correct statement. Quick, 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 quick. Tell me the correct statement. You can. All of you. You are capable. You are unstoppable. I want to sing the song, but I don't know the song, students. Most of the time, this is the problem. Yes. Four. Four. What is four? Yeah. DNA as an acidic substance was first identified by Watson and Crick. Huh? When was this told? No. C is the answer. X-ray diffraction data of Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin was basis of Watson and Crick's DNA model. Correct. D is wrong, students. We never told no acidic. Through which experiment the first proof that DNA is a genetic material was provided? Yes. All of you. Those who did not like the session, quickly like the session. And after the session, if you do not comment, then I will never ever take any classes that you people tell. Okay, I'll take Chuma, I'll take Living World. Biotechnology class will be cancelled. Because you people don't do what we tell. No, then why should we do what you do? Give and take. Yes, this one answer is C. Bacterial translocation. Yes, yes, after class I'll have students. After I reach home. So, make fast five more minutes. I should be down the studio. It's all in your hand. D. Very good. Bacterial transformation. Transformation. Okay, bacterial transformation. Phage infection. Which is the answer? This is. One second. <laughs> I will just confirm it once so that there is no confusion. Sometimes what you know, this uh, need this one and this will be, yes, yes, we are correct students, correct. D. Okay, next question. How many base bases does a haploid human genome consist of? Tell next also, no? Next one also you tell of answers quickly. Why are you waiting for me? Just tell the answer for the next one also. How many base pair does a haploid human genome consist of? 
Very good, very good. 3.3 into 10 to the power 9. So, the closest answer will be B. 3 into 10 to the power 9. Okay. Students have put easy questions. Not easy questions, but questions which are there in the previous years only. But then most of the questions have done it in the zoology PYQ series. Okay, if you noticed. Given below are a diagram of the transcriptional unit. Tell me the answer for this. Okay, all of you. <laughs> Bayangar go pick up. B, uh, this one. Promoter, A is promoter, correct. Terminator, B is terminator, correct. C is coding strand. No, 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 no. C, yes, very good. C. Promoter, terminator, template. Student, C is template strand. This is template strand. This is coding strand. Can you see here? Transcriptional start site. This is what I told about. Okay, start site. C, C, read the question properly. It's not coding strand. Not coding strand. Okay. Yes, next one. Capping of RNA is necessary as capping of RNA is necessary. Don't worry, student. This is my kajal. Okay, it's not dark circle. This is my kajal. I, I did this. Okay, so that's why. Don't worry. <laughs> Look here. Capping of RNA is necessary as. Why is it necessary? I told the answer in the class only. What an all you people have to know. Yes. Quick, quick. B. B, it has a rolling action, condenses the transcriptor. Huh? C, yeah, C, C. To prevent the transcription from exonucleus, I just told in the class. Students, are there all the points are invalid? Are there all the points are invalid? See, it helps us to distinguish from 5 dash to 3 n is also correct, but it is 3 dash to 5 dash. Right, 3 dash is the methyl guanosine triphosphate, 5 dash is the polyethyl. So, that is the most correct one. Histone proteins are rich in? We did this. Arginine and lysine. Which was the last chromosome completely sequenced? All of you tell me. Again, I discussed this also. Which was the last chromosome that was completely sequenced? Very good. Very good. Yes. Good job. What are you telling D? Yes, Subhashni. Perfect. A is the answer. Chromosome 1 was the last chromosome which was sequenced. That too on May 2006. Now, which one of the following is not a part of transcriptional unit in DNA? Very easy question. Very good. A, A is the answer. Very easy question. Yes, what is the answer for this? Yes, very good. The inducer. Okay, done. So, yes, students, thank you so much for joining. Okay, one second. Yes, done. Okay, students, thank you so much for joining for our entire block 2, first class of block 2 and your likes are really appreciated. Now, I also want to see all of your comments and let me know how is your most two difficult chapter principles of inheritance and molecular basis of inheritance if you have any doubt do let us know in the comments and students thank you so much take care go have dinner sleep well because again tomorrow is something special is going to come for all of you so do not forget to watch the video and all the confusions for your need 2024 will be over with that so yes yes okay so good job not only me like you people are appreciating me. I want to appreciate all of you. Okay. Uh, for sitting throughout this class. I can see a lot of students who stayed from principles of inheritance.
टू मॉलिकुलर बेसिस ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस विच इज आई एम हैथ्स ऑफ टू यू ऑल बिकॉज यू आर द डेडिकेटेड वंस एंड ट्रस्ट मी यू विल क्रैक नीट लाइक आई ऑलवेज से गॉड विल ऑलवेज सी द प्रेयर्स ऑफ पीपल हु एक्चुअली वॉन्ट इट राइट क्राइंग बेबी गेट्स द मिल्क सो सेम वे द वंस हु आर वर्किंग हार्ड द वंस हु आर क्राइंग फाइंडिंग इट डिफिकल्ट पुशिंग दैम सेल्फ ओनली दे विल गेट ओके सो यू आर द डेडिकेटेड वंस हु स्टेट थ्रू आउट द सेवन अवर्स with the most two most complex chapters but do not forget tomorrow when you find time read molecular basis of inheritance otherwise it will be very difficult for you to understand okay so tata bye bye so let me leave as quick as possible so i reach before and i am safe okay